Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway.
Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway.
Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Remember? 
brick we shall overthrow and walk right into a new star. Welcome to the brand new world. Be the children of the Mother Earth. Reach out your hands. Let us leave our world together. Welcome to the brand new world. Be the children of the Mother Earth. Reach out your hands. Let us leave. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can 
tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet. The squirrels found a new hideaway. Tomorrow will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Brick by brick, we shall overcome. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Brick by brick, we shall overcome and walk right into a new star. Welcome to the brand new world. Be the children of a mother earth. Reach out your hands. Let us lead our world together. Welcome to the brand new world. Be the children. Namaste. Please join us this Sunday on a free global online session, Integrated Health, Transforming Healthcare. Stars, they can tell you stories which are brighter than yesterday. The streets have never been so quiet, the squirrels found a new hideaway. Will never be the same. There is so much hope in our hearts. Brick by brick, we shall overcome and walk right into a new star. Welcome to the brand new world. Be the children of a mother earth. Reach out your hands. Let us lead our world together. Welcome to the brand new world. We the children. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good afternoon, wherever you are, and a global namaste to you to another episode of Healing Our Earth. A warm welcome to you wherever you're joining. And the first message is do share the word with wherever you may be that Healing Our Earth has started. It's Sunday, the 15th of May, 2022. And I can't believe it. Healing Our Earth is still running every Sunday and is actually growing from strength to strength. And today's topic is that of integrated health. And this is actually our third session on integrated health. So a warm welcome to wherever you are, where you're sitting. Sit down, make a nice cup of herbal or good, nice warm water or herbal tea and enjoy the session. Do join in. Do send your friends that will be live on YouTube, on Facebook and on various other platforms. So with that, I'm actually going to share screen and show you a few things of what we're going to have today. It is a fantastic session. I'm really excited uh, of the theme of health that we're going to have. So with that, I'm just going to share screen and tell you a few things that are going on. So hopefully you can see this. So a warm welcome to our 129th episode, a free episode of Healing Our Earth. Do look back, go to healingourearth.com and see some of the fantastic sessions that have happened before. 
from dance to music to uh, cooking to children's uh, well-being, lots of things happening. And today you can see the whole theme is on integrated health. So as always, when we start, we take an invocation. When we begin on this journey, as we have now a four, five, six hour session together, may we invoke the higher within all of us. So with that, this ancient Sanskrit prayer of Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha. So do join with me wherever you are. Now more than ever is a time for peace, for global peace. And as always, firstly, peace starts within us. May we first find that tranquility within our own minds. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhatrani Pashantu Makas Chittukha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 May all be happy, may all be healthy, may all enjoy prosperity, may none suffer. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. So with that, May we begin. Uh, welcome again to Healing Our Earth. Do go to healingourearth.com where you can see various of the previous sessions as well and what's coming up today. The whole theme of Healing Our Earth is to promote happier, peaceful, healthier and inspired global communities. And it very much is global. If you see the number of countries that are logging in at the moment to see this international program by de delivering multicultural online edutainment. And as you can see here, the various different platforms that we're on, whether it be on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, we're live on YouTube as we speak as well, as well as WhatsApp. So what's, the, what's on today? Our theme again is on integrated health. This is in fact our third health uh, in such event of integrated health. And in fact, next week, the 22nd will be the fourth event. So very briefly, you can see on there with myself, Dr. Milan Shah, um, hosting you for the next hour or two. I'm really happy to go on this journey with you as well. In a moment, we're going to introduce Rajiv and Ramesh Gupta, who will be guiding us through a really interesting panel discussion. And you can see here the theme will be Eat Smart, Think Smart. And that will be really for the next hour, hour and a half, 90 minutes together. We then have got uh, Arut Siva with us, who's going to speak about common sense cardiovascular health. And really interesting to have Professor Dr. Ish Sharma speaking about a school garden project. And with that, then my host, Honey Kalaria, will take us through for the rest of the speakers. So do have a look. You can see some really interesting speakers there. So the theme is integrated health. Do get in touch. This is very much an interactive session as well. There's a WhatsApp number there, uh, plus four four seven seven one two one triple seven zero three. If you go to Healing Our Earth, you'll see that WhatsApp number there where you can uh, pose questions um, and have them answered as we speak. Here are some of the handles for the Facebook, uh, for the social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, as well as the website and WhatsApp. So we really are very well connected with our various partners. So today is again, the theme of integrated health and the purpose of these events now are, can we create maybe some sort of forum a global integrated health forum, the GHIF. So behind the scenes, various people, particularly uh, Dr. Rajiv Gupta, Professor Ramesh Gupta, really worked hard to see how we can integrate or get people together. So a lot of conversations have been happening behind the scene. How can mainstream healthcare be integrated with alternative, complementary, and supplementary healthcare systems? And do go back and have a look at our first or second sessions to understand what is alternative, what is complementary, what does supplementary mean? And what does mainstream mean? I think in every different country, where I'm calling from the, from the UK, where we have our mainstream, which is the National Health Service, and mainstream healthcare may be allopathic medicine, but within that, how many other specialties and interests are there? So with that, a brief thing about myself, so you can see me that I'm uh, an NHS, a natural, National Health Service GP, um, I work in London. Those are the two practices I work in Northwest London. So you can see where I, I live and spend probably five or six days of my life, <laughs> more than probably at home. Um, there's an interesting quote. It says, um, GPs often know their practice cleaners more than they own their own family because they're there for so long. I'm usually there at seven, eight, nine o'clock when my cleaners turn up. Um, we have around about 17,000 patients. So we're a fairly large practice there. 
very briefly, um, because I know she won't, won't know much, but what is a medical journey often of becoming a GP or um, even a medical um, doctor in this country? So I would have at the age of 18, 19, studied exams and A-levels to join medical school. I then spent six, seven years in medical school doing something called preclinical, where I did lots of lots of studying. Uh, I did a BSc in physiology and in primary care. We then do clinical medicine where we get put onto hospitals and various placements throughout the country. We then have our medical finals, which we work towards. We also went overseas, actually uh, went to India and Nepal and actually did Ayurveda and yoga as part of my, uh, my overseas work. I was then a junior doctor um, working in surgery and medicine. I did orthopedic and general surgery and then did some stroke medicine. And that was my, uh, my initial one or two years as a junior doctor. I then made a decision and I was always in my mind to actually go into primary care, become a GP. I always wanted to work more with families uh, and have that continuity of care. I then did two or three years of that. So I worked uh, linked to a hospital. I worked in A&E, then in pediatrics. I did obstetrics. And a real passion of mine is actually end of life care. And I worked in a hospice. So this was two or three years work. You then get attached to a GP surgery. I was a GP registrar for one or two years to actually then learn what it is to become in primary care. Uh, and then you can just see going down, I, I did another job called a senior fellow. I, I then worked as a locum uh, for a while. I then joined a surgery as a salary doctor. I then joined uh, and actually became part of a surgery as a GP partner, which, which is where I've been for the last 10, 15 years. So I think I shared that slide before, but hopefully that gives you an idea of the journey. I think running out of time, I, I wanted to show you very quickly about primary care, because I think particularly sometimes general practitioners get a bit of a bad rap and um, I want to share a few, uh, few quick points with you. Did you know that actually 90% of all patient contacts in the NHS actually take place in primary care? So in fact, 90% of any work takes place not in the hospital, but actually in the GP surgery and primary care with pharmacists, with dentists, with opticians. So you think we'd get 90% of the funding, but in, in fact, we get seven. So with that, actually 7% of the NHS budget goes to primary care. The rest goes mainly to secondary care. Hospitals are very expensive places to go to. So um, that's why um, we, we are struggling with, with the budget we get. What is a GP? A GP is an expert generalist who specializes in the continu continuity of care. We are experts in, in, general, in general health care and particularly in continuative care. I know my patients now over 10 or 15 years. I'd love to elaborate on this, in, on this theme in the future. We get probably about 50p a day to, per patient. And in that time, um, a patient can come and see us as many times as they want in the year. I've got patients who may come 20, 30 times in the year, others who may might come much less. There are two or three million consultations every day. Two or three million people see a GP every day, huge amounts. And with that money, the GPs at surgery actually have to pay their staff, run their buildings and actually run the entire service. Our core hours are eight till 6.30, but actually often GPs are working till eight, nine at night. I'm certainly there either at the surgery or going home and logging in. We do telephone work. We do a lot of face-to-face. -face. There's lots of myths that we don't see patients. We do, I see 18 or 20 patients a day along with telephone. We do home visits. I see my elderly at least doing a home visit daily. And we do a lot of e-consult or email work as well. Enough of that. <laughs> it was just to give you an idea of what a GP does. So a warm welcome. And I'm really glad to be your host today uh, and we go through. But the theme now over the next 90 minutes is a really interesting theme called Eat Smart, Think Smart. And really that theme of obesity, eating, well-being, particularly in our children. And you can see here some of the panelists we've got of, uh, and you can read their names there, and they'll be introduced slowly by Dr. Rajiv and Professor Ramesh. So I think it's really apt. This was just, I read this last night in BBC News. Um, the government have actually done a U-turn in UK um, of their own obesity strategy. I think a, a fan of mine, I'm sure you've heard of a celebrity chef called Jamie Oliver, who's really worked hard with childhood obesity. And he says, actually, uh, there was meant to be a lot of a ban on a lot of offers for these sort of junk foods and advertising. And actually, the government is on a U-turn on this at the moment or delayed that work. And so it's sort of putting pressure. It's a really interesting time. So with that, I would like to introduce um, our host and our hosts for this, and that particularly are Dr. Rajiv and Prome Professor Ramesh Gupta, who are really, really happy to have you here, really experienced, and you, I think, are so passionate about uh, integrated healthcare and have done so much work in, in your own fields for this. So really glad, and this is your forum, you are the core members of this. 
So with that, um, uh, I think you've seen a lot of the slides. I'm just briefly going to um, introduce um, uh, bo both of them. So you'll be able to see their, their uh, bio data just coming up. So please bear with me and just see there. Oh, I think you can, you can probably see it already. Here we are. So Dr. Rajiv, a warm welcome. You're a qualified med medical doctor with 25 years of experience in the NHS in the UK. And you've been the chairman of the regional council of the BMA, the British Medical Association, as well as regional committees and in the specialist committee of your Royal College. You are a yoga teacher as well and an interest in complementary and alternative medicine. Um, and really has been the mastermind in sort of integrating conventional medicine with other di disciplines. Um, and rightly so, you believe that no sort of branch of medicine is totally perfect. And actually a combination or understanding from each other's disciplines is so important. And I totally agree with you, you know, just sharing. Uh, and, and I think that humility comes with, with experience as well. As, as you become a doctor for 10, 15, 20 years, you realize that actually learning from everyone is so important. Um, outside medicine, you're a professional life coach and also an entrepreneur as well, and created sort of a Suat Chatbal digital sales assistant, along with sort of uh, an international Hermes Platinum Award that you've received for this. Um, and also a, a book I can see called Business of Emotional Intelligence. Rajiv, a warm welcome. I'm just going to introduce Ramesh as well. Um, and so we'll just look at Ramesh as well. Who is a, who's been a consultant physician at Lancashire Teaching Hospitals for nearly 30 years and has led stroke services and also served as a governor. Uh, in addition to your work, you have a real interest in medical professionalism and really has um, collaborated in a wide range of organizations to leading a role in, in sort of fostering the personal professional development of healthcare workers, really important. And uh, you've worked with NHS Trust and the Department of Health and the BMA. Um, and particularly, I think your interest is in sort of engaging the community in healthcare promotion. Particularly, you chair the National Forum for Health and Wellbeing and this Health Mela format where people can come either online digitally or before in person uh, and people can interact with so many different healthcare professionals and really to empower people to take charge of their own health. So I think I've spoken long enough, but really to, to warm welcome to everyone again to Healing Our Earth, the 129th episode our third episode on integrated health. If you're watching, you're just joining, do go to healingourearth.com. We are live on YouTube as well as on Facebook. And you'll see now that we've, we're gonna have a panel of speakers coming in specifically to reflect on the theme of eating smart, thinking smart, of childhood obesity, et cetera. But with that, uh, we'll ask Rajiv and Ramesh now to sort of introduce the topic uh, and we've got till about 3.45 UK time before we then carry on with our other speakers who are going to come and speak on other topics. So Rajiv, namaste and a warm welcome to you. Global namaste. And I'm so grateful to you, Melin, for being a part of Healing the Earth for the years and constantly putting your time out of your busy schedule. And for Nel Kumar for doing hard work behind the scene. It is commendable as well as the whole team of the Healing the Earth really need appreciation. So thank you so much for it. Um, I am quite passionate about, as you mentioned, integration of the health, which is conventional health with the other parts, which is alternative and the complementary medicine. And the reason being, you know, as well as I know that having done many years, for example, if there is chronic pain or backache or arthritis, the only way we in medical life deal is once you have excluded a curable cause, we keep giving painkillers. And then if pain is not controlled, we give a stronger painkiller. And if not, then even stronger. And that's the process we go. And same is for like depression, more antidepressants, anxiety, anxiety. So this is quite good, but then there are other places and uh, we had uh, one of uh, our previous session, uh, Freddie Jackman, who is amazing. And I had a long chat with him before uh, bringing him to our session of the integrated health. And he explained that once we have excluded a medical curable cause, hypnotherapy, which is extremely useful, for the false sense of perception of the pain, because we know pain is a good 
method of signaling to the body that something is wrong. For example, we hurt ourselves, or there is a fracture, or there is a inflammation. Pain gives a signal, then we give painkillers, join the bone, or give something to reduce the inflammation. But at times, this oil is gone, but the signal continues. So false firing of signal happen. Now that causes pain persisting without any reason. And in such case, hypnotherapy can just burn that pathway and bypass the channel. This is just one example. We have very simple example, but PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, you and I know the trauma has gone. People who have seen the things in the past, they keep flashing back and causing disruption of quality of life. Now, if we can do a mechanism to bypass or to reduce that stress, which is extremely good, and there are mechanisms which can do it. Same is like asthma. We know that in asthma, we keep giving the suppressants for asthma. We give inhalers that will continue to suppress. We give preventers, we give relievers. But for example, in Ayurveda, there is a cure for asthma. Same is for diabetes. So many of these conditions like persistent recurrent chronic infection, fantastic cure in homeopathy. So if we can bring the conventional traditional medicine or allopathic medicine, as we call it, with the Ayurveda, with the homeopathy, with the hypnotherapy, with, uh, with Tai Chi, uh, which is what I was talking to uh, Keith and he is here. It's just amazing how it can work. Together, we can have a big toolbox and we give an optimal evidence-based choice to the patient to use the tool which is suitable for them because not one thing works for everywhere, every condition, every disease, every personality. And uh, it's amazing to see in Ayurveda, there is Kapha, Vata, Fitta, the all different have personality. For the same disease, there is different medicine. So it's a mind boggling science and I have been through all it and I'm really, really glad that there is a big body. There is a lot of people since uh, uh, we have started this mission, people have come to join because that is the need. We need to have not only reliance on one system, wherever there is a better cure, there is a better evidence, there is a better support and we are collecting lots of testimonials now in order to move it forward. So I'm grateful for all people that are around 50, 60 people we have in our group who are continuously helping, contributing to move this agenda forward. So the second important thing is, uh, 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 I think uh, obesity is one of the big problem as most of you will know. And uh, I believe that this is a time bomb nearly two thirds, something like somewhere around 60, 66% people in all developed countries, including UK, Australia, England, everywhere and America, two thirds of people are either overweight or obese. So you can imagine, and they have a package of problem that come with it, which include high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, hypercholesterolemia, gallbladder uh, diseases, and also uh, increased weight. You imagine that if you're 20 kilo overweight, you are carrying a suitcase worth of weight, which you take on the flight continuously. And that is just there. So osteoarthritis is set up in early. And there are many other conditions associated, which is low self-esteem, depression, and disruption of the family life, inability to walk, breathlessness, even for a short walk, all these problems. So if we can do something by changing this lifestyle of children, which are based in early life and have somehow um, escaped the contamination of the world. So if we can do early introduction of what is good and also help them how a little change in their eating habits, which include slight change, maybe I'm not saying all people have junk food, but a slightly healthier lifestyle because children by nature don't like, well, a good proportion don't like either practical experience being a pediatrician. They don't like eating green foods or fiber foods, but 
once we give them a method of recognition, this is good, and they can see the longer effect rather than a short-term effect, they would do it. And we have got some plan of making it attractive for them. So instead of telling them what is good, they choose that this is good for them. So if they own the, uh, the lifestyle that which is good for them, they're going to have benefit. And the same is doing physical activity exercise. Now with the sedentary habit, watching television, doing work on computer, uh, on phone is a second nature. Everybody is doing it. Now, this is going to be a big problem because the sedentary lifestyle has increased almost 800 calories redundancy and therefore there's imbalance and that extra calories goes and deposit in the body in form of the fat. Now, there is increased tolerance and I hate to say that a lot of people being overweight is considered normal because then large proportion is overweight or big, that is the norm. So norm is shifting. However, the problems due to increased weight is not shifting. That therefore we have higher degree of the heart attacks and whatever, stroke, hypertension, high blood pressure is so common. You know, being in general practice, how common is that? So I think it will be good to do that. And the second biggest problem is the mental health problems. And that is on rise, continuously rising. And what was there like 20 years ago in like two decades, it has more than doubled. And you hear on the news all the time that more resources need to be allocated for mental health conditions. Question is, if we can teach these children simple techniques, how to identify anxiety, how to get the signals of depression very early, how to um, do it in themselves and in their colleagues. And Fiona is here who has done tremendous work in uh, with the children, how to use small, like single tapping, like, you know, simple tacking techniques can bring this, you know, anxiety, stress, depression to a very low level, how they can become more confident, how they can do the things amazingly better. So we can create a far better newer generation for these children who are five, 10 years will become 15 or 20 in 10 years time. And if we can create that crop who is ready to tackle with the challenge, that is the biggest benefit we can have. So I think with the think smart part, which is tackling the mental health and eat smart, which is tackling the physical problem and obesity, if you put it together, you're planning to roll into the schools and there is a program of Eat Well Sheffield, which one of my colleagues has been doing, which has been successful. So we are making it bigger, more extendable, and they are limited to Sheffield. We are going to go across the country in UK and in Australia and in US and Malaysia and Mauritius. And Good. I think to make it <laughs> to make it worldwide would be would be great. But you're right. Sometimes uh, to start locally and some pilots and see what works, etc. That was, uh, uh, Raju, that was a really interesting introduction. So to summarize at the moment, certainly the, the concept of integrated health. And as you say, there are certain many, many conditions, you mentioned some of chronic pain, of PTSD, et cetera, which just uh, modern or mainstream healthcare just you know doesn't always have an answer for, except for maybe more and more drugs sometimes, or we, or we know what to do, but we don't always have the time, et cetera, or, or who to refer to. And I think you've pinpointed two really interesting topics, which you say are under eat smart and think smart. So one of eating and whether we want to call it obesity or however you want to take the topic of, of weight gain, of how it's trying to be normalized. But what are the fact? There's so many factors. And I've, I've you know seen already on the WhatsApp group, which we've already had some discussions of so many different factors that are there that contribute to, to weight. And it's so complex at times. And secondly, that of mental health as well. And these are two very under-resourced areas, even in the NHS. And it's un uh, there are lots of conspiracy theories why. <laughs> I think one is pharmaceuticals, <laughs> that there is no clear um, uh, uh, drug for that. So something, there's no push for that, so so on. But actually it needs a lot more labor intensive lifestyle changes and such, you know, we find even now as I work as a GP, how much mental health that I see every day and how many complex uh, cases we see. But anyway, that, 
And that was the summary. Um, I know uh, briefly to introduce Ramesh, I know you can see Fiona is already with us. And I think the theme uh, for the next hour at least will be a panel discussion. We've got various different panel members who will have a chance to speak and share their ideas. And as you can see there on the screen, for those who are watching, we've got Fiona, Clark, Carol May, Kishan, Sarifa. I hope some, I, I can see some of them are already online, uh, Dr. Prabhu and Dr. Anand as well. Uh, certainly Fiona is with us. So we've got a handful of really interesting people who are passionate about this theme. Um, briefly, just because I know Ramesh is with us as well. And Ramesh, uh, one of the, again, the core members of this integrated health. I'm not sure if you wanted to share any welcoming words before I'm sure Fiona will be ready to share some of her insights as well. Uh, Ramesh. Well, welcome to this uh, group. And I think I fully agree with every word what Rajiv has said. He has said the same. I think basically what we are saying that there are several other unconventional therapies available and which have been tried and tested for thousands of years. They're not new and they couldn't be in the existence if they didn't work. The problem which we have got is to prove it the way the conventional therapies have been proved that this works their way and show us their way so that then we can think about funding them and making them available under NHS, which I find a bit amazing, difficult task, but we need to try. And I saw last time also, I said, it, I am saying again, the time has come now that we should be trying to collect the case histories, the testimonials, the patient should speak, those who have been benefited by these various therapies, so that we can show and start to convince that there is an evidence in the modern era, and there is a place for these unconventional so-called therapies, which are available and practiced. The people have to go hunt them and pay them the money, some of them who really can't. And that is not a justice that uh, people have to find uh, a sort of differential treatment because of their incapability of pain. Now, the children, I think one of the things which is important that, okay, we have grown up whatever shape and size, but I think at least what we can try to give our best show to the children. So the children of today, grow up as an adult, which is not only with the school education knowledge base, but also better human beings who are not abusing the resources in future of the NHS. All the time, when you put the television on, NHS under resource, NHS under resource. How can we do that? The waiting list is increasing. For a treatment which I need today, why should I wait a day more? That's, I can't uh, conceptualize really, you know, I find it difficult. So I think the time, time will come, time should come when we should produce healthy crops who do not need intervention, but if they need, it is available immediately at hand, not only by conventional, allopathic therapy, but any other therapy which will work and suit that particular thing. Our partnership basically is to make it happen. And we have got a 20 years experience of health melas, where the general population, including children, their teachers, their parents, they come in all the generations, all the, uh, the, um, the ethnicities, and they together, they have a fun day and also they are educated and shown what is available and they are signposted. Sometimes the people don't know how to go about particular illness. So I think in, adult, in children, there is a demand and we have already have a few schools lined up where we will go and address these issues. The main issues in children which I see is a childhood obesity, the bullying, the mental health issues, isolation, 
less of mixing and less of exercise. I go to home to my grandchildren. I see them stuck to the sofa in front of the television. Television is on at the same time their hands are on on the computer or you can say these uh, iPads or whatever you say. So they are all the energy is all the time in those things. So they have to learn. I know we cannot take those computers away. We cannot take those uh, iPads away. We cannot take those uh, mobile phones away, but we can teach them and tell them how to use them effectively and how, to, how much to use and not to get addicted to that. So I think that is sort of thing which we are working. And today, uh, I think we have asked one of the teachers, uh, Catherine, later on she may join, whose school we are going very soon on 2nd of July to have a health mela in Manchester. And we would like to hear from her as to what are the needs of the children they think are important. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ramesh. And I think the theme coming out very clearly is that of health and well-being of sort of preventative health, health promotion. And again, as doctors, often we're trained to look for, and rightly so, you know, my theme every day is to look for disease, constantly looking, looking, looking. But if someone sat with me for 10, 15 minutes and said, well, how do I actually, I'm actually well, doctor, I, I'm, I'm fine, but how do I prevent myself from getting more unwell? Um, I'd be scratching my head after sort of a two or three minute talk with them. And those are the kind of tools where there are other professionals who are very good with, um, whether it be good eating habits, good mental health, good physical exercise. Ramesh, you, you, you sort of characterize my own children as well, because I think there's a, there's a new age where I think it's decreased attention spans. We know that we, we've looked, I, I, you know, I, I look at children with either ADHD or just um, just on the spectrum of that. And the attention spans are going down. And the multitasking, actually watching TV on a phone, on an iPad and having a conversation at the same time, they almost need three or four different stimulants at the same time just to keep them going, which is which is a very different to maybe a younger, different generation. But um, um, Rajiv, I'm going to hand over to you to maybe chair or I'm happy to work with you because I know Fiona has been uh, waiting very patiently here and to share some ideas. We've got, look, we've got a good over an hour together so we can really, uh, as in with, with all the different panel members to share their thoughts and we can dive hopefully quite deep into this theme, I think particularly today of eating smart. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks Milan. Yeah, I'll probably carry on because I have spoken to some people and they will be doing. So I think it's both uh, eat smart as well as think smart. And we know that obesity is in some way the 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 biggest cause of prevention, well, preventable premature death. And on the other hand, mental health problems is the biggest cause of preventable suffering. So if we can tackle that, it will be great. So I think it will be good to uh, hear from, and in, in fact, uh, those people who are um, uh, our panelists, please uh, raise your hand and do um, show your um, intention to uh, to contribute because we have kept it deliberately a session so that we will bring people in and out rather than just having a, a speaking slot and talk. We will bring people in and out how people think we can make this project more successful going into the school, primary school, secondary school together, giving them some reward for running this. And this will need a commitment from the head teacher that a time is going to be given for this purposes, for giving the specific educational aspect, also giving them time to, to practice these aspects, whether it is in assembly or during the dedicated time, but also calling parents because they need to be on board, teacher need to be on board. So it's a big uh, task. However, it's a doable task and we're going to do in small chunks. We're going to do pilots. In fact, we have got a series of people who are interested in the pilot. So, I'm thinking is that we might bring few things um, at a time. So I am thinking is one of the one of the simplest things which I have found amazing, and uh, we will start with that initially. Is that how children who are having low self-esteem, who are stuck into this rut, and we have uh, heard probably you have heard of suicides in children because of 
the social media influence, the children being groomed on social media, the children having a lot of screen time, children losing self-esteem because of the weight or mental health or family, domestic violence, etc. And they keep on going in a negative spiral, but how they can come out of it. So I would request Fiona who has done that work with school and she has got a beautiful instrument, generalizer. I have never seen that before, never heard that before. It's amazing how you can check your energy level, how you can change it and how you can build the difference. So with all the um, warm welcome to Fiona. Would you share your wisdom? And then we'll have some more questions to you. Thank you. Sure, thank you so much Rajiv and thank you for allowing me to be on your panel. So just to give you a bit of an idea of who I am and where my background really has been, I trained as a kinesiologist back in 1991 when, you know, I was really looked upon as quite a strange person at that time talking about meridians and energy and all these different things because it really was not 30 odd years ago, the sort of common language that we were used to hearing muscle testing and all these different things. So my journey really started then and it it took me into this world of, oh my God, what we can do with our own bodies, how magnificent this body is that we live in, that we don't honor so often. Now I continue to train as a certain reflexologist and all sorts of different techniques after this. And I think it was really when I had my own kids who are 22 and 24, that I became quite obsessive, I would say, about their well-being. Number one with the food, I was obsessed with what they ate because my theory was, and this is where I think this whole topic has to come down to education. It has to come down to the parents to start with. We have to teach the parents to start with what they can do for their children. I was one of those obsessed women who went into Sainsbury's the food shop and I would check on every single can or anything to see what was in it. And if it had anything that I didn't like the sound of, I would not buy it. My kids at the age of two were eating kidney beans out of the can or the thing that, you know, I was just, because I thought if I give them the first five years when I know that I'm in control, the best diet they could have possible, then that will keep their immune system in the most perfect, well, the most perfect way you can actually start your life. And that has continued. I mean, I was very much not allopathic. I never had Calpol. I never gave them anything on the medical thing. They had homeopathy. They had flower essences. I, had, I gave them reflexology and they had no problems. They never had antibiotics when they were kids at all, nothing. They never had ear infections, throat infections, none of these things. So that really was the start of me working with children, just seeing how my kids, and obviously they're older now, so they, <laughs> they've got their own ideas about what they eat. But even so, they know what feels good in their body, even now, and I'll say to my youngest, who's 22, your skin's not looking quite as good as it normally, is. oh yeah, I've been eating too much sugar or crappy stuff. So they're aware of this. But I then started to work with children. I actually lived in Asia for 10 and a half years. I lived in Hong Kong and I lived in the Philippines. Now, any of you who live in Asia will know that actually it's very different living in Asia because I think our Western mind and our Western way of bringing us up. And I have to say this, and I feel very strongly about this in the UK, as magnificent as the NHS is, I think it's done us a huge disservice in many, many ways, because we're brought up from being children as young, uh, young people. If you are sick, you go to somebody else to fix you. And this is where I feel there is um, an educational mishap in so many ways, because in Asia, they start with understanding what people can do for themselves, whether it's meditation, whether it's good food, whether it's acupuncture, whether it's herbs. They start from an early age to Tai Chi, to understand how they eat well, how they deal with the mental health because they're doing Tai Chi or whatever it is. There is a different connection. Whereas in the West, kids and adults, think it's not their responsibility to take care of their own health in every possible way. It's like it's not my responsibility and they don't want to pay for it 
because the NHS, oh, well, go down to doctors, he'll give you a tablet. Well, as, <laughs> I was never like that, clearly, with my kids. And I brought them up in Asia for the majority of their life. So I've worked in schools. I've taught tapping in schools, EFT, if you don't know about it. I believe every single child and person should have this in their little toolbox or their energy chest, as I would call it. I've taught it to the teachers. I've taught teacher who was actually taught in her class. And the difference was magnificent. I mean, she couldn't even put into words necessarily what was going on. But the energy in the classroom changes. You will always get the resistant kids, but they always come around after a certain amount of time. I also volunteer for the NH, um, the NSPCC. Clearly, I haven't done too much in the last two years since we've had lockdown, where we go into schools and we talk about abuse and how different things lead to abuse um, and how they can deal with that. So it's very much the message is speak up to stay safe. So I see a lot of kids. This is just the primary kids. This is just up to 11 years old. And I see how they get to year six, so 10, 11 year olds, how the weight on their shoulders gets heavier and heavier and heavier from say the children who are six, seven, eight years old. And if we can teach children from a young age how to deal with stress, they don't give a monkeys about what they're doing as such, they just know it works. And I, as a kinesiologist, I did a lot of brain gym stuff, I've taught acupressure. And what I did with a lot of the kids when I was in the Philippines, I got these little cards, like little credit cards, and I had these little techniques that were on each of these cards and they used to take them off and they would look around, you know, OK, what do I need? Do I need cooks hookups? Do I need this acupressure point to, to bring in myself into calm? Do I need this to get rid of my sinuses or earache or whatever it may be? And they loved it. They would run up to me at school if they saw me. Say, oh, Mrs. Clark, I've just shown my friend how to do this because it empowers them. They feel good. And I think this is so much of an issue is that children are not empowered by teachers, parents, peers. It's control. Fiona, Fiona. so yeah. when you said they're not empowered, how we can empower them? What would you say? How can we empower them? But I mean, for me, it's a matter of sharing with the kids how they can empower themselves in the respect of give them skills and techniques so that they can have choices. They have different choices. And I have kids coming up to me that, and to be honest, I've even forgotten that I've taught them how to do tapping. And five, six years later, they're coming to me, or their parents are, and saying, oh, my God, he's still doing that. And I'm like, well, I don't even remember teaching them. But they know. And this is the difference when we teach the kids from a young age. But it has to also come with the parents. Because if the parents are not educated in what the value of good food is, what the value of doing simple techniques... You know, there, I mean, I've got quite a few of these. I think I've shared with you, Rajiv, on my YouTube channel. Cooks hookups, twisty army thingy. The kids have renamed it. This this technique, bringing the balance of the brain back into one, and this is a powerful. I use it myself pretty much every day. I call it the. Why don't you, why, why don't you show us, Fiona? Is amazing. Okay, really it's so no simple, and this is a technique that I've taught to kids as young as six. So all you're literally doing. Because when we're stressed, we're generally in the left side of the brain, aren't we? The right side of the brain is sort of like doing its own thing. Left side of the brain, self-mastery, absolutely, Carol, is on overdrive and the adrenaline's going and everything's like this. So what we want to do is to bring everything into balance. So if you cross your ankles over, you cross your arms over. Now you're crossing your arms at the elbows. You're putting the palms of your hands together and you can either bring them up underneath your chest, you can leave them down, or if you're in a meeting or at school and you don't want anyone to know what you're doing, just cross your hands over your lap. So the kids have renamed it Twisty Army Thingy, which I rather love. It's called the Wayne Cook technique, actually, officially, because it was Wayne Cook that brought it together in, I don't know, 80s or 90s. Now, when you're you're doing this, what we want you to do is to breathe in for four and rest the tongue on the top of the mouth. And as you're breathing out, you just allow the tongue to drop down. And you're just taking these nice long deep breaths in from the base of the tummy, in for four, tongue up. And dropping your tongue down for the count of four. Let's just do one more. Bringing the, um, the breath in with the tongue up. 
and let it go. Now you can do that for as long as you like. You can stay there. I can sometimes do this for 20, 30, 40 minutes. Second part of this is uncross the ankles, put the fingertips together. So this is like bringing the representation of the, the right and left brain together. And of course, those of you know, energetically, we have meridians. We've got six meridians coming off the hands, the fingers. So we're connecting here and you're gonna do the same breath again. So just bringing the breath in for four, tongue up. And letting the tongue drop down as you breathe out. And then another couple of breaths, bringing it in. And let it go. And one more, bringing it in, tongue up. And let it go. Okay. Very calming. I'm hoping that you can sense the, that state of calm, even just doing it for those short few minutes. Now, the reason we're putting the tongue on the roof of the mouth is because that connects in with the governing meridian, which starts at the coccyx bone, comes all the way up the spine, and it finishes under here. That is representing, if you think about that, that's going down the nervous system as well. So it just allows the body to come back into balance. This is the most brilliant technique that you can use if you're you can't sleep if kids are hyper you do this in a classroom right at the beginning of the their day and then again after lunch they calm down if they're having like a frazzled moment or you're in a big state of arguments or whatever get the kids to go and do this in Hong Kong, a lot of these techniques, brain gym techniques, are a part of the day where they do it before they start school, five minutes, and they do it again after lunch. So this is a really powerful technique. It is a brilliant technique if you've been on the computer too much, which I spend quite a lot of my time on Zoom. And I will go off and I will do this for 20 odd minutes. And it's just I can feel my energy just rising and lifting. So that is just one technique that I use with the kids and our body knows what it needs. Another point under here for those people who are very anxious is just tap. This is the end of the kidney meridian under here. One of the most powerful meridians in the body. It's a tonic point. And this kidney meridian is all to do with the fear and the anxiety. We do this automatically with our kids. We pat them on the chest. I mean, I used to pat my boys on the back. We do this because we know it feels good. So when we breathe, take those nice, long, deep breaths, telling the body that you're in that state of calm. You know, you're activating the um, parasympathetic nervous system. Doing this often, it just brings you back into a state of balance. So these are really simple, simple techniques that we can teach our children, but equally teach the parents, teach the teachers. Thank you. You've so got much. to go with all of that as well. Brilliant. That's so useful. Extremely good. I've got uh, Carol and Julia. Uh, so they might want to contribute or add something. So maybe start with Carol. So stay um, on Fiona. And I think do add more value to discussion. The idea is that more people contribute, how to make it happen, greater it is. So Carol, first, please. Um, yes, I'd like to ask the panel, really, um, where's the money coming from to teach this in schools? Because everything costs money these days. And I know teachers. I know what's going on in schools. Um, I teach children and um, I'm teaching children cookery skills and I know how frazzled teachers are, how short of money schools are. Um, and I, so I'd love to know from the panel where they think the money's coming from to teach all of this, because I know this stuff works. I've taught EFT. I've known EFT for over 20 years. And I know this stuff works and that children are like little sponges. They absorb this stuff that we give them um, and, and instantly it creates change, but it all costs money. So that's a great question. And I know money rewards the world. Everything needs money. The question is that there are two aspects to it. So I was thinking that A, First thing is that with simple changes, 
a lot of things can be done. And we have done it. Romesh will, uh, will uh, share the views that we have gone to school. In fact, we are implementing in school already. On 2nd of July, there is going to be a health mail uh, that's, I think, in an alternative somewhere. So, and the, the teacher is, is very delighted. The head teacher is, because they have this part of their curriculum. And Julia uh, and I were talking yesterday, is his, in their interest because academic part is one, but getting children a better health, better life, better memory, because you know that they are more confident, there is less, less, less depression, they can learn more, so academic advancement will happen. So in theory, little changes, it's in their interest to do it, and they can find the time. So Julia, do you want to share it? And then we'll get Romesh to share yeah yeah um so first of all thank you very much fiona for that i mean you've you've probably shared about half of what i would say as well um and i fully agree that especially with the teaching that needs to start with parents um and teachers onto the children um it's leading by example and i actually wrote a concept i worked in school as well and uh, we started when i spoke to the school i said you know i can't just go in and speak to these children i said if they if they go home with an idea and they're excited and the parents look at them and go like what on earth are you talking about eating the rainbow you know what do you it, it's like if they don't understand it then the kids are disappointed right away and the whole thing is going to backfire so it's very important same way is with the teachers it's all good to have a uh, to have a theme of, of health and well-being in the school but if not every teacher it's you know we all know learning you know repetition is a mother of all learning it is we need to get it into our unconscious we need to get it we need to put the the wanting to be healthy and wanting to eat better wanting to make better choices choices we need to get that into the forefront of our unconscious almost so that it becomes a habit that it becomes a natural desire to live that way and to look for those choices and that can only happen I think if if we all work together and it needs to come all the time whilst we're teaching our children so quickly back to the money question um I'm not ignoring that Carol so the money question you know I I always think I I I have so many clients and I'm sure all of us here come across and said, oh, I couldn't pay for that. And just like Fiona said, you know, it's so easy, run to the doctor and the NHS, you know, we get everything for free. There's a pill for an ill. The thing is, we need to make choices. The amount of people I speak to who tell me, oh, I don't want to pay this, but now I'm meeting my friend. Oh yeah, I'm meeting her twice in Starbucks every week. And then we have a coffee and a cake, which will cost them 10, 15 quid. Okay. But then they wouldn't have like two pounds a day to actually invest into maybe the health or food or or, or um, you know, any mindfulness, et cetera, et cetera. So we need to make choices. We need to want to do it. We can't teach people to want to feel better. We can only give them the guidance and showing them by example that it will be better. And as teachers, I'm, I've always been involved in my primary school. I've got three children, two are still in primary school. I've always been involved in the EFT. I've been volunteering at school with different things in order to see a bit of what's going on as well. And I'm also on the... Um, Parent and Teacher Association um, now, you know, in a leading role in, in the secondary school where my older child is. And I can tell you that there is a lot of fundraising going on by the PTA and PSA. And if you would think like if a therapist goes in and let them charge 60, 60 pounds an hour, that would be two pounds per child. Now, if the PTA or PSA can fund a pound of that, then it's a pound a child. We have so many things, you know, and even if there's someone really cannot even spend that pound that can be made up okay so that money is available that doesn't need to come out of the standard uh, standard school budget and we're not talking about um you know every day having having a specialist in every day because they need to put things into practice things take time they're only kids they have so much to absorb so even with a simple exercise like fiona just showed us or simple other things that i go in with with the kids there's so much that can be done so you have a specialist going in once and they have food for an entire term OK, so I think in terms of the funding for schools, that can definitely be achieved. Now, really would see this as a secondary thing. The question is, are the schools, are the parents willing to invest into the future of their children, into the happiness, into the learning ability and into the future of their children? And I think this is where the education needs to start. And again, while we holistically need to teach them all, not just go and tell the children how it can be done, but make sure that the parents and teachers can actually fulfill that as well. Now, in terms of, obviously, I'm very passionate about 
food um i'm come from the nutritional side of things but with a holistic approach so i'm never ignoring everything else and as um, rajiv said you know it is eat well and think well because it is so connected now again talking about cost effective methods one thing that shocks me is the fact that you know it is more important to avoid a spillage of a glass of water on a desk than the actual concentration ability of the child if every child would have a glass of water on the desk in fact let me go further if every work person in an office would have a glass of water mandatory on their desk it should be an hr you know requirement it should be a requirement for every school by Ofsted, that everybody has a bottle of water you can even make it a business how do we fund that well there's so many businesses who want to put their advertising in yeah let a business fund those water bottles for the kids they have those to label them with a name and they can take a zip whenever they want i mean all these like you know drinking bottles that you have for sports for cycling or whatever they don't spill anywhere much but the, there is enough research out there that if you just offer children a glass of water before an exam, for instance, that the performance and the output will be significantly higher. Now, I know there are countries out there where water, you know, is scarce and not available. But let's just so in general and where we're talking here, where I live in the UK, it isn't a problem to supply some water and there is no cost as such involved that's not a massive amount of extra cost okay now another thing is um often when we teach these techniques and you know whether it is tapping which someone might look at you and go like what what are you tapping your head are you an idiot or what you know children will be embarrassed they might not want to do it so as Fiona said you know we can do things under the desk but there is something else that I, I I pass on usually and that is if someone feels anxious and feels really whether it's before an exam whether it's because they have to stand up whatever it may be maybe they were just bullied or just felt uncomfortable with their friends or maybe they did something and and, and realizing oh my goodness I've just you know blame my friend for something i shouldn't have done whatever there's so much going on in these kids at that age i have to hold my phone here at the minute um, okay. with one hand so i can only show you with one hand but if you tap from with your thumb starting with your small finger and just say peace begins with me peace begins with me if you do that with both of your hands it's a breathing rhythm that you get in. It is an affirmation that you put in your head. You don't need to say it out loud. You can do that with your hands in your pocket. You can do that at the cashier in the supermarket. You can do that anywhere, anytime. You can do that first thing in the morning when you wake up, you know, and just do it for a few times. Do it 10 times or so and feel just just even the peace that runs through the veins in your arm. And through that breathing, you're calming your breathing down. And again, you have the positive affirmation in there. Nobody is seeing that. It doesn't cost a thing. It, you know, it doesn't even need a lot of teaching. That's something that teachers can be taught on a teacher training day that they have enough of, you know, and the school wouldn't have to pay anything extra. So, I mean, you know, there, there are little, I mean, I'm, I'm very, very passionate about the water and I'm very passionate about, you know, this little thing, because again, yeah, eat well, think well. If children can't concentrate, if children have, you know, feel they are falling behind, and, and, and they are aware of it. But again, that's the other thing. They need to be allowed to express that awareness. They need to be allowed to say, you know, teacher, I need to go out or, or could I do this and that? They need to be allowed to share about their experiences. Correct. But these days they're shut up and say, well, you would deal with that during the break. You and know, that's, I think, it, Julia, that's it, a very important point that, uh, as you mentioned, that these are simple, low cost techniques. A part can be included like in teachers training and the students training during the assembly, during the you know PE class. A lot of these things, these changes are simple mindfulness, even when they are in the dinner, if they are taught how to eat, what to eat, how you know it's good, tapping again, they can do. So these are quite simple and, and good techniques. So Carol, uh, and let, me just, let me just add, let me just quickly add one 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 thing, Raji, if I because one thing, one observation also about the cost and you know when I said about the priorities and why I feel so strongly about this is because when I went to this school and, and I wrote the concept to to have a talk to the parents, a talk to the teachers and a talk to the children. Yeah, obviously on their level, but so that everybody understood the full context and they could continue talking about things. Now the teachers 
who need it. And we've got many, many obese teachers. I know this teachers' jobs are very, very stressful. However, how many teachers do we have who are completely unhealthy themselves and they talk about health to the children? Okay, so we need to start with a mindset there. And we just need to be honest about this here. So the thing is, those teachers who were probably the unhealthiest didn't attend the talk. It was free to them to attend or not. And of the parents, there was one parent of the year group that I had the talk in who actually came to the talk. Just one parent of those children who was interested in what's happening in school and they were long-term informed, you know, they had over a month at, to book it, et cetera, et cetera. One parent showed up. Now, lots of other parents from other year groups, et cetera, but of that particular year group, only one. And the questions that the parents had when I did the talk were all about themselves, their own health, their own health challenges. There wasn't a single question about what else could you do, could we do, Julia, in order to help our children? Yeah, so it is a mindset thing here and a thing of priorities, and then we'll find the money. Thank you so much, that's brilliant. So uh, let me bring Rombesh in, then uh, give a brief chance to Carol, then back to Fiona, and then we'll have some gathering of thoughts from uh, Dr. Prabhu as well, and we've got Izio as well, so Elise will uh, come on. So let's just uh, gather the thoughts and then we'll bring other people in. So, That's right. Okay. We just we just got a bit and just a time check as well. So it's been fantastic. I'm really enjoying some really energetic and such valid points coming through. So just telling you uh, at the moment, it's UK 3 p.m. time, wherever yeah. you are joining in the world. But do remember, do, it's a really interesting conversation we're having. And we're actually live at the moment on on various platforms such as YouTube and Facebook as well as healingourearth.com. So do share it with those who are on the chat at the moment on Zoom or wherever you are, do share it with others that we are on live at the moment so we can carry on. But we've had some, you know, we're, we're, we're well got plenty of time still to discuss. We're only sort of halfway through this panel discussion. We can see we've got uh, Dr. Prabhu and Dr. Anand as well. Uh, Fiona, that was really interesting as well. I think there's so many, so many topics just even uh, on taking responsibility for health the first five years of someone's life, how the parents, whether it's mother or father, uh, have, have that real input as well. And Julie, you mentioned, so I've got two young kids, so it's still primary school age, and our school talks about the triangle, really, of the teacher, the pupil, and the parents. And if all three are not aligned, as you say, you can go home and tell someone about healthy eating, but if they go back to their parents who haven't got a clue, and, and all three being engaged... Uh, just for the uh, audience, you have mentioned EFT a few times. If someone could elaborate exact just what the mnemonic means, EFT, and it's mentioned a few times. Let's get, let's get Fiona on that. And then uh, I get uh, Romesh to highlight about the funding issue. And then yeah. we will... Definitely, uh, yeah. And, and on funding, because we'll come back to that always on healthcare. And also, Fiona, really resonates with me about what you said about uh, the good and boy, bad points about the NHS, but of seeking help and this feeling of, I always need to go somewhere else to seek help. And again, going back to, I think, particularly the family doctor who'd hopefully if you've got like myself, we've got relationship over 10, 20 years with patients can really empower them and actually find their own uh, own, own ways to seek health uh, and their well-being rather than always seeking it outside. But, yeah, someone on EFT, because I've had a few questions on, on that as well. Right. And again, the people who are on Facebook or Twitter or Periscope, please keep asking questions. And can we have somebody um, looking through the question and bringing to the panel uh, so that we can uh, uh, address these questions. And that is the main purpose why we kept today's day as more open discussion rather than as a talk of, of slots so that we can accommodate the free flow of thinking. So uh, Fiona, quickly uh, to for you to uh, explain the emotional freedom technique EFT. <laughs> emotional, yeah, EFT, emotional freedom technique, tapping, whatever people want to call it. It is the most magnificent technique because it literally, we're tapping specific points on the meridian system. They're either the beginning or the ends of the, of the meridians. Now, what most people don't realize, and what I was really curious about, every single point has an emotion connected to it. So this is what's really important for people to understand, not that you're just tapping these points randomly. They have the meridian. So wherever that meridian is going through the body, that might indicate where there might be physical problems, which has got an imbalance within that meridian as well. But the emotions, for example, as I said to you, kidney here, kidney bladder starts at the beginning of the eyebrow. Both of those are in the water element. They represent fear and anxiety and panic and all those sort of feelings, which is what kids get, adults get. So it is 
And it's like I always say, if you're stressed, in pain or sick, your body is out of balance. And what we're doing all the time, and as an energy healer and practitioner, we want to bring the body back into balance, into harmony, whichever way we can do it. And tapping these points, it's like the flow of water. It's like, you know, you've got the flow, the spring's going down, you want to see that stream glowing and everything else. But if you get a pool of water, it goes green and stagnant. That's like in your energy when it gets blocked. So by tapping these points, we're just shifting the vibration of how people are feeling. It is the easiest technique. And whatever I said with my children when I've taught them, you either bring a friend with you to the workshop or you bring your sibling and you go home and you teach your parents. So I've put that pressure and I said, you play it, pay it forward. So you're then starting because what happens is with the kids that I've taught in schools and a teacher that I taught in Mexico, an international school, when the kids are so used to doing this tapping five minutes and all we're doing is I'm going to have a great day. I'm open to learning. Everything works out for me. I'm confident, whatever. That is all we're doing. Not working on issues before, uh, before they start and after lunchtime. When the teacher has forgotten, the kids go back to the teacher and say, we haven't done our tapping because they know they don't feel as good. So the kids, when they do this for a while, they understand how different they feel. They don't care about how or what or whatever. They just know they feel good. So it's really important that we get the parents and we get the teachers. And this is what I did in a school locally. We taught all the teachers first. We went in and just checked out. Then we went in and taught the kids and we left them to it. So every day the routine becomes, this is what we do five minutes before we start the day. We just tap around these points, end of, and you always, you, you know, even the resistant kids who might be resistant for two months, they always, because they're in that energetic environment, they pick it up. And then I had one teacher actually who said to me, the kid that was most resistant saying, this is just totally stupid, I'm not doing this, ended up at the end of the term bringing her, his mother in and, had taught his mother how to do it all. Amazing. That's what happens. Amazing. So never assume they're not taking it in because some of them will be, but not actually stating it. But it's a powerful, powerful technique that anyone can use and it doesn't have to be complicated. So fantastic. So if, uh, if Carol and Julia hold on for a minute, let me bring Romesh in because as you demonstrated, you know, it doesn't need a lot of funding. Kids getting benefit, they are motivating their parents, they are reminding teachers, little things happening, you know, just, just doesn't really need. So small, simple things can do amazing things. So let's hear from Ramesh. And then we um, we got uh, we got uh, Dr. Prabhu and Dr. Eileen Anand. So I think let's hear their views and then we come back to you, uh, Carol and Julia, and then we'll try and see. I'm conscious of the time, but I think there is so much of energy flowing. There are so many thoughts coming. I think we need to capture it. So. Um, do you want to share anything in terms of, of funding? Because Health Mela has been done without, with minimal funding for like 20 years. And it has done successfully, it has changed the health, the lifestyle and the future of people identifying the disease early and health promotion in a very effective way with negligible. And so do you want to just share and how you think uh, we can implement because uh, we are having a session uh, as early as 2nd of July. So all those people within the panel, all those who are from outside uh, into various social media, please do send us message and we will try and encourage and involve you because more the merry, we would want it to be really nationwide and global. And that is extremely good. We have got people like Ishram from, from uh, from different country like you know far east and they are doing the work which we are going to hear shortly about the garden project so these simple things are quite good so uh quickly romesh first and then uh, let's get uh, dr prabhu and then uh, Ilil and then right i i think what uh, um, i want to say is a lot have been said and uh, i'm glad that uh, julia has been to few of our health mailers and she knows what is done there. I have learned a lot today. Honestly, I've learned a lot from a very experienced uh, people. Didn't pay anything. I didn't budget for this. So how, why did I uh, get it free? Because I've learned over the years, I've come from Asia, I've come from India. UK is the most generous 
country they are first in raising funds and in charity and so many important treatments and things are done because they are so generous now it is nothing to do with kerala kerala is only a messenger i know for certain she has put that question because majority of the people will put it and she is a messenger so i am not even any attempt not any intention of hitting her but let me say something whenever any question comes why we ask for funding you know the simple simple answer is our managers who are badly trained or not trained or whatever it is or the the what intelligentsia in them is poor i don't want to go into those they are very good they are very good in making a case for funding and then proving that they have used the funds effectively and that is their job first they make the case then they do nothing sit back after a year they make it is report again that they how wonderful they have been they are very poor in working with those shop floor workers listening to them watching them and finding areas where the money can be saved if anybody says in nhs or anywhere that the money is not wasted i am not going to listen to them and i'm not going to agree to them and i have worked in nhs so many years i don't think that i can put my hands and say that i have not wasted before the clinic started in the community i was one of the rare species who started the clinic in gp's surgery with no extra money it is a matter of shuffling your own workload that where it is demanded where it is needed and go there and do it it is a matter of taking initiative it is not a matter of waiting somebody to say you do it because they are saying then i can say where is the funding that is the funding issue now i think if you look at the health mela you look at anything it is a matter of shifting money money is not going to come from anywhere why some people want to send their children to private schools education is free in this country at school levels why do the same it is a choice they want to exploit their children's potential more more and more and more they may get it or they may not get it it is a different issue so it is a matter of choice our job is to tell them what is available how we can help you how we can help the children's mother and how we can give some benefit of this education and uh, the knowledge to the teachers but choice is theirs and coming lastly to the point that where the obese teacher is teaching is it right or would it make it an impact let us not be judgmental there are teachers there are doctors there are other people if a doctor is smoker chain smoker or a obese but he has every right and every duty to tell to their patients that don't smoke it is harmful reduce weight because we do not know the internal history there may be hormonal imbalance there may be some other thing that is what the choice he want to keep that you know but i think never be judgmental on those things we need to teach those things to the students as well that look looking at that don't think that be, oh but she is doing she does this thing and she tells us not to do that you don't know her circumstances or his circumstances you you, you I, resonated ramesh because when i was doing because um, as you know i do weight management clinic and i have taught in the whole 
Borough Council, and we have actually involved, and I've done the training of all the teachers, the health visitors, the nurses, and then we called the chef. And one of the health visitors had a BMI of 35. She was very big. But as you mentioned that we don't need to be judgmental. We don't know there could be genetic factors. There could be some other syndromes. There could be a family circumstances. She might have to take some drugs or medicines of which it could be side effect. The idea is that how we can optimize the quality of life and the care. And as you have beautifully illustrated that lot of single little, little things we do by changing our pattern of working the way of, but just important thing as Carol brought, the elephant in the room is funding and we commonly go on to it. However, with the innovation, with the thinking, and that is the platform we are having today to have views of the people, how we can do that effectively and more uh, getting the long-term changes without much of the input uh, in terms of the funding, but more a, a change in the pattern with you. So I'm thinking, I'm conscious of the time. Let's Our think. mindset should be how we can think and how we can do the things differently. With the same thought, how can we live differently? How can we do the things differently? This man is not very happy with me. My relationship is poor. How can I change myself or her or the environment to make it better? So I just saying I, that, that uh, oh, Romesh, a lot of people don't have that. So question is that we can't change everybody's mindset. We might actually collect the people with the same mindset as we have, i.e. we have innovation, we have you know uh, acceptability, adaptability initially. So that would be great. So um, I'm thinking is that uh, should we quickly bring uh, an, an, anything you would want to say? You are a psychiatrist. Uh, <laughs> Lil, uh, Dr. Anand is a psychiatrist, so I think uh, he has done a lot of work with education. So let him bring first in, and then we will get uh, Dr. Ajendran and then come back to you, uh, Romesh, and then Carol, and then Julia, and hopefully try and finish in time. So let's let's give a good dedication into it. And those people who are on wherever, like Facebook and other people, please put in your questions about how we can make the future generation better by eating a better food, changing the lifestyle, and uh, thinking better, reducing the mental health burden and the obesity. And these are two very important aspects. So please put uh, your comments, questions in Facebook or wherever, and we will pick it up at some point in time. We have got another session planned on the next Sunday, which is 22nd. And hopefully we will take some of these and then build on it. So thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Anand, next. Okay, thank you, Raju. Uh, I won't take more than a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a psychiatrist who works in uh, Bradford uh, in Yorkshire, you know, which is one of the most uh, uh, deprived parts of, of the country, and there are huge issues with obesity. Um, I started a group called Curry Watchers. I, I, I got inspired by Weight Watchers, I, I guess. So, uh, and we've been really successful over the last seven years in, in having more than 600 people in our groups. And uh, we just wanted to reiterate the power of group um, and uh, role modeling. So when we started, we just had a few, few people. Then uh, we motivated people to encourage and take part in the local park runs. We organized our own groups. Uh, walking challenge, you know, steps challenge, mind, mindful eating, and things like that. So, as a result, we have seen, you know, significant uh, improvement. So, you know, we were talking about the mindset, you know, which is difficult to change. Um, but uh, we have seen that, you know, gradually, uh, gradually, I don't know if people know about the cycle of change, you know, we use that in, uh, in, in alcohol addiction, you know, people are in various stages of uh, the life cycle, they, uh, from pre contemplation to, you know, they think about it, and then they do it, they fail, and then the cycle starts. So a similar thing, you know, I have applied in, 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 in healthy eating and things like that. So people, you know, people join, you know, people join the group, they leave, and then it's too much. But ultimately, many people have benefited uh, by this. So basically, I do believe in a holistic way. It's not it's just not exercise. And um, it's, it's also, you know, looking at your diet and relaxation, sleep, and overall. And we have tried to provide sessions, especially over the last few years, 
during the pandemic, you know, Zoom has been a boon, I think, you know, in, in connecting with people. So we have done so many online sessions and we have been successful. Just to summarize, you know, uh, I do see the power of groups and we, we, we need to have role models, you know, someone doing things and, and, and by creating awareness, it is possible, you know, which I have evidenced in the last few years. Thank you, Rajiv. That's extremely good. Thank you so much. Julia, I know you have to go. Do you want to uh, ask a quick question before you go? Yeah, very quickly, just sort of, um, thank you very much. I, I do have to because I've got my children here. Um, right. So uh, just in response to Ramesh's comment there about, you know, what he said about teacher and I, I couldn't agree more. I have to say, I hope I didn't come across the wrong way. It is obviously not judging people by their outside, but I think it is very important to help raise awareness because we also have to be realistic. And there are lots of people who say, oh, I cannot lose weight when you really watch what they're eating, when you really watch what sort of exercise size they do there's a lot more that could be done to actually get to a better level those who are because of hormonal treatments because of other treatments who are you know in a position where they really struggle or you know medication where they really struggle with the weight is probably it's a very very small percentage of the population that is carrying too many pounds on their hips okay and i'm not saying we need to raise a, a population of twiggies um but i think we all need to be more aware and that awareness starts in those people who are the leaders which are the parents the teachers the nurses the doctors interesting out to smile because my my dad was a gp he was a chain smoker he drank too much he was obese and you know his health was taken he was he died far too early but there was no surprise there really um and it is yes and still he taught his patients not to do as he did but it is just very easy as a patient to find an excuse to still do it because the leader is you know it is showing you the way and i think this is where the awareness needs to come in and where unfortunately where we also i think as a forum need to support people in teacher and in nursing positions how many nurses do you know and doctors in hospitals who are you know severely overweight but if you've ever done shift work you understand why sometimes sweets are the only thing that you can get your hands on or want to put your hands on or crisps for others. You know, for me, it would be the chocolate and the jelly bears and, and for other people, it would be the crisps. But if you've ever done shift work, you know why. And it is very difficult for the body and for the metabolism of the body to come to peace and to come into to keep in, in a um, on, on, on a, a baseline, basically, um, and to keep this weight off. So whilst we're talking about those people helping our children, I think we have also responsibility here as a forum to help those people in those positions. And I'm really thinking of nurses here at the hospitals because they need better health in order to stay sharp so they can help us and the kids because we can't do without them. So, thank you, really so sorry. Much. thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much for, for your attention for this. Thank you very much for, you know, this, this forum and for the honor um, of, of allowing me to share here, um, Rajiv. I'm, uh, you know, very privileged um, feel here. And uh, I will, I'm looking forward to actually watching the entire um, recording of this. It was just a bit unfortunate today with the timing and I have to go. Perfect, yeah, please look after awesome. this. Kids are important. But important is we are forming subgroups. So those people are interested, we will have the you know input from them, you know, regularly in order to promote it forward. So please look forward and put your names forward. So I'm thinking, let's get uh, to hear Dr. Prabhu Rajendran. What do you think of it? And then we will move on to Carol and uh, then uh, see what else we need to do before we wind up. Sure. Thanks a lot, Dr. Gupta. Uh, I'll start off with a global namaste to everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. As a general pediatrician with a special interest in pediatric gastroenterology, I wanted to quote two examples of the clinics I used to do. One is a constipation clinic, other one is an obesity clinic. Again, when I say the constipation clinic, I, normally in a week, I used to do three clinics and one of them was constipation clinic. And the amount of time we spent as parents to talk about constipation as a problem, no one would agree on a diagnosis. Similarly, when I said about the obesity clinic, Clinic, we were trying to just look, look for the genetic cause of obesity. And then even now, unfortunately, it's still considered as a stigma to talk about obesity. 
when a patient comes into the hospital, we check the height and weight. But the moment like we convert it into the BMI and tell them that there is an issue with overweight, we are kind of like seen uh, with, I mean, like we get all the dirty looks. So it took a lot of time for us to establish. And in my capacity as the RCPCH ambassador, we have set a East of England obesity action group. And it has taken for quite a long time for us to set up these two clinics in the East of England. Now we have proposed two clinics, which is going to be happening in Norfolk and Norwich another one in Adam Brooks Hospital and this is to look at children who have got complications secondary to obesity and that is how much it is prevalent I think like we need to act now so I mean I think like I'm going to park that aside and I also want to bring up the discussion regarding the second part of the question is about how we are going to be funding one of the things which we did in the local hospitals was working with the volunteering groups we started doing career guidance for school children I think like that was supported very well by the schools and it was very well received as well. Sometimes like we had parents as well joining in, wanted to hear about NHS and how their children can come in to join NHS and what are the career options available. I think similarly, if we work along those same lines, we can also work with the schools to bring about the idea about obesity for them to have an understanding, to take away the stigma. And then as we all general pediatricians want to do it every time, we want to work together as a team as a pediatrician, as the parent and the child in the focus and other people like working along with the children in the regular care, be the schools or from the universities. I think if we apply a similar platform to take this obesity as a forum to the school and work along with the Royal College and with the esteemed guidance of uh, Dr. Gupta, Professor Gupta, I think we can definitely make this possible. So that is all I wanted to contribute. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's, you know, you can see the wealth of information, the wealth of expertise, and the solution-focused approach to to tackle the big problems. And we know it's difficult, but uh, let's make uh, our best efforts. And uh, we are going to have a constant discussion. And we know that we are going to hit more and more challenges. But the idea is that more challenges come, more solutions come, and the solutions lie within us and the resources are there, they're untapped, as just now uh, mentioned by uh, Prabhu Rajendra, and that, you know, just making a little shift in thinking, giving them something and getting something back. It's something which is very, very useful. It can happen, as uh, as uh, Romesh said earlier, uh, Prabhu said now, and has sent by Julia and uh, many, many other people. So I'm pretty sure, Carol, you have done it all a lot yourself, and it's really important because you do it, you get satisfaction, they get benefit. Why don't we do it? So I think um, I may actually bring Carol back to you and then uh, we will hear from other people if there are any questions. So Carol, please. Uh, thank you, Rajiv. Um, <clears throat> yes, I've got lots of questions and some stuff just to put out there. Right away. <laughs> right. So. The first thing I'd like to say is, can the NHS please stop blaming and shaming their patients? I am sick and tired of going... Carol, 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 Carol please let's not be negative. The idea is today... Right, is so can, can, I, can I just say that yeah. with the, all the goodwill in the world, please do not weigh your patients... Just speak to them about their history, because this is very important. I'm nearly 68 now, I'll be 68 in a couple of months. I have a dieting history that goes back 50 years, right? I have always cooked my food from fresh. I've, I'm a home economist. I brought my children up well. I love good food. As far as I'm concerned, you know, if you go to McDo's for something, well, do you know what? No chance. Not me. I have never done that in my life. Right. So I would love to see an approach from the NHS, which is person centered, which focuses on that person's mental health as well as their physical health, because there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. I'm perfectly physically healthy. Every time I go and have something done, they want to weigh me, right? And and do you know what? It's not helpful. Um, obesity is very complex. 
It has a very complex foundation. I'm trained in eating disorders. And, you know, there's a massive rise in eating disorders. A mass obesity is an eating disorder. Now, my local eating disorders clinic in my county is only, back to the funding, is only funded to deal with anorexics. And there are loads more eating disorders out there, including obesity. And a friend of mine who is, yes, I'll say the word, huge, right? And she's getting no support because there's no funding. Fantastic. Uh, Carol, somebody's asking a question about which schools and where we are going to take. So let me bring Romesh in and then we might actually get you back in once uh, you've got time slot. Romesh, about the schools. Sorry, what, what, is, what is the question, Rajiv? The question is um, how many schools we can take and who we should approach to to with this project to happen uh the eat smart thing smart one well i think uh, um, they can write to us uh, they can write to me they can write to rajiv they, they, there is a website of nfhw.org.uk uh, there is an address they can write and ring anytime leave a message i will come back same rajiv and uh, then we will see that when we can book you and talk to you when it's possible to visit you and see if we can work together. It is working together. I think that is a major thing. And we want a commitment from you and your school team. Um, Leel, your career watcher, you do this group motivation for the adults. Do you think you can do something similar for children? Uh, in fact, we, we try to uh, include children. In fact, you know, uh, last weekend, uh, there were about 400, of, f sorry, 400 people. Uh, they all took part in some sort of walking, five kilometers, 10 kilometers, or some even did the <coughs> Leeds half marathon. But we always encourage children to do that. And in fact, we have done children's park run as well, you know, in, in Bradford and Leeds. Yeah, definitely, I, I, I will be interested to, uh, to you know, to, to collaborate and then uh, do that. Uh, we also have Professor Ish Kumar, and he is doing the work with which he is going to highlight uh, and share a little bit later. Ish, is there any something you think you know? This is all like important part, and you know, do you think listening to so many people, you know, what do you think is 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 there any barrier, or we can start, or how do you think about it? Uh, yeah, this has been wonderful listening to uh, all such ideas. Maybe, uh, Dr. Rajiv, were you addressing to me? I, I hope so. Yeah, sorry, uh, Rajiv, you're, you're muted. But yes, uh, Ishan, I know you're going to be speaking at, at four o'clock officially. Yeah, but so I think just, just, better I wait. Yeah, but just as part of the um, panel, just I think one of the things is, how do we implement something? And I think that's what we, we're, we're sort of slightly grappling with and whether can you do something at a national scale or a local scale? It's got to start maybe, somewhere, I guess. And, and what, what would have been the barriers you found? Yeah, maybe I can uh, uh, contribute with uh, one suggestion. What we are uh, modeling at Mauritius is uh, like uh, what was rightly put by by the earlier ladies, training of the teachers, what was like reconfirmed by Dr. Rajiv Gupta also. So we are plan planning to train the teachers, which surely would be the, the way we can uh, reach out faster with the minimum expenditure. And uh, this being a small country, we'll, and we have got 500 physical uh, teachers for the Mauritian kids. So we'll be calling them in batches. We train them in a very small capsule model and they duplicate it to the children. That will be one approach. Yes, that's really, really good. So, yeah, there was some sharing about the obesity um, uh, conference that we are having. In fact, that's a public engagement and educational seminar on 21st, uh, which I think uh, they were sharing on the thing. And I would encourage all of us, uh, as many as we can, to attend that, uh, which is fantastic in terms of there are speakers all across the world, right from America to, uh, to India, UK, and many other places. And they're sharing the wealth of knowledge on how you do. And so there is a lot of focus onto the weight management and particularly of children. So I think that would be great. 
um, um, Milan, I'm thinking is that uh, there is an important uh, part uh, which is about the contribution from the public. So I'm conscious of the time. So uh, if there are any questions which I'm uh, currently on the, uh, on, on this panel, uh, which is separate on Zoom. So if there are any questions from um, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Live, or Periscope, uh, can uh, somebody be from the team, um, I know Nishit sure. or anybody else can just bring it to our notice. Uh, and I think uh, Kushalva is here as well. I think he wanted to say something, so I can just uh, bring him in. And then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll carry on the discussion. And please do indicate, I think we'll, uh, plan uh, if we can uh, by uh, by three forty five. Uh, yes, we've we've got probably around another seven or eight minutes uh, to finish off to to our next thing. I'll keep a lookout if there are any, any other questions. Um, but actually, most have been coming through Zoom, and then we can sum up. So I know we've got Kushal, and then I think around three forty five we can start with our next speaker. But we are <laughs> carrying on again next week because there's so much. There's just I think a starting point. Uh, Romesh, do you want to say something first? Yeah, I just wanted to have a commitment from the our team and our uh, members of the forum that who will be able to help these children, these teachers, and their parents on the topic which we have, we have discussed, the mental health, the obesity, the um, uh, and things like that, and on 2nd of July in the school in Altringham. Who will be able to come there? So yeah, I said open invitation. This is going to be amazing. I can I can promise you. Anybody I've attended so many of them. I've been part of that. You've done it like you know on physique and online as well. But the the those things that are going to happen on second is going to be really brilliant. So I think I would encourage all. And uh, Romesh is asking, please do um, contact. Uh, and send uh, a message or raise hand here, if not, uh, and then we take it from there. I'm thinking is while waiting, and let me get uh, Kushal by uh, to share his uh, his views. You are on mute, Kushal. Bhai. Kushal, if you can unmute. Kushal, by you are on mute. So I think uh, Kushal Bhai is- Okay, is, I think he's unmuted now. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, I think it's just wonderful discussions we had today. And then the best part of it is that we are National Forum for Health being like Professor Gupta said, we are organizing this health miller at a Trichum College, uh, sorry, Girls uh, Secondary School on 2nd of July. And this will be a good opportunity for our holistics, you know, like, we are from the Holistic Living Group Preston. We are organizing for children a workshop for breathing, uh, breathing exercise, breathing techniques. And uh, any of our people from our group can contribute will be most welcome. Cool. I think that's brilliant. So I think we should really uh, try and see, uh, bring a momentum. And um, as uh, Milan mentioned that we have got another one next week. So we will try and encapsulate as much as we can. And the idea is that this is a beginning. This is a beginning of new era. We traditionally have hated each other's uh, discipline. So in theory, if you go to Ayurvedic practitioner, he will say the traditional allopathic medicine is not good. Allopathic says, oh, you want to homeopath? Oh, that's bad. So we need to develop and love each other's system because no one system is perfect. And that's actually the first and important part for all of us to remember. And then we develop tolerance. And the second part is also to learn because when we are using in our own practice, uh, you would find a uh, lot of heart sink patients, you do everything and nothing is working. So it's like, you know, how we use the other uh, non-conventional uh, medicines to, to either use or to direct to them. And the third one is again, still the funding. Funding is the secondary part. First is our duties to the to the patient or we call it client in many other ways. So I think that's the important part. The second important part is our this niche project, which is changing the future of the country through the children, through the education. And this is 
is lovely. And I think when we had long discussion, I mentioned Milk Mar, he is just amazing. He's going to change the life of the people. So please bring, I've seen a lot of energy today. I've seen a lot of contribution today. I've seen that people are very passionate about it. So let's have a group of people who are passionate to move it forward in a positive way to make it happen because I'm not a talking person. Ramesh and I always talk, we talk for hours. We are not a talk shop. We do the work. We want to see the difference. And that's why Ramesh put the question, please put your name forward. Who can help and contribute? And it's more importantly, you will go and you will see how it is working. It makes amazing entertainment for people. There is a free food. There is free education. There is few health checks. Everything is happening. No funding. So this is extremely useful. So please do visit and, and contribute. Um, uh, uh, anybody else? Uh, Fiona, you have your hand up. Yeah, I think we'll have to tie. I know Fiona's got her hand up and I think we can sort of tie up. Just yeah, a Fiona. very quick question because I know that you've got quite a lot of people here from different places. We're not all in the UK. So I think what would be really interesting is to also understand what else is going on around the world because every country has a different thinking and a different method and a different way of dealing with these issues. We're not you know, the UK is probably different to, to working in Singapore, elsewhere, Mauritius. So it's a different mentality as to how we perceive these issues. So I think what's also important here is to understand what else everyone else is doing in different parts of the world and how we can collaborate with those and get their ideas. So that was just my thought. Might not be something for today, Rajiv, but maybe for another time. Perfect. So you're very good question. So that's why you will hear we've got we've got we've got uh, a, a variety of speakers here you will hear in a few minutes is kumar uh, atul siva you know they're he's from singapore atul siva um ish kumar is in mauritius and they are the people they are doing the things differently because health system is different people's thinking is different so we're going to hear so we're going to start as a focus here but there are variations of it happening in other countries and we'll hear it and we'll kind of match it together and bring it together so very good question um, I will give a couple of minutes, uh, uh, Milan, for you to kind of encapsulate. I think overall, very good session, very good points from, from Fiona, how to do things practical, good points from Carol about funding to think about it. Lots of people put their, their thinking about it and finding the ways to do it innovatively and in a way that is actually uh, simple, easy, and uh, effective. Ramesh uh, has mentioned about his experience of doing it and uh, opportunity for people to get involved. Uh, Julia has been passionate, mentioned about the water bottle, about the mention in the school. And I know for sure Catherine Ball uh, is, is uh, uh, somebody who I actually talked at length yesterday and she's very keen. Uh, so it's going to happen in the schools. Uh, Whiting is here as well. She wanted to ask some questions, so probably give her some time and then we'll uh, hand over back to you, Milan. Whiting, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Dr. Rajiv. Namaste, global namaste, Dr. Milan, Dr. Ramesh, and uh, greetings from uh, Ecuador. And I would like to actually um, invite everyone, especially Fiona, who mentioned about uh, convergences from around the world, that in Bath, in the UK, Fiona, that there will be a convergence of medical professionals and um, health professionals on May 19 to 22nd. It's called The Better Way, and I can put the link there. And we've been converging uh, for many, many months already, almost two years, actually. And it's part of the, the uh, World Council for Health. So I would really love to invite all of you to, to attend either online or in person in Bath. So that's what I would like to say, since we are talking about learning about uh, what's happening in around the world. And uh, Arush Shiva is able to talk about Singapore and myself. And Singapore, there's a group that's called Healing the Divide, a very beautiful name to bring in harmony again. And uh, so I think we have a lot of information for you, Fiona, and for everybody. So we are here to share. And I'd like Dr. Rajiv saying that we're just not here for entertainment, but we are really here to do something good and solid and creating a new uh, healthcare system. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. 
hats off to you and thank you very much again to all the participants to all those uh, the speakers all those who have contributed directly or indirectly as well as the team and i'm conscious of the time so i would want to hand over back to milan and then we'll continue the whole day is designed for how we can have the integrated healthcare system how we can help each other how we can help ultimately the 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 wellness of the people the health and the whole status of people which is extremely important so thank you very much again back to milan thank you very much for being patient with us fantastic thanks so much and namaste to everyone waiting uh, uh, happy good morning i think it must be morning in ecuador and uh, in a moment uh, arut siva you'll be be with us and joining as well uh, there's so much to take on board here and just a few reflections just for a few minutes just to bring things together rajiv we've had so many really interesting and energetic professionals together uh, fiona you raised such a valid point of different healthcare systems and thinkings even in different countries and even within the UK, so compared to inner city London versus suburban London versus outside versus Bradford, Birmingham, each area, I think, has its own subculture and ways to introduce a programme. Where I work in northwest London will be quite different to even an inner city London. And it's really interesting. And I think we'd have to any programme would have to work with its initial localities. Um, there was a, a question, I think, um, about the health mela. So, um, Rameshji, if you could, uh, even on the chat, just or, or somewhere share some uh, description of when the health mela will be, because uh, I think people are interested and we can put it up on Healing Our Earth as well. Uh, Fiona also raised a point about non-negotiables, which I think is really important of um, what are the key things that we'd want to create for either a school class or, or something to, to do a, as a group. I think what we haven't yet agreed, even as a group of professionals, are what does cause obesity? What are the right sort of foods? What are the right mental health techniques? Because I think we're all coming from different disciplines and professions. I think that might take a day, a day or two of conferences and talking and deciding where we come from. We may have very differences of opinion. I'm going to come up with one topic of BMI, because um, even on our WhatsApp group, there are people who said, what the hell is this BMI? It's so outdated. Those of you know, it's the weight divided by the height squared. And it's a very controversial topic. Some people believe, swear by it. Other people think it's a complete, you know, it's a very historical old thing. So just the topic of that, because uh, Brabo, I know you mentioned that. And even as a, as a GP would bring that up. Uh, Carol mentioned, looked, you know, can the NHS not weigh people? And, uh, and I agree with you completely. When people walk into a room, I, as GPs, I'm not interested in anything except people's stories. Uh, a general practitioner is interested in the story behind a person. And that develops over years. There's a soundbite that says, someone will not tell you actually deep things about themselves until I've known you for three years. I've got people I've known for three or five years and they will tell me very intimate things that happened in their lives, which I didn't know till that time and explains so much about them, whether it be of childhood trauma or abuse or whatever, but it takes that much amount of trust. But as you say, can the NHS, the NHS is not at all one global or uniform thing. Even within my practice, I have 14 doctors at my practice, each, each of the 14 doctors will actually work in a different way, which is good and bad, but actually you're right if we could create some uniformity, which I think Fiona was hinting at, that even as this group, what do we understand by the term obesity of a good mental health? Um, this, well, we'll come back to the cycle of change as well. There was so much here. Um, Dr. Anand talked about steps and a walking groups, et cetera. Coming on to funding, I'll, I'll just share one thing, is that a, a key new professional that's come up in the GP surgery, someone called a social prescriber. You may have come across social prescribers. These are uh, professionals who have now, every general practice or every uh, group called a primary care network will have a social prescriber attached to them. This is a person who has knowledge of local health promotion groups, whether it be about debt, about healthy eating, about exercise, about park runs, et cetera. And there's funding attached to uh, these, these sort of things. There's a lot going on. And the funding bodies are called clinical commission groups, which won't be there for much longer. If those of you know NHS politics, that's all being scrapped as well. But actually, there is money around as well, but it's tapping into the right people. For example, I within the CCG lead, we have a child health lead who constantly works every week with different people within child health. And the topics are of obesity, of respiratory illnesses, of constipation, which uh, Dr. Uh, Prabhu mentioned, which is a topic even as a GP we mentioned a lot. Uh, Julia mentioned water. Uh, she mentioned lots of things as well about, um, uh, you know, uh, what we can do, simple measures to work on that. But anyway, I think we should carry on with, with our time now. 
but there are lots of things and finding people taking responsibility for their health. So I think there are a lot of points here and I think we can go back on the YouTube clip and, and have a look at some of the points we've made. But I feel this is just a starting point to now really get into, I think, actually exploring our, our themes. With that, we are already uh, five minutes over, but we'll carry on. We have now got uh, Arut Siva with us. So those of you who are just joining, a warm welcome again to Healing Our Earth. We started at two o'clock UK time and we have a whole theme ahead. We're still here till 8 p.m. UK time. And uh, do go on Healing Our Earth to see our topics. We now have uh, Arut with us. Namaste, warm welcome. Uh, I know you're in Singapore, so it's probably quite late in the evening. And we've got Dr. Wei Ching Lee from Ecuador, which is quite early in the morning, probably. Uh, so we've probably got, uh, and in UK where it's the afternoon, that's the beauty, I think, of healing our earth, we're, we're around. Absolutely. So Aruth, I think you're gonna to speak to us really about sort of common sense cardiovascular health. And yes. I know that Dr. Uh, Wei Ching Lee introduced you or brought you on, on board. So maybe you could introduce yourself or even Dr. Lee could introduce you. And you've got, uh, um, you know, 10, 15 with us to share some points uh, uh, on yes. that theme. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Millen and Dr. Rajiv. Can you all hear me? Very well. Oh, wonderful, great. Uh, thanks, Waiching, uh, for introducing too. And I can see that you are getting younger and younger. Uh, you need to share the secret maybe in another uh, talk. <laughs> in my pleasure. <laughs> Uh, he healthy eating, yeah. <laughs> yes, healthy eating, and, and I think it's more than that. Thinking. Sorry, suddenly my the screen I shared disappeared. Let me try again. Um, okay. Oh. Excellent. So we can see, uh, currently we can only see a blank screen. So hopefully... Uh, enough? I just shared it. Yeah, no, you mean to try again. At the moment we can only see, a, we can see that you've started screen sharing, but it's a blank oh. screen. Okay, let me try again. Yeah. No problem. Meanwhile, I'd say that um, Aru Siva and I met in Bali in a holistic uh, conference. So, and since then we found we're from Singapore. So I thought he would, you know, start weaving in the Singapore link. Brilliant. Can you see the screen now? Not yet, unfortunately. Sorry, I don't know if you can uh, maybe. I think you keep talking and eventually it will appear. I think it's just taking longer time because of the internet. So please do. Okay. Yeah, you could you could try one so I know you're probably Some dependent on your slides, maybe. Yeah. It just says Zoom quit unexpectedly send. Don't worry, you can you can try again. You can come off the screen share and try again. And one of the things is that uh, you know why change everything happened for a reason, God or mighty, whatever you call it, super excellent. We're in. We're in. Okay, we are God has agreed and decreed. Excellent. So Aruto, hopefully you're still there. I can we can see your slide now. I think we've lost you. I think we've lost you. If you can hear me, we can see meditherapy, common sense, cardiovascular health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, his center is really impressive. He has a range of uh, technologies that are interesting, including diagnosis by sound, which is now um, a cutting edge, innovative. Uh, technology for diagnosis mm. so, Excellent. so i think while we're waiting for arut to rejoin i mean waiting if so how did you meet him and what's his background if, if you, uh, i don't know how well you know him well i mean it's it's um naturopath and uh, holistic medicine and so as i was saying I, we met in uh, bali during a holistic conference and i found that he stood out because of his uh, knowledge and also um is his presence of uh, really bringing together integrative medicine, you know, just like what we're doing here, is that based on the traditional wisdom of, of healing and coming together with technologies. And so I thought, and I visited him in Singapore and a very impressive center, I must say, then he, he seemed to be like a little bit like a mad scientist and collecting all the different kinds of technologies. So as I was saying that I've tested out the, the diagnostic tool that is, um, is, is based on your voice. So perhaps if we had time to talk about that, he's, it seems he's going to be speaking on cardiovascular health. So um, he has treated many, many people in Singapore also. And uh, he is, uh, let's see, someone's saying, so he, he is um, quite known 
and we are part of a group that has uh, offered alternative natural therapies during the, the COVID times. So we have a lot to say and a lot to share. And also later on as well, uh, Tess Laurie will be on at 6 p.m. BSD. Please do stay and don't miss her. I'm sure some of you in the UK might know her. Uh, Fiona or, or Dr. Rajiv. And so um, she'll be on as well. And we have a very interesting uh, spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is that I am promoting an angelic summit and we want to talk about angelic healing. And as you, you spoke about, Milan, that many people come to you for your, the emotional solace and they tell you the deepest, darkest secrets about themselves. And, um, and it's so wonderful that you as a healer can receive all this. And there are many healing practitioners who are not necessarily medical, but who are actually helping a lot of people. And Waiting, uh, Arut is there and he's trying his screen. Maybe he's got intermittent uh, uh, internet. Let's give yes. it a chance if he can hear. Arut, do you read us? Over. Oh, I, I can read you loud and clear, but just in a while, I just see that uh, intermittent disconnection. But as long yeah, as you connect back, I'm happy. Carry, carry on with your screen presentation. It seems to be okay. Please shift the yeah, screen okay. so we can see. It's Please, do, yeah. Please do start. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Wai uh, Cheng and Dr. Milan and Raji. You're all uh, well trained, but I have a different. Uh, my my uniqueness is I always look things in a different thing. Uh, what I have set up is my own creation. Though I have learned naturopathy in many countries, US, UK, Russia, but I created a very unique system of healing uh, at the cell level. And certain a lot of things actually. First thing I do, I use the five senses: touch, me, uh, touch, feel, smell, look, and everything. So I'm going to present cardiovascular health in a very unique manner. Oh, and please do uh, ask me questions if you have any. And okay, can you see the second slide now? You need to shift the slide for us to see. Thank you. Yes, it's working now. Carry on over. Yeah. Uh, so really, uh, I always say uh, thinking is the most important thing. Uh, and honestly, I feel I'm so delighted in UK. There are many doctors who can think. Uh, sadly, in Singapore, uh, not many people can think. It's true. Uh, as per George Bernard said, 2% of the people think, 3% of the people think they think, and the 95% of the people would rather die than to think. It's really a very valid quote. Uh, here I have a report of an oncology report of a client who just came yesterday. Her husband works as a radiologist in a big hospital in Singapore and she herself was a gynae. She was diagnosed with stomach cancer when she was 32, and, uh, and now it is 36, and they removed her stomach, spleen, a lot of parts in her body has gone missing. And now she was put on palliative chemotherapy based on this. In fact, one of my common friend asked her to go and meet me three years ago. Uh, she didn't believe. So even when she came, uh, she was full of skepticism. Uh, I spoke to her for nearly three hours. Oh, and thankfully, my doctor friend from Malaysia, who's trained under Dr. Thomas Rob in uh, Swiss, she came in uh, out of the blue from Malaysia. Then I introduced her. Then she said, you, she asked her, what are you, what's your specialty? She said, I'm a palliative care doctor and she's 73 now. And she asked one question, what made you to switch from uh, palliative Western to something what is what I'm doing and what she's doing as well? She said, I started to think that was the first thing. I think uh, healing has to come in 360 degrees and not just one perspective. And after that, she stopped. And tomorrow morning, she's coming for the treatment. So I feel the first thing is we need to be open and we need to learn to think. Because now thinking is very difficult. And I have to say, doctors don't make you healthy. I mean, if doctors can cure, I always say there should be 100% successful in every case. But it doesn't. Why? It depends on the body. We can facilitate as a doctor, but a lot of things is on the client side. The same goes, teachers don't make you learn, trainers don't make us fit, coaches don't make you rich. At some point we need to realize it's our personal responsibility. So I always tell my clients, I'm not a healer. The word doctor comes from an Italian word, dose, means to teach. I'm teaching you to think, I'm teaching you to take responsibility for your life. I'm teaching you what all things went wrong in your life and it's your journey. I will facilitate, I will be with you, but you need to be prepared to walk and I will walk with you. 
So today is Visak Day. Uh, it's um, Buddha's Enlightenment Day. Uh, so my I came up with the five steps, and the, all those five steps I learned from Buddha. Uh, from this picture, uh, could you please tell me what you all see? Anyone, please. It's about Buddha's life history. So we can see well. We can see the Buddha sitting under the tree. The big, big uh, picture on the left. Yes, that's right. Um, um, we can see uh, Prince. Well, when it was Prince Gautama, anyway, looking at a sick person. Right. A person lo looking down. He, he's seeing someone um, dying, being carried off. I think. Right. Uh, seeing an old person. That's right. And then seeing a saint or a holy person. Exactly. Now, Dr. Millen, can you tell me what runs in your mind? Um, well, well, knowing the story, I know that uh, the, the, the Prince, you know, Gautama Siddhartha was not allowed to see these before. As I think as his father had said, look, try and, av try and avoid my son to see any of these four inevitabilities of life. Um, Brilliant. And he, he was never allowed to see any of these things until he goes out into the community and suddenly sees these four things and never realized that people could get sick, old or, or die and who this holy person was. Brilliant. That's where he's, he did the first thing, as we said earlier, think he started to think. Yeah. And that's how I derived five principles, which I apply to everything in my life. First is be alert, be awake, be aware, question anything and everything, apply common sense. Be alert. As you said, Prince Siddhartha became Gautama the Buddha because he was alert. When he came out for the first time out of the palace, he saw all these things. Then when he saw an old man, sick man, dead man and a monk, he was awake. So he asked one question to his charioteer. Does all this apply to me? His simple answer was, from a pauper to prince, this is the journey of life. The, that moment, he became awakened. Then he started to question everything about life, uh, who he was, what's the reality. He applied common sense, and that's how Prince Siddhartha became Gautama the Buddha. And this actually five things, I apply everything in my life. And if you start doing this, I'm sure you will really get a lot of insights in everything we are doing in day-to-day -day life. Okay, so I'm sure there are a lot of doctors. I don't have to go through too much in this. So why cardiovascular system to me is important is our whole life depends on it. If we don't, if the heart stops functioning, max is few minutes and we are dead. So this is the lifeline of everything. All our hormones enter our circulatory system. The air we breathe enters our circulatory system. The food we digest enters our circulatory system. And this is an important thing which carries our life to every single cell. And sadly, this is the number one killer in the world as well because I always say why we get disease is three things. We live like rats, eat like pigs, and roam like dogs. What does that mean is, live like rats. My dad is 82. Uh, he's out in the farm morning to evening in a bad chest. He receives plenty of vitamin D. But look at people in Singapore. Singapore is the most pampered country in the world. Our government is like a nanny. They like to wipe our butt for every single thing. Everywhere is sheltered. They made our life so comfortable. People hardly step out under the sun. And without vitamin D, our hormone, a lot of process doesn't work in our body. And most people in many developed cities are all vitamin D deficient. For all my cancer clients, that's vitamin and vitamin D3 and melatonin is what I load them on. Then uh, eat like pigs. You know, pig is in one animal. You throw a fruit, it will eat. You throw anything, it will eat, including shit. People nowadays, they just don't know what is a food and what is a food-like substance. And I'm so shocked. I think we may be the first generation in the history of humanity on this planet where we have a cocktail of alphabets after our name, but yet common sense doesn't seem to function. And we do not know what's the difference between food and food-like substance. So that's what it means by live like a rat first. It means we are all always inside, never under the sun, to eat like a pig, eat anything what is put in front of us. 
uh, in actually in English we can use the word eat, but in Tamil we have a distinction. Sapadu tingaradu. Sapadu means when you're hungry, you eat the food what is meant for you. Tingaradu means you eat like a pig. Anything put in front of you, you just gulp it inside. And that's what is happening. People are just don't know the difference between the food which will sustain life and the food which is killer. They just gulp it inside. Number three, roam like dogs. People have no time for themselves. They are always busy with things because people are not living for their needs. They are living for their needs. Needs, people are not living for their needs, yet they are living for their wants. See, we need very little. Our needs are very little. But if I look at so many people's life, they committed overly beyond what they can do. And they're busy chasing money just to pay off for what they committed to instead of having a life. In my practice, I only see two people a day because with each client, I spend two to three hours and they are so happy because most of them are seniors. They feel so lonely when they come to me. They really enjoy talking and I enjoy it too. Whereas my staff will handle all the therapies. So I am really focusing on happiness and life and truly every single day is a bliss for me. So that's what it means by live like rats, eat like pigs and roam like dogs. So people should focus on their health because normally when you leave the house, do we lock our house? Yes or no, please? When we leave our car, do we lock our car? Why? We value the assets what we what we want, but we do not value our body. I always ask people, all my, all my gen, uh, male customers, hey, is your pan zipped up? They always say, yeah, it's up. I always say, to fix your problem, learn to zip it here. This is open like a trash can. And so no wonder you're dumping trash inside your body. And that's the cause of your disease. And it's pretty common everywhere in the world. And why it is important, I mean, I said, you know, our heart beats 100,000 times a day. We have about, pumps about five liters of blood per minute. And 16 seconds, the blood can go around our body. So look how magnificent our cardiovascular system is. And sadly, I said, in Singapore, actually after vaccination, I have seen a trend. Almost every single day, I get a call, something related to heart. Edema or cardiomyopathy or heart attacks or strokes. It has happened to so many of the people here. I'm not sure about UK, but here among my own circle, I got plenty of proof for it. Ah, see, we all talk about the macro circulation, but what I am always interested in is the micro circulation. And that's the example I'm going to share with you soon. I mean, as we all know, our hair is 10 times larger than the micro circulation. And if you see the micro capillary length is just one mm. <laughs> Can we even see one mm on a ruler? And the diameter is five to 10 micrometer. And through that, only one blood cell travels. So imagine how clean our microcirculation should be, how nourished our blood cells should be. If these two are functioning, trust me, there will not be so-called diseases, 150 of them okay, will just disappear from our planet. So here, of course, when it comes to heart, there are two problems. One is the electrical problem, which is cardiac arrest. Uh, that I can't handle naturally because it's an electrical problem. I tell you, go and put a pacemaker. I'm very much interested in the plumbing problem, uh, which is the blocks. And it's all caused by poor diet and lifestyle. So look, we lose 18.6 million of our fellow brothers and sisters on this planet every single year. And the risk factors are high blood pressure, high cholesterol, as we discussed earlier, overweight and obesity. Then it's air pollution. Uh, I mean, I have installed uh, monster air filters in my company and I use uh, inside my clinic and I use specialty tools to count the particles. Uh, you won't believe, uh, I can even conduct a one hour chest lecture only on how air pollution is killing us. Because why? The air we breathe still gets into our, our blood. And if it is not clean, of course, it's sure going to kill us because we eat three meals a day. We drink maybe six times a day, but we breathe 21,600 times a day as per yogic tradition. The rest is physical inactivity. 
everyone has us a glue to the chairs or luxury chairs and we are not moving enough unhealthy diet i always tell my clients you know fast foods comes in a box our coffin is also in a box in this box is a dead food in this box is a dead body you eat more of this dead food you will enter the dead enter the coffin box very soon then diabetes so most of the things here is all categorized under metabolic disorder i won't even call diseases it's a disorder something from order has become disorder so we are not supposed to fight the disease rather correct the problem which is causing this so poor microcirculation alone actually is the cause of all the things i highlighted high cholesterol obesity poor diet cold hands and feet you know very interesting when my clients comes i touch their hands and feet uh, when when i do my arterial health assessment i really touch the hands and feet most of the people who are sick their body is like ice cold and they tell me they have been like that for a long time they said you are already entering the path of the grave why every living being the body should be warm but and touch them is cold i give them an example what happens when you put your finger in a cold i stop it freezes the same way when there is a coldness there will be vasoconstriction things can't flow freely in your body so that's why i recommend them to do a lot of exercises sauna and i got few machines which increases the basal temperature first peripheral arterial disease and i know every cardiologist here looks at mainly looking at do angioplasty to look at blocks and i tell many of my clients go and ask your cardiologist do a coronary calcium score that's equally important then the other thing is we fail to understand heart is a pump our blood vessels are an extension of heart and we are only as healthy as our microcirculation is which is an extension of heart and that's where my main focus is so all these issues which is very very common in singapore can you believe in singapore which is a small city of population of just 3.3 million native citizens there is 100000 people with vascular dementia our government is so much interested now to create awareness of it but what's the point in creating the awareness when they don't even know where the problem starts they still advertising all of our food companies to advertise junk foods on tv and yet on one side they promote they are creating awareness of a disease where it is fed by their own media and dementia uh, i had to fire a few staff they are relatively young but i tried to keep them for 3 6 months repeat a training yet nothing can get into the head as we discussed earlier most people now have poor attention Uh, and even Arut, then, so, so, sorry to interject i'm just saying we're, we're running short of time this is brilliant i'm really enjoying this talk i think we need you back for a good hour's talk i'm just a uh, uh, conscious of time we've only probably got a, just a minute or two because of our next speakers and the schedule that's keep going ahead uh, sure. i'm so sorry for that i don't know if you've got any sort of key yes. points to to address but yes. um i'm really enjoying this and i would love to have you back really would yeah thank you Uh, this is a simple assessment test said oh, look at the lady she's uh, only about 66 but look at her bp is 212 by 86 and look at all her stiffness and she, her arterial health is like she's like 90 89 to 91 though physically she's 66 so people are rapidly aging here because of the stress and the all these people don't even sleep at all they even have they sleep only for 3 to 4 hours a night and they're so occupied with their tv and the media they're all busy with it and this is the result okay uh, i'm not sure how many of you know that there is a simple simple device called ripc remote ischemic preconditioning device which can actually help to strengthen our heart people know ecp ecp i mean i have a ecp machine now i just decommission it why a simple portable ripc device can do the job of ecp to create collateral as of today i got 14 people who don't even have to go for bypass tenting a ballooning through a simple diet lifestyle change and about few supplements and together with ripc device so let's look at some case studies uh so this is a 81 year old grandma who flew in from hong kong uh for my treatment 
And on the 7th December, before we started my treatment, on the 7th December, she had 40 as a troponin. So it means troponin is supposed to belong to the heart. If it is in the blood, it's a heart attack for non-medical people. And look below, 30th Jan, I brought it down by through my own protocol for 22. To an extent, they have to put it in a report as significantly different from last result. And they said there is no need to do bypass for her or even stenting for her. This is my another client. I'm not sure how many of you observe the nails of your client. So I always ask my clients, remove your socks and I want to see the nail. So if you look on the top left, there is a brown, uh, reddish brown spot. Actually, it was from the root of it. This photo I took four months into my protocol. I'm not sure whether you can see the color difference on the top half and the bottom half. As nails grow from bottom, after my protocol in four months, after changing his blood completely, the new nails are so shiny. And he said his little uh, finger, uh, the, the nails used to be black as long as he can remember. In four months, it is white. And you can see that slowly the reddish part is gone. And in about seven months, it's completely gone. He got a brand new body. And this is what I do. And the other thing, uh, I'm not sure how many of you check the legs of your clients, especially if they're diabetic. This client of mine is 54. He had a heart attack in 2006 and had two stent. His leg has become like a mannequin, completely bald, no hair at all. In 30 days, I made grow back at the bottom. Can you see why? I just opened up the microcirculation and nourished his blood. Hair started to grow back. And if you notice from now, all I request is all medical doctors, please take a look at your client. All these are my client's legs. It's totally bald, no hair. But look at the right example. We, I just started on this gentleman. Uh, his dad was a professor who opened the pharmaceutical division in Singapore 50, 60 years ago. Most of the brilliant doctors in Singapore are his dad's students. Look at his message. My hair on hand and legs growing. So, I, of course, for him, it will take about another eight, nine months because I just started to work. In just 30 days, he can see the difference too. So, I always say this is my simple uh, slide which summarizes everything. Arut, we, yeah, we're going to have to, we've got our next speaker coming up. Uh, um, okay. I'm trying to think of anything else uh, if you could conclude with because it's such an interesting topic. I think we're just, just getting into it. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, you just ask any questions and I can continue later. Yeah, no, definitely. Look, I any think questions, you've... please. Yeah, look, I think you've elaborated so much initially on cardiovascular health. And I think first taking responsibility of that common sense. I love that the rat, the rat pig dog analogy is going to stay with me, I think, forever. It's fantastic. As well as like, rats, uh, like pigs roam like dogs. Dogs. Yeah, brilliant. And the, the concept of thinking, the concept of, you know, uh, food versus food like substances, uh, the strength of cardiovascular health. Uh, yes. You're definitely I think we need you for an hour. <laughs> um no, no, I have a program. My program is 300 hours. So yeah, yeah, it's no, well, long. yeah. But it's do, no, long. do come. I think particularly for the, you know, the global public are watching. I think someone asked if this is being recorded. It is. This is all being recorded on YouTube. So do come back. Um, Aruth, it was great to be introduced to you by, by Dr. Lee. And uh, she spotted your talent and definitely, you know. Uh, he, 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 <laughs> I told you, he he's a personality. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, and, and it's there. So, um, uh, there'll be questions Thank i'm you. sure coming for you but we'll when we have our next health set we've got one next week but even it, in the future and we can give you a, a proper i think today we only gave you like a 10 12 minute slot but we'll have one a proper one in the future sure thank you i'll send thank you, you all my program then you can choose and ask me to speak on various yes def definitely and it'd be really uh, definitely taking that way and, and also the microcirculation really important points extremely uh, important which nobody looks into it oh, i have another question i had a client uh, who was dying uh, from cancer they tried three different chemo, absolutely no result. I only had three weeks to work on her. I opened up the microcirculation. The chemo, which didn't respond, started to respond. And now she's in Mexico now. Fantastic. No, I, there's so much to learn. Excellent. All right, so going from Singapore to Mauritius, <laughs> as I said, Healing Earth is very much a global community. So we've got Professor Dr. Ish Sharma, who's with us. Ish, I know you joined right at the beginning, I think. So we had the whole panel discussion on, on obesity with the integrated health. And I think particularly your, your theme now. So we, we have to cut slightly short, but we, we're thinking if you could share maybe about 15 minutes with us uh, with your actual topic. And then we'll also have around five minutes to discuss. I think particularly on this theme of, uh, of, sort of the school garden. 
So maybe just tell us maybe a, a minute about yourself as well. I know you're from Mauritius. Um, it's probably quite late now there as well. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Milan and uh, Dr. Rajiv, Dr. Romesh, all the organizers and uh, a global namaste from Mauritius. I'm uh, Professor Ish Sharma, seeing many of you second or third time. So I'm an Ayurveda professor from India and uh, serving as the academic chair in Ayurveda medicine at the University of Mauritius, deputed by the government of India to promote Ayurveda in Mauritius. Very interesting to listen to all of you. Ayurveda has got very like uh, unique approaches when it comes to obesity because obesity is the not only talk of the day, this is a talk of the millennium. There is, no, there is not a bigger killer than obesity, which generates everything bad. It could be it could lead to psychiatric disorders, it could lead to diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and whatnot, arthritis, uh, acid peptic disorders, everything. So uh, obesity is not my topic for the day, but I would surely be like contributing one like treatment principle from Ayurveda, how to treat obesity. Ayurveda says the principle is guru aptarpana, that is you have to eat more. To treat your obesity, you have to eat more, but that food should be depleting, that should not be contributing calories to your body. It should be taking more of your calories and getting digested, but end of it, it doesn't give you anything. Now, what are those negative foods? All the salads and fruits which are not too sweet with their peel are the, are the best negative food, are the best guru aptarpana. If we eat them more and more, and if we do not consume like uh, refined uh, carbs, rather we, we consume complex carbohydrates would be the best thing to lose weight. Now I come to my topic. Mauritius is uh, very like uh, unfortunately placed when it comes to non-communicable diseases. More than 50% of the population is overweight beyond an uh, BMI, BMI of 25. More than 40% of population is uh, diabetic and pre-diabetic. Heart diseases, cancer, respiratory disorders, addictions and ulcers, stress, everything. All non-communicable diseases are somehow like in, uh, in a huge prevalence when it comes to like a global comparison. Uh, like a common belief could be migratory populations are always at a high risk of uh, non-communicable diseases because uh, before 1500, no one was living, not a single person was living on this island. 1500 onwards, the Dutch... And the, the Portuguese, the English, the French, they started coming and uh, they brought up the, this uh, uh, populations over here. So 100% population being migratory population, this could be like, a, like one hidden mechanism why we are having so much of non-communicable diseases. Now, how can Ayurveda contribute? When I, when I joined Mauritius six months back and I noticed this phenomenon, I reached out to the, to the health ministry, then to the education ministry, that once you are a diabetic or once you have NCD, then it is very difficult to revert many times. Very, you have to, like, it's, it's a, like a, a perpetual struggle. Ayurveda very clearly says, Prameho uh, Anushangi Nam, that is, diabetes doesn't come to go away. It would never go back. So once you actually you have to work very hard to have non-communicable diseases, you have to work very hard with wrong food and uh, wrong uh, lifestyle for like 20, 30, 40 years, then you end up having one NCD. Once it is there, it doesn't go back. So I suggested the ministries that we have to catch them young. We have to catch the students young before they become like a cardiovascular patients or diabetic patients or X, Y, Z and cancer and all that when they are like 50, 60, 70. Why not to catch them young when they are like uh, 12, 13, 14 years of age? Now, the idea like uh, clicked very well to the, to the officials. I have been having multiple meetings. Now, what I am proposing to them is we have to suggest right dietary habits to them. As uh, put up by Dr. Uh, Siva very correctly, that we are eating like Ayurveda calls it uh, Anatma Van. Pashuvat Bhunjanti means you are eating unmindfully like an animal. This is Ayurveda Shloka. Anatmavant, like, that is you are not uh, mindful of what you are eating. And you are eating like an animal. Then you would be like leading to all the diseases. 
all the diseases come from parigraha that is uh, a greed to accumulate it could be money it could be food it could be whatever when we are greedy this is how we start falling ill we, this is something we have to learn from animals who never like refrigerate their food they hunt only when they are hungry they do not store their food we are doing the other way around so what how can ayurveda contribute in lowering this burden of non communicable diseases in mauritius my topic for today with you i i, I believe i could be concluding in like uh, much earlier than my time slot i have zeroed in upon uh, 12 plants six are the big plants which uh, every student would be planting in their uh, schools as as a like as their connection as their memory as a belongingness like they know okay this is the plant i like i this is a tree i planted 40 years back now they connect to that tree so one tree is in one category and the other would be uh, i have zeroed in upon uh, six plants which they would be growing at their home and consuming all their life and by by educating one student we are educating all the family because the family culture would be changing so we'll be uh, training them we'll be teaching uh, we'll be training the trainers we'll be training the teachers upon uh, this uh, protocol what are those plants how do how to grow them how to use them how do they look what are the medical researches that support those plants what, what is the phytochemistry what are the Oh, oh like uh, uh, is it evidence based or not we'll be providing evidence and uh, right eating habits along with this uh, like uh, school garden project where there would be like uh, one or one or two like plants trees big trees uh, by each student and some small trees at their wall garden or their kitchen garden or their backyard garden depending upon whatever land they have got it can be a vertical garden if they live in a flat it can be uh, like uh, it can be in uh, pots also so i believe this is a very ambitious project and uh, uh, i am having multi- uh, like repeated meetings with the authorities very soon we'll be uh, bringing this in for the classes 4th 5th and 6th i'll be concluding with my talk with a little suggestion and then then i leave, uh, leave this forum open for uh, discussion we all coming from like such a varied kind of information knowledge and wisdom and sometimes this is this could be like a very fresh very fresh like too fresh to to believe rather why not why not this uh, such a wonderful platform going on it's like 130th seminar which is a which is a big deal why not to have a session up about mutual cross training dr uh, siva could be telling us like for me he can say okay give me 10 hours uh, miss y can tell okay give me 20 hours you know like uh, anyone from aroma therapy can say i want 30 hours so those who are interested should be we have to i have to deliver some basic ayurveda to you all so that if someone speaks to you about ayurveda then you know you can be my ambassador i can be your ambassador the second suggestion would be we have to write to mutual ministries and governments uh, through this platform that this, that is how we are sharing the ideas and this will this would be like uh, giving like uh, a right footing at, at the government level we'll be making some noise over there with the authorities that there are letters pouring in emails coming from across the globe from uh, uh, from uh, everywhere and anywhere so they might have to pay more attention to build us up like a see like they can see us growing up as a community so i'll take your leave and maybe if there are some questions i'll be more than happy to revert fantastic thanks so much with such eloquence and clarity within that short time you shared some really good ideas thank you so much uh, dr sharma that was really helpful on this theme of ayurveda you quoted some beautiful uh, sanskrit shlokas to actually correspond with the previous speaker as well that was really helpful so uh, in a moment i'm just going to bring in rajiv uh, gupta who's got a question and i'll have a question if you can be ready as well which uh, particular plant just even if you could list them a bit later on uh, which plants you 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 were you were looking at even those six you know to 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 plant and then maybe six to keep regular It'll be interesting and i know that mauritius is blessed with i think of a lot better climate than maybe some of our northern hemisphere countries uh, but even then uh, rajiv i know you wanted to maybe ask uh, dr sharma something 
Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, probably it's more recommend you ask about the cross training through our integrated health uh, platform. That is the aim because one of the problem is we criticize each other. So, you know, the medical conventional will criticize Ayurveda or homeopathy and each other probably aromatherapy would say something else. So one of the idea to develop tolerance is to understand. So that is the plan that we are going to have a, a platform where each uh, discipline will pitch and then other people have opportunity to ask questions and do that. Uh, it's probably not going to be a very long 10 hours training, but probably will give like uh, half an hour, an hour initially, so that at least people start tolerating each other rather than criticizing each other. So that's, I think, quite a good point. And I think we already have a plan for that. Second was also about the, um, the negative foods, because I think it'd be good to have that list and that we can include in our um, Eat Smart and, and Think Smart program, because this is simple, simple, no cost to it. And we can include and tell them what are these negative foods, which they can include um, proportionately. So we're not going to overemphasize. You're going to give them the choice that these are the things to keep in mind. And that is going to stay with them for next 50, 60, 70, 80 years, all through their life which they can control how to use the positive and negative foods to control their weight. So thank you very much again. Back to Milan. Thank you, Roger. That's a really good point. So if we could have, you know, a forum, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe 10, 20 hours as well, but certainly initially maybe half an hour to an hour for each profession uh, from Ayurveda, et cetera, from, from various to, to share their views. Cause you are, are right. I think um, otherwise criticisms or debates happen. I think in this group where I think everyone's friends and everyone wants to, to happen, but I, I know in the bigger world, um, it, it can become, as you say, even tolerating each other, uh, which sounds like a really bad thing because we all want the best for our patients, but uh, um, you know, it, it, it can become very, very uh, uh, um, difficult at times. So um, Ish, um, do you want to tell us about these particular trees or herbs that you, you, you mentioned? Do you, you need to unmute. If you could just unmute. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, maybe in one minute I can tell what, what are the smaller plants which they bring back home. The most important would be Vinca rosea. Vinca rosea, we call it Sada Bahar, which is a very good antioxidant. All like a very important anti-cancer medicines like Vin Christian, Vin Blastin, they come from Vinca rosea. What Ayurveda calls Sada Bahar. Sada Bahar is the best for diabetes, best antioxidant best uh, cancer preventive. Now, this is a very, very important message. Once you are a cancer patient, all your family at, is at a very high risk because it runs into your genes. And we are sometimes like, like we are unaware enough, if not stupid, that, okay, no, no, this won't happen to me. It happened to my brother or my sister, but not to me. I am superhuman, you know, I, nothing would happen to me. Now, this is very, very important. All the first degree relatives of the cancer patients should be taking some periwinkle or what we call vinca rosea, uh, flowers and leaves every day. Please do not believe that you won't ever have it. You are at a very high risk and the prevention is the only cure. Once you have cancer, then there is no cure, unfortunately. So the first was vinca rosea. The second small one, which is the most potent, is tulsi. Osimum sanctum, which we which needs no introduction. The third one, which is very powerful, very small, is ginger. Then curcuma is uh, very powerful, and all are research based. And another small one I'm having, I have got this list is punarnava. Punarnava is burhavia diffusa. I'll write the names in the chat box because you all might not be uh, like recalling all the names in in one go. Burhavia diffusa, punarnava is the best is the best single herb for for liver heart and kidney this is the best nephroprotective best like cardioprotective best liver protective and i believe when when it comes to metabolic syndrome which is the syndrome of the century which is the biggest disease of all like metabolic syndrome or syndrome x which has got classical four uh, like uh, parameters i believe fatty liver has to be the fifth parameter because liver is the most important gland for metabolism and there cannot be a metabolic disorder where liver is not involved. 
so fatty liver which is very much in line with uh, all uh, like metabolic disorders uh, it should be the fifth component so we are addressing uh, fat, uh, like fatty liver through uh, punarnava and the big plants i am targeting is arjun for heart then amlaki which is antioxidant neem we have got and another big plant we have got is haritaki is harad i will be writing all these names in the chat box all these plants take nine like like uh, maybe 10 years to grow and they yield 200 kilograms of fruit every year which is like more uh, like uh, more than enough for all your community so any questions please i'll be happy to revert fantastic we we need you to come come back and show us some photos of these uh, plants and these children and this uh, this effect because we know that we you know children getting involved at that young age will then train them you know for for, for their, their generation ahead and these projects do happen, I think, even speaking from UK, my, my own children at their school have their school garden, but I think it's not, you know, universal. They do make some trips to botanical gardens, but to work on a more grander scale would be really, really interesting. Um, and our, our salutations to you that you're, you're doing this. I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's, it's good. Um, I'm just picking up in the chat as well that Dr. Uh, Lee, you've mentioned actually, so Tess, Laurie is going to be joining us, I think, at 6 p.m. time, but double checking what time she's coming on. And uh, uh, I know uh, uh, Honey is with us now, he'll be hosting and carrying on. So with that, um, I think, uh, Dr. Sharma, we're going to sort of tie up from, from this part of it. Um, been really fascinating to have the Ayurvedic uh, component to it, and especially the herbs and the plant side of it, uh, of which we know Ayurveda is, is much wider than that. So we know it's the science of life and uh, there's a lot more to it, but certainly the, the, the healthy eating, the lifestyle, and the routines of life, depending on seasons, is very important. And as you say, eating the right food at the right time, or even as Dr. Orut said before, you know, people are just sometimes others just eating at the right time when you're hungry. I think he mentioned something in Tamil uh, at that time. So taking forward, uh, Rajiv, just reflecting then, sometimes time flies, doesn't it, when you're, <laughs> when you're having fun? And uh, suddenly it's been two and a half hours that we've been together. We started with our Eat Smart and Think Smart, and we had a great panel discussion, which I think just opened up with different speakers to think about uh, different ways of thinking, taking responsibility for one's health, different aspects of bringing into school, how do we fund it, involving parents, teachers. So lots of little different ideas coming forward there um, in that panel discussion, Rajiv, and you brought together some really interesting people I think Ramesh was very clear, this is not a talking shop. It's all very good to come on Zoom, to come on YouTube and say a few words, and anyone can do that. But actually, as we know, what can we turn this into action, um, which I think will be important and to take it next step. But I think we need some clarity uh, on that as well. Uh, we then had uh, Arud speaking on, on cardiovascular health. Uh, and then just now we had Dr. Ish talking about the school garden and plants as well. And the theme to wanting to learn from different professions so we can at least understand that discipline a little bit better. And I say that also because I think, Rajiv, you and I need to give a talk. Actually, what does a GP do? I think even people don't know actually that we're just as passionate. I, you know, we see, I see 50, 60 patients a day. I know I wrote the other round, I was great. You see two or three patients a day. That's brilliant. I wish I could be you. You say, that's great. Yeah. I, 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 I see 60. I, I wish I could see a bit less, but uh, uh, it, it gets a bit tiring after that. Um, but because I think that people who think that actually conventional doctors are somehow wanting to give out drugs, I will not want to give out any antibiotics, any drugs to anyone if we can avoid it. And actually, the, the GP, the primary care physician, um, our particular passion is continuity of care. When you actually see the same practitioner over a period of time, you can in, in, in improve someone's health as well. But anyway, we, we must move on. Uh, Rajiv, thank you so much for being part of this uh, session as well. Uh, Rajiv, just a last, you know, one or two sentences or just the last 10 seconds of any parting words you want to share, Rajiv, before we bring in uh, Honey. Yeah, fantastic. I think, uh, Milan, first of all, again, you know, thank you very much for coordinating and hosting uh, the whole session, which seems to have come uh, together very, very well. Uh, one of the main things we have learned is that people have passion and enthusiasm to contribute to this project of eat smart, think smart. And being smart is everybody's choice. And I think that's a catchy term and we are going to do it. And second important thing is that there is wealth of information amongst the people. 
So as you mentioned that we need to share our wisdom from the conventional medicine, but also take other people. And we have heard from a variety of people, you know, this is there, like from, from, from Vishyama, from Ruth. Uh, it's, it's just there watching, you know, people are doing the job and they're doing it for years and let's just bring it together and that will be the success. So thank you so much. And probably won't be staying uh, before <laughs> our beautiful, beautiful next words is coming in. So yeah, uh, I believe uh, Hani Kalari is going to take over, but I hand over back to you. And thank you very much again, Melan. Thank you, Rajiv. Have a good week. And uh, we'll be back next week, I think, for another Integrated Health Forum. And we can see from there. So uh, with that, you know, we, we can just see, I think you can see that one of the speakers was talking about the cycle of change, where I think it was Dr. Anand was saying, you know, where are people, are they ready to start? Are they going to contemplate, prepare? So this is something that we often see, and it's a skilled physician who can tell where they are on this, uh, on this cycle as well. So uh, Hani, we, we had, we've had a great time. We had really, <laughs> a really interesting time. Uh, we had uh, Arut with us, uh, we just had Prof Ish, and honey, I'm going to introduce you in a yes, moment as well. Absolutely. Um, we, we, I was, it was a wonder, wonderful discussion, I have to say. I know you're going to introduce me soon, but I just wanted to say just amazing, amazing, so much knowledge all packed in one show. I can't believe it. And each one bringing the whole, all their knowledge and the wisdom that they share so, um, you know, generously with the world. I have to congratulate every single uh, contributor today, uh, including, of course, uh, Dr. Rajiv Ji as well, and everyone who has been here today. I definitely will learn about the remember about the pigs and the dogs and the you know yeah. <laughs> and the rats and you know it's the way the the doctors and the medical professionals are sharing their knowledge is is so user friendly you know even youngsters could understand you know the importance of this so Milan you as well what great questions I have to say I was admiring you all the way here <laughs> such funny. wonderful questions that we you know you yeah. really went into deep questions with the limited time that we have so really enjoyed. Thing, I think you need time to explore further but with that I think we're going to introduce uh introduce you because you're going to carry on on the journey so I said it's a bit like a an airline journey where one one steward hands over to another host to carry on on the next uh, part of the journey and someone who we also need to mention who's brought this together is actually our director of healing our earth is called Nil Kumar and Nil Kumar has really been bringing all these speakers together every week to produce this healing our earth so honey a little bit about you and I think you and I have some uh, similar sort of spiritual interests I think many spiritual organizations and gurus we've both been sort of similarly on our on our journey, but honey, um, you're well known actually as a as a creative dance expert for you know 35 years. I think even when I was younger, people would say, "Well, I'm going to Honey's Dance Academy." So people known you for many years. But what I got to know you actually through Healing Our Earth is actually your a whole other side of you, which is actually your in, your own inner journey and that as of our host. So I've really enjoyed meeting you virtually here. So those who don't know, Honey, you will be your host now for the next few hours. Um, is actually a spiritual seeker and a meditator as well since a teenager, regularly practicing Samadhan meditation, which is part of Tian Yoga, taught by uh, Yogi Shiv Krupanand Swami, but also has been on a journey uh, through various yoga sciences, for example, Raj Yoga from the Brahma Kumaris, Art of Living with Shri Shri Ravi Shankar, uh, Vipassana, which you and I both share, uh, attending sort of Vipassana meditation, uh, Isha Kriya with, with Sadhguru, uh, Kundalini Yoga as well, and then particularly what I'm part of is sort of Advaita Vedanta with the Chinmaya Mission, as well as sort of mindfulness and transcendental, and transcendental meditation. So really important that you've brought all these techniques together and you with your uh, uh, amazing smile and laughter uh, carrying us on. So uh, with that, honey, it's been, been uh, really, I've really enjoyed this session, I must admit. They've been really high quality speakers uh, and we, mu we must move on because I know we're running a bit late. But uh, I'm going to sign yes. off. I sort of go back to. I'm going back to work now in a bit. I've actually. Well, my first work is with my kids. We've got some homework to finish and some. Wow, <laughs> you have things to do list, right? There's a things to do list, and look at you. <laughs> time out to also give us your lovely hosting you know time as well so that's wonderful contribution there um i, I think it's the uh, you feel really i feel great anyway to pass on knowledge and uh, you know educate inform and just to inspire people around the world to create positive changes you know which is really great Milan, thank you so much for this really wonderful really really great introduction i should actually do a bit of an introduction for you because you actually haven't had an introduction have you no, <laughs> so before, so, yeah. let, 
opinion because I'm sure it's more interesting to hear others. <laughs> yeah, but let me just tell a little bit about you to the audiences because they should know actually. You yourself, Dr. Milan Shah, right, are a doctor and you've been working as a GP partner for so many years um, in a large practice in London serving a variety of patients. I know you have patients ranging from little children right up to adults and the elderly as well. Um, and from the spiritual background, you just mentioned as well, you do a lot of seva, which is a lot of community work, a lot of service, you know, for others. And um, that's, that's, that shows, you know, that's why you are so beautiful. What a wonderful soul you are, Milan. I always enjoy listening to you. You also have been a volunteer, you know, and working within the Chinmaya Mission, uh, which is a really great organization. They have some amazing teachings as well, spiritual values that they teach from little kids to uh, parents and all sorts of things. So I really thank you so much for joining us today and hosting for this uh, couple of hours. And uh, I'm sure the doctors you spoke to, <laughs> they really thoroughly enjoyed with whatever you shared with them as well. Thank you. So, yeah. Milan, have a really great day with your kids. And I would like to say a global namaste to you from Healing Our Earth. This is our third integrated health um, episode, isn't it? That's right. That, and the next one will be next week again. So it's been, been really good. Very popular. So I just wanted to let our family members know around the world on Healing Our Earth audiences around the world. You know, we've had lots and lots of inquiries, lots of messages. Can you please do some more of these programs? And that's why we're bringing some more of these programs to you. And of course, we're going to be setting up, aren't we, a wonderful um, integrated uh, health forum, aren't we, uh, Milinji? Yeah, look, that's the idea. And I think it's sort of people, you know, who, who can commit to actually forming a core group to discuss that? I think we'll hand back to sort of Rajiv and Ramesh on that and also Neil Kumar as well, but, uh, and, and uh, Dr. Lee as well. And I think uh, Sarah as well from, from USA. So I think a few key people are coming together. I think you and I are many more the hosts <laughs> to keep it going. Get a chance to listen to everyone, which is fantastic. I'm going to go and buy those five herbs, you know, for that plot, the garden one that I will wonder for uh, Professor um, Professor Ish Sharma talked about, the school garden project. Even that's so fantastic. So many good tips. I'm going to go back with a full, healthy, you know, list of things to do. Okay. So, Dr. Minan okay. Shah, okay. thank you so okay. much. A global namaste to you. And we are going to be now moving on to my next guest today, which is a Sarah Baines, a very talented, a very very talented lady who's going to be talking to us a little bit about mental awareness and of course pranic healing you will know that she's got an amazing uh, aura about her because she is she she already shines <laughs> she shines like a star every time she comes on uh, on our healing our earth hello a global namaste to you dear sarah global namaste to you too and everyone that's watching thank you <laughs> for having me Oh, well, so we're proud to have you here, dear. And now, would you like to say Sarah or Sarah? It's Sarah. Sarah. Okay, no problem, Sarah G. Thank you so much. So today, we're going to be talking about a very interesting topic, which is all about mental awareness, a very hot topic at this moment in time. Even the governments are really, really concerned because there's so many issues going on. And I believe, you know, with the way life is uh, moving uh, forwards if, in the future, I think there's going to be more uh, emphasis in this area. So what you're going to be sharing today with us is very, very important. So uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about your background, uh, Saraji. Um, so I actually come from a corporate background, um, but I... Like most corporate high profile jobs, I started suffering from a lot of stress um, and burnout and uh, started to seek um, other ways other than having kind of um, sleeping tablets and things like that. Looked at alternative ways to help myself, came across Reiki. So I became a Reiki healer um, and then I was introduced to pranic healing and uh, pranic healing is just, I would say, one step. Uh, on from Reiki. So in Reiki, we, we become a vehicle to channel the energy, the divine source of energy. Uh, and in pranic healing, what we do is before we impart any of that energy, we, we cleanse and we assess what all the energy centers, the chakras are doing. Um, and we cleanse all the unwanted uh, negative energy, for want of a better word. Um, and, and then we put the good energy in. So to rebalance the chakras by re-energizing them. So that the, once the chakras are balanced, the body puts itself into balance and it puts that into its own healing uh, mechanism. 
because right. it's designed That's, to heal itself. Yeah, very interesting there, Saraji, because um, you know, some some people may not believe in the um the invisible forces, you know, of the energy healing, uh, but yeah. it's so powerful. We have so many case studies, thousands and thousands of case studies of people around the world who have been healed through this method. Uh, you know, yeah. what, how do we explain that uh, how this healing takes place? Because through pranic healing, there is no, we can't see the energies. We can, at least yeah. with the tablets, we take a tablet, we can see something. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it's a, not as a, a tangible um, thing, uh, if, if you like. But if you, I mean, we probably don't have time now, but if you guys did a simple experiment where you just rubbed your hand quickly, yes. and then if you just um, close your eyes or keep your eyes open, but if you just draw your hands gradually apart, and then bring them back together, then draw them apart again. And just focus on what you're feeling in between the hands. Like most people will feel either a warm feeling, you might feel a pressure, like you're holding a little cloud, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's sticky, if, something sticky moving it, with it. Exactly, it? exactly. Yeah, like a, so yeah. that validates that there is energy. So energy is there, we just can't see it. Um, and it works on the same concept as gravity, you know, just because we can't see gravity, it doesn't mean that it's doing its its job all the time. Yeah, so same with electricity, isn't it, Saraji? Because, you know, if we people say that, oh, we, we can't see electricity, but everything is working through electricity. Yeah, so, so that kind of validates it for you. And, you know, when you guys have time, you know, sit down quietly and do that little validation exercise, sensitize the center of your palms. And then just bring that energy and gradually you'll notice that you can feel something. Yeah, yeah. Every, the sensation might be different for everyone, but that that validates that there a there is energy. You know, everything is made up of energy, uh, as you know, and I think you've shared that before, you know, you know, right from, you know, the trees, the grass to, you know, us. You know, even uh, thoughts, uh, even uh, thoughts have an energy, you know, right. so if you focus on a particular direction and you yeah. keep thinking about something, you actually start manifesting yeah. it exactly. because you're putting all the energy. Yeah, to, to Absolutely. Manifest. so when you when you think a thought or feel an emotion that creates a vibration, that vibration is referred to as energy or, or vibration, the more energy or, or focus you give to that thought, the bigger that that becomes the more powerful it becomes manifest it into physical form so it's kind of untangible and then the physical form is created because we keep focusing on it so that's kind of how it ties in with with things like law of attraction which I think everybody has has kind of come across at some point in their life um, but also when you think about mental health then those same thoughts, when we when we think a, a, a not positive thought, so when we have a, a, a negative thought, so maybe we're stressed, maybe we're worried, we're anxious, uh, maybe we're having problems at home or at work or with our children, or even with our health, uh, maybe we're feeling lonely. You know, loneliness, I, I found that with COVID, that's become quite a prominent um a challenge for people you know loneliness creates a lot of you know where people are just sitting with their thoughts they have no interaction um so even those thoughts can consume us in the sense that if they're negative thoughts and we're constantly focusing on those then that can have a negative effect on on our our physical body um yes. yeah that work because you know because in mental awareness we talk about and pranic healing um how would we be able to uh, let's say raise people's vibrations because uh, we always say that when you're in low vibrations you mm -hmm. feel in a low mood you yeah. feel more depressed you yeah. feel a bit lazy as soon as you go into high vibrationary uh, uh you know area you start feeling more joyful you feel yeah. more energetic you know then yeah. uh, things don't seem so uh, so um uh, challenging in your life yeah. Because yeah. as soon as you're in the same situation could become a big mountain, whereas as if you're in a positive state, you'll always see something and say, oh, we'll find a solution. Let's we'll deal with this. You know, so how how, how can we help our audience members to appreciate yeah. this and to start utilizing this wonderful uh, wisdom? There's to lots. Yeah, lots and lots of ways. I'll, I'll um 
I'll share about a special meditation, but that will be my last point. But simple things like connecting with nature. You know, we draw energy from, you know, the sun, the air, you know, that we breathe, the ground, you know, ground prana. Walking on grass, for example, barefoot, is a simple way to draw, you know, earth prana into your body to give you, you know, to increase your life force. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hugging a tree. I know that you might feel a bit stupid in the park, but, you know, tree, you know, hugging a tree gives yes. us a lot of good energy. And just yes. sitting, in, sitting in the sun, you know, solar prana, you know, they're, they're all forms of energy and it's all free. Yes, absolutely. I've also heard there's proper case uh, research now done on this, where you can see people who had like, let's say, aches and pains in their body. And if yeah. they go and walk on the grass, yeah. you find that all the aches and pains go. If you're feeling depressed or something like that, and you go and walk on the grass, like pure grass, yeah. um, it pulls away all your negative energy and balances your yeah. auric system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because the energetic, to, yeah, the energetic yeah, the energetic system has an effect on our physical body so it really definitely shifts you absolutely absolutely so you draw you're drawing prana all the time you know whether you're aware of it or not so all our all our chakras that sit within the central meridian uh you know front and back you know they have a job to basically kind of draw in energy so fresh prana and then chemical reactions take place to service the organs and then energy unwanted energy is expelled so they're constantly doing their job. So, so you know, drawing prana from the surroundings around us uh, is, is a really, really simple way that, that we can, you know, we can help ourselves. Um, How do you enhance that? Because, you know, because uh, I understand that, you know, when you've got your chakra system, um, the faster they spin, the quicker they throw out negative energy and the quicker they bring in positive energy. Yeah, if that, they oscillate if that, at a very fast speed, yeah. Yeah, so how do you increase that? Because then people can automatically, if they balance their chakras and get their chakras, you know, uh, yeah, spinning, yeah. Yeah, uh, spinning um, faster, it tends to repel all the negative energy and doesn't affect you as quickly. Yeah, as, yeah. Hmm. So, so the, best, the best way to do that, obviously, even, even things that like, I'll come on to the meditation because it's a really, really special point, but... Even exercise. So when you exercise the, the body, the body needs exercise. But when you exercise, you're basically enhancing and stimulating the chakras to expel. Yeah. So 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 they're, they're going to be expelling negative energy uh, as you, ex you know, brisk, even if it's just a brisk walk, um, you know, if you can't run, uh, those sorts of things will, are, are going to help to basically flush out and keep cleansing the chakras and make them work faster. Um, also, your diet plays a part. You know, we talked a lot about, you know, certain herbs and, and things that have, you know, a good effect on the body. And that, again, is to do with their vibration, that those, those herbs have a, a certain vibration that helps to, you know, um, alleviate certain things. Um, yes yeah, yeah. I, I think you, what you just said is a very uh, very important point actually because especially tulsi i believe one of the professors just spoke about the tulsi yeah. plant um mm -hmm. and i saw somebody do an experiment with the tulsi then you have those two balls when you go near uh, the and it just starts yeah. moving so where there's more energy the actual metal balls start moving apart by themselves yeah. or moving or resonating yeah. and yeah. i really I sh they showed it you know they just went near the tulsi plant and as soon as, as as soon as they were near the tulsi plant they started you know moving that the, yeah. the, the two metal poles so, so, yeah so yeah. that's the vibration that you can feel so when when we do a uh, pranic healing for someone one mm -hmm. of the first things that we do is we basically we scan all the chakras so so we scan and we see like what's going on in that chakra you know is it you know, is it, is, does it need to be cleansed? Is it working fine? You know, is it further in? Is it further out? So we have like a little way of gauging how, how a person's chakras and aura are doing. And then we embark on phys a physical cleanse. But another way to um, cleanse using meditation is a very special meditation, which um, I believe you can download um, or you can buy it from ukpranichealing.co.uk. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. It's Meditation on Twin Hearts uh, by Master Choa Kok Sui, uh, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. is the, he's the creator and founder 
um, of pranic healing. And um, by doing that meditation, uh, it's only a 20 minute meditation. You basically just uh, need to sit and, and, and listen to it and just follow it. In that meditation, a process that takes place is it's like having a jet wash come down through your crown center and it has a flushing effect on all the energy centers. So you imagine putting a jet wash in the top of your crown where all the divine energy is coming down. And what's going to happen is it's going to push and blast all the negative thoughts, energies, emotions, everything. So by doing that every day, it, it, it's like having a spiritual shower every day. Yeah. So you're giving yes. yourself a good cleanse. So it's it's not what I would say uh, is, a, you know, there's lots of different types of meditation. So most meditations, you know, will help you transcend or, you know, you'll feel in a relaxed state. You'll feel calm. You know, your heart rate will reduce. So it does some of those things, but it does this very special thing because the mantra Om recited by Master Choa himself, the vibration of that Om is so powerful that it has a cleansing effect on the chakras. So to all my clients, when I'm treating them for, for any condition, I will always ask them to do that meditation as a self-care um, tool, you know? So, so, yes. so, so, so every day they're, they're cleansing. So every day they're clearing out and re-energizing they're clearing out and re-energizing so you're basically changing the vibration of each of your chakras which obviously then in a physical form changes how you feel and, and look on a physical level so definitely will have a lot of impact on the mental um, you know our yeah. mental well-being and of mm. course we're at the moment with this uh, global integrated health forum that we're looking to you know develop and we are developing at this moment in time bringing all practitioners and medical uh, professionals from around the world including naturopaths and um, uh, ayurvedic doctors all sorts of different holistic approach put it that way it's a holistic approach to to um, ensuring that people's well-being is uh, looked after. Um, but, you know, one thing I do like what you just said about the spiritual shower, mm. because it's one of the most powerful things. You talked about the Sahastra Chakra, which is, of course, the crown chakra, which is like an aerial. It pulls in energy, like a, like a, a temple where you have the dome. It's the yeah. part which pulls in all the energy from the surrounding areas into the temple venue. Mm -hmm. I think we have the similar side to us where the Sahasra Chakra acts as the uh, aerial that pulls beautiful pranic energy within us, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then as you said about the shower, just for our audience to understand, if you can imagine that if our aura, if our, our energy system has thought pollution, like thoughts and feelings and yeah. mental bad thoughts, they're all stuck in that, uh, that energy yeah. So if you yeah. have that meditation, it just cleans it out. You don't even need counseling sessions no. just to do, deal with one issue because everything gets cleared, right? Yeah, yeah. The whole lot. It, it just basically systematically goes through, and and because it's is literally like a jet wash, and all mm -hmm. the chakras sit along the main meridian, then they're all basically pushed out. So, yes. yeah, so it's a great, great self help tool, uh, and it's been scientifically validated. So you know, there's been uh, things published which obviously I can share at some point um, in in the benefits of twin hearts meditation it has been published uh, the scientific study well, why it. does it say twin hearts why does it say twin hearts I know you're going to be showing us the meditation just now and we can all try it out <laughs> but but uh, you know why why twin hearts well what is the meaning behind that uh, so in twin hearts meditation what you're doing is you're activating so the heart chakra and the crown chakra Right, very powerful. So yeah. the heart chakra is actually the bridge between your lower chakras and your higher chakras. Yeah. So that needs to be activated for the yeah. higher, so, so, higher yeah. chakras so, to be so activated. So one of the first things that you do is you activate the heart and you activate the crown. Uh, then the second part of that, so so by, by activating it, all you're asked to do is think of a, a happy time, something that really made you happy. Focus on your heart and imagine your heart, you know, radiating you know, love and, and joy. So that's how you activate it. Wow, uh, so they, beautiful. So yeah, you're naturally, yeah, yeah nat naturally the same thing. putting your vibrations. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's how you're raising your own vibration. So once they're activated, part two of the meditation is actually 
um, where you're 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 blessing the earth. So you imagine. So you raise your hands at the chest level and you imagine that there's an earth in front of you. And basically you're blessing the earth and you're using a prayer. Uh, it's, it's called the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. And basically what it's doing is it turns negative into positive. So it will say things like where there's darkness, light, sadness, joy, uh, you know, bless those that are having a difficult time, you know, tell them they can make it, you know, that that kind of thing. But wow. thing, uh, you're you're a channel for that blessing, basically. Yeah. So, yeah. And when you're when you're uh, as you mentioned, when your focus is in a particular direction and you're mm -hmm. vibrating high at that moment in time, yeah. that thought has a lot of power behind it. It's yeah. like petrol. There's a lot of exactly. petrol that goes with it. Like, yeah, like a rocket. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're given that extra energy to basically bless the earth. And um, and you've probably heard this before, but, you know, it's also um, a meditation to help bless the earth, but also bless ourselves, because in giving, we also receive. Yeah. Yes. So, and we are one anyway. We're connected exactly. with everything. Everything's yeah. interconnected in the world. And, and that's why we bless the earth, you know. So we are all one, you know, we like as you say. So so you bless the earth, and then you have a period of time where you just put your hands down and you meditate on the mantra Om, which is recited by by Master Choa himself. Yeah. Uh, and that's the part where I explain the the flushing effect and re-energizing happens. Mm -hmm. And then for a few moments, you're left to just meditate and just stay in that space so you're asked to focus on a brilliant star at the top of your crown and just stay there basically yeah so, so, so you enjoy that bliss that that peace you know for that period of time then you come back into you know reality move your fingers and then you release the excess energy because although again we can't see it a huge amount of downpour of energy happens in that meditation so then to avoid our bodies getting congested we release some of that energy back to bless the earth right uh, yeah and right. then at the end we put our hands down uh into the ground and we're blessing mother earth yeah. so, so we so we we Beautiful. release Beautiful. yeah so we release the excess energy and also that helps to ground us as well um yes. and and the, and and then that's it so so and in that meditation at the end you can even bless your family you know your friends any special projects you know anything like that because you know that that energy is there and then after that you massage all the energy in so you literally like kind of massage your face your shoulders again it's just to avoid congestion in the body right um, yes. yeah similar um, to when you do the tapping you know for uh, uh, from efm yeah, i believe geez. it is yeah or something like that yeah so it's a bit like that but you're actually clearing up and or yeah so you're just like energy. literally rubbing all that energy like into your into your body Right. You know, and, and eventually, because you're changing the vibration constantly, this is going to have an impact at a cellular level uh, on your body. So eventually it will have an impact on even your blood. Right. So you can literally change your uh, organs or any uh, health issues or yeah. like you've mentioned, the blood, any any part of your body by mm. bringing in this energy, re-energizing, yeah. re-nourishing, revitalizing. Yeah. Yeah, so you're and cleansing. The, the key is yeah. to cleanse and re-energize, which yes. is what this meditation does. Beautiful. Um, so, so it's a very, very powerful meditation. I would urge anyone that hasn't tried it to, to try it. Um, how how do, we, do we try? And are we going to be trying a little bit of it, a short little version if we have I, a little time? I don't think we actually have time. But if you wanted we, to find of it if you go on to youtube yes and go on to master steve and co or, or google meditation twin hearts you will yes. find a very short version which you may be able to play and do now if you guys if you guys so wish um i think that's about eight to ten minutes but i don't know if you have time well, well we this gives us an excuse to bring you back again for another <laughs> <Yeah>. session <laughs> <laughs> for a proper 
a meditation session perhaps you know we can maybe get you in for the yoga and meditation session yeah. where we can go through a proper Actually meditation with it yeah yeah because yeah. It, it sounds so brilliant and I, I think this sounds so powerful I know being a regular meditator myself for over 20 years mm. uh, and teaching as well meditation uh, it's been the best thing that I would uh, incorporate mm. in anyone's life you know yeah. just a bit of meditation Definitely. every single day they, they, all, all meditations I think serve a different purpose so you know I would not say like you need to stick to any one particular one but this one does a certain thing so it, it, you know it, it serves a different purpose to relaxation or going into a different state or you know things like that so so I think it has its own very special place um, yes, absolutely. Each, yeah. each, each one has its own, um, uh, like they say, mantras, you know, you yeah. do Hanuman mantra, and you do Lakshmi mantra, and you do yeah. the Ganesh mantra. Yeah, yeah. Each one is asking, doing something different. Exactly. Yeah, your focus exactly. is different. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, yeah, sorry, we've got Emily here with us as well, Dr. Wai Ching Lee. Hello. Uh, Global Namaste, my dear sister. <laughs> we, we look a bit different, but we're still sisters, right? Healing our own sisters. <laughs> yeah. And so, and Sarah, thank you so much for your work and just highlighting just to gently step upon the earth and just connect with the earth. And that's so important, barefoot, you know, that's what we do in Qigong. And scientifically, yeah. we know that we are resonating with the earth at 7.83 per. Yes. Absolutely. So my question is, how have you integrated your work into the medical field, the Western allopathic, um, like I have done in Asia? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious to know how your the reception has been and yeah. how you integrated so a, a, a lot of a lot of good work came out of uh, COVID. So when COVID happened, we we went into a lot of hospitals. So uh, King's College in particular, um, and we ran uh, Twin Hearts meditations for the staff, um, and we were doing free healings for um, you know helping people with their immune systems to help them with COVID. You know with fighting COVID. Um, so we were doing, we had a whole group of us doing free, free, it's basically service. Um, and we ran these meditations, which were happening every day. So, you know, the same meditation that I mentioned to cleanse and re-energize. So to keep the staff, you know, the NHS workers strong, you know, to, to, because obviously they're faced with a lot of emotions, you know, when people are passing, people are suffering. Um, so we, to keep their vibration at a certain point so they could serve community we were working with them quite a lot. And then we were also, we had a volunteer group. So anyone that was uh, suffering from COVID, we did free healings for them. Uh, and by free healings, I mean it, to basically work on their immune system. So we would cleanse the lungs out, you know, and rebalance their, their immune system as, as best we could. So, so that gave us quite a lot of, um, I think, recognition and uh, helped us to kind of come together with the NHS. Um, and now currently my teacher and head of the institute in the UK, Les Blickcroft, he's doing a study at King's College, which, uh, which will be published shortly. Uh, it's being done on a, a hundred um, children, I believe. And it's to do with the mind gut connection um, because a lot of children are coming up with eating disorders and, and things like that at the moment. And I think a lot of that is to do with emotional stress and things like that you know they haven't been to school that you know there's all sorts of you know uh impact from from covid from people just having to be at, at home so i think once that paper gets published and, and obviously the fact we have a lot of uh, the consultants are on board um with pranic healing some of them are actually come and done the course so that they can understand how energy you know can work as a complementary therapy uh, alongside allopathic medicine you know we're not there to replace it uh, you know we can't sometimes yeah, I, I think that's a very very important point you said Saraji you know like yeah. there's um, everything is complementary here uh, yeah. it's not about this is the best uh, one that's why no. the global integrated no. health form is all about everything different, yeah yeah, yeah everything it, comes together you know what we eat you know what we meditation uh, you know, these Qigong, you know, all, all these, all these things, they build our, our whole kind of person, if you like. Yes, Energet on, on, all on all levels. So all many levels. levels, yeah. So bringing yes. all of that together, 
with allopathic, you know, when we need that extra injection of medication, if you like, you know, or, or you have to have a surgery, you know, sometimes that is what has to happen. You know, yeah. and you can't you can't avoid it. We can't well, fix everything naturally, but you know, we can we can work hand in hand together. And I think you know that's that's why that's, I the, want that's to a talk. secret. The hand in hand part is a secret. We've got yeah. a doctor uh, uh, Rajiv Gupta here as well. Hello, Rajiv G. I know that you are dying to ask the question before I move on to wonderful Kirit Mystery, who will be our next guest very shortly. Um, uh, and uh, you know, if you have any last, I mean, we've had a really fantastic discussion with Sarah Baines. And she's been so good with her wonderful uh, explanation. So step-by-step uh, -step explaining everything. Uh, have you got any questions that you would like to ask? Uh, no, I think I just want to compliment uh, and, and, and praise because this is the work uh, that has happened as the word mentioned, hand in glove. And this is the approach we are having, being a medical practitioner myself in the NHS as a consultant for mm -hmm. like uh, 20 years. This is what we have done, but I don't profess that we have a treatment or cure for everything. Yes, of course, if you have road traffic accident, you wouldn't be doing planning healing sitting there today. You would need to go to hospital. Although, yeah. can do a quick treatment to prevent uh, excess bl uh, blood loss as an as a interim. Mm, yeah. yeah, interim is, is fine, but if you tell that if you have rotor accident, you're yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you can't, yeah, you can't yeah. just do that. It, but it can again, it can still help, you know, in some respect, and it can help with post op recovery. Yeah, so exactly the idea is that mm. there is place for everything, and that's actually wonderful to see that mm. in a very appropriate way. And we are very open, and this is why we have this whole set of the integrated health means integrate everything everything good from everywhere mm -hmm. Yes, very, very good point there, dear Dr. Rajiv Gupteji, because, um, you know, when you bring up the best of everything, and, you know, there is different, each one of us human beings are unique, we're different, we work differently. It's like some children are more kinesthetic, some are more visual, some are, you know, more audio, audio. So you have to see how to teach that child in the best way and how they can learn. So in the same way, each of us are different in how we, um, uh, uh, you know, deal with our health. And, and our well-being so I can understand like I'm very very much into the holistic side but my dad would be very much into orthodox medicine he would believe that no that's very important mm -hmm. because you know all my family comes from doctors <laughs> so, so they're very much into that side so no thank you so much both of you for your contribution um Saraji uh, we, we look forward to inviting you back again in the future to maybe go through this wonderful meditation which I think will be a beautiful gift for the world because by you sharing that gift with the world, you will find that within a month to two months of people practicing it on a regular basis, there'll yeah. be huge changes taking place in people's absolutely, lives. Absolutely, absolutely. Like and, and, and huge changes, not just for us as individuals, but actually for the planet and the earth. Because remember, every time we meditate, we're blessing the earth. So we're imparting that energy. So we're we're re-energizing. We're you know we're, we're we're helping the earth as well as ourselves. Absolutely, collective consciousness, as we yeah. say. <laughs> Let's work together collectively to make this planet a better planet, Absolutely. isn't it? And yes. each one of us along the way. So thank you, dear Saraji. Thank, thank you so for your much. Time. Thank a you. Global, a global namaste. Keep up the great work, and thank you very much for all the seva you're doing, all the service work as well thank for you. the NHS and other other organisations. Well done for that. Thank you. Thank very you. proud of you from here, from all of us here at Healing Our Earth. <laughs> namaste. Thank namaste. You. So we now move on to our wonderful next guest. We have Kirit Mystery here, who I have had the pleasure of speaking in, uh, previously in one of the other episodes. He's a very, very knowledgeable, a real worker, very action-oriented, very proactive in all the work that he does. Um, and he's going to be talking to us about the integrated health and, of course, how to transform health inequalities through the community, well, through engaging the community and empowering them. So, uh, global namaste to you, dear Kiriji. Global namaste to everyone, to the healing of our team, and thank you for having me again. 
Oh, we love having you here because I know you're doing amazing work. It's like, what do we discuss with you? Because you're working on so many fantastic areas to support, you know, the health, um, the health system, let's call it, and helping people in so many different ways. What will you be discussing with us today, Kelly Jim? And before we do that, tell us a little bit about your background so that we get our audience members, especially the new audience members, understanding a little bit about who you are and where you come from. Thank you. So um, I'm, I'm a patient by first, but I'm a type 2 diabetic. Um, but my journey in the health care started many years ago. I, I was the first Asian drug and alcohol worker in Leicester. Um, so when I saw a lot of my friends going through uh, the drug, drug addiction area and limited support, lack of cultural sensitivity, I realized that I needed to get into, this, into that area and, and since started to help particular our communities. Uh, and then over the years, um, then I crossed over to work in mental health and then very strong working for the last 30 years in race equality and looking at equality through um, the, the charity sector, but also through NHS. So I've had a privilege uh -huh. of working with NHS systems and structures. And, you know, the missing voice was patients. The missing voice was people with lived experiences and our community. So hence, about five years ago, I established South Asian Health Action as a patient carer-led charity. Um, and that's what we do now in terms of raise awareness of diabetes, kidney disease, organ, blood, stem cell, mental health, and really other health challenges affecting our communities. But we do it in, in a way from having ensuring that we listen to our communities, we advocate and support, and that's the key. Wow, that's amazing. Really wonderful. Great work you're doing, you know, and, and the fact that you've been through a practical experience of all this. So you know exactly where the patients come from. You know exactly, you know, their story. <laughs> and, and, and you've worked in, within the, with the health officials and the health industry as well. So you can understand. And so you're a fantastic a go between for both parties helping to communicate powerful messages. Now, today, <clears throat> you're going to be talking about integrated health. What do you exactly mean by integrated health from your side? Well, I think it's, um, we've heard the experts today, the healthcare professionals. Um, now it's about how do we bring that to the communities? How do we bring that to patients so they understand how better to um, manage their condition, how to change their behavior, the mindset? Because we all have various challenges as patients. We have one day is not the same and we need to look at what support mechanism we need to put in place. So from the integrated health, like have you, we've had some excellent speakers today. Um, so the meditation aspect, so we run various, you know, groups around support. So we, are, we run peer led support groups for diabetes, for kidney disease and mental health. So these are the kind of people who've got lived experiences who've turned their life around uh, and who could be then supporting others. So from that aspect, that's what we want to integrate, you know, the patient journey with the working with the healthcare professionals, but doing it together to have, to find that integrated solution for addressing these inequalities that we know from our South Asian communities and other minoritized communities, these inequalities have been here from, for decades. And so what do you what do you actually consider as I mean of course we do to, we do understand about inequalities etc but what do you actually refer to when it comes to inequalities with the work you do so what is the, what is the areas that you find there's a lot of inequalities in so firstly we have to look at addressing inequalities from an institutional point of view so how do we ensure that the institutions connect better with us from the community and the patients how do we do that well, we've got to get into those structures. So I try and I mentor and coach other patients and carers to go and sit on those structures, whether it's NHS, whether it's academic in institutions, to ensure that they don't just talk about us, but we're actually there shaping and shaping policy, shaping the way services are developed. And most importantly, you know, doing it together, collaboratively doing it together. So that's the, the first element. And then the second element is, you know, we've got to, we've got to, our destiny, we have to create our destiny. So we've already now created, you know, community ambassadors, you know, whether they're from diabetes, from mental health, and um, to be able to better connect with our communities. Because a lot of our communities don't know where to go, don't know how to turn to 
uh, they see the medical option, but there's before the medical option, there's other options, and we just need to have people there in the community that they can turn to. And that's a very important point, actually, because sometimes our patients or community members may not understand there is a choice. There is there are options. It's not about just doing this. You can go and talk to somebody, and like a company or an organization like yourself would be able to maybe point them to different areas so they get uh, well informed before they can make decisions uh, as well. So that's a very good point, a uh, very nice point, yes. And it's, and it's good that now the institutions are wanting to work with us because we're kind of unique in the sense that we're you know, a, a South Asian patient voice and a lived experience voice. That's our uniqueness. And a lot of the organizations and the institutions that I tend to work with, they say, Kirit, you know, we can't find South Asian patients. We can't find carers to take part in the, in the clinical studies or in actually have their voices. I said, look, they are there. They just haven't been engaged or they don't know about these opportunities. So working with us, we can help you find people through that. And, you know, it's privileged. Through the last five years, I've been privileged to come across, you know, our, you know we've brought in expertise from India and from other, you know, from Africa, other, we've met some healthcare professionals, you know, even in the UK, you know. And this week is Mental Health Awareness Week, so we've just finished a session with you know an organisation in India called Yaya Life, and we did we did a, it's, the theme is loneliness. So we actually did a did a delivered a session by Dr. Falguni Ben in mm -hmm. Gujarati. Right. So, in, so you can connect with the, the community members because sometimes elderly members cannot speak in the language or understand the English language. So you have to explain things to them in their own languages. So that is a very good point as well. Yes. And now with, with the new system of the NHS changing, you know, we've got the integrated care systems and it's good that NHS have now got health inequalities program. And this is what we need to be informing and shaping and that's what we're trying to do. We want to ensure that our local systems are actually engaging with patients and carers and communities to help shape the, the, the historical you know, challenges of all these conditions that we know that we've heard about today, whether it's cancer, whether it's diabetes, mental illness, have been around. But it's how do we ensure we as in the community, we as patients and carers, shape those services to suit our cultural needs That's right the yeah the cultural needs is an important point as well because there's different ways some people may have a religious outlook towards certain things you know so they can't have certain tablets for example they need vegan tablets you know there are things like that issues that people may not think about but it's very a good point yes and um, uh, i would love to ask uh, rajiv gupta to also perhaps you know share any of the questions or any insights from his side but before i say that there was one thing i did, just wanted to mention as well you talked about we all need to shape our own destiny and I think that's a very important point that we should highlight and stress the fact that we are all responsible and I believe that um, uh, another doctor as well spoke about that a little earlier that we have to take responsibility for our health and we have to value our health we value our assets like cars and houses and we do everything like oh is it okay is the value of this property growing <laughs> you know increasing but you know we should be thinking the same about our bodies you know i think that's a very important point for all of us to understand including our healing our earth audience members that we have to value our own health to look after it as well so yes uh, dr rajiv gupta ji what would you like to ask is there any suggestions any feedback from you uh, yeah, so I think there are two important points more to comment. Uh, and the first one is that you have actually highlighted and brought an important part which we haven't actually paid attention to. And that was because we were more focusing on integrating the health system and the health practitioners. But the patient point of view is very important. And I know we have met uh, uh, on behalf of BAPIO, I chair the Yorkshire Division of uh, BAPIO, which is British Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, and uh, Kirit Bai and the South uh, Asian Health Action has worked during the COVID time to provide the support and translation to the patients because many of them didn't speak English. And when doctors were saying something, it didn't really make sense, or GPs particularly. So I think that was very, very uh, positive thing, and I appreciate for the work uh, that was done. And I think we would be very keen to invite you. Uh, we are going to have a small subgroup on this 
education part, which is again, integrating the health and integrating the health from health practitioner point of view is good, mm -hmm. but also the impact on the patient is, is most important. And what we want is that uh, we give, we create like a toolbox, give a choice to the patient. You have got this evidence for benefit of this. You've got evidence benefit of this, evidence benefit of this, evidence benefit. Now you choose what is best for you. Rather yes. than Very nice. I love the toolbox. I love the, you know, that, uh, that's a really great way to explain it as well. Good example, you know, like, oh, toolbox. Like, do you want this? Do you want this? Or do you want this? So you can use all three to do, be able to do the same thing. What do you connect with? What do you resonate with? And sometimes if you look at it on a spiritual level, each one of us has different souls on a different journey. You know, we get drawn to different things. So we may feel more drawn to more holistic or natural methods, or some people may prefer more orthodox methods, etc. So absolutely. Very good point there as well, Dr. Rajiv Ji. Very nice. Very good point. Well, I was just going to say, if there's any last minute, Deb, because I know we're moving on to our next guest as well. We've got um, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, Gandhi, who's also going to be joining us very shortly. Perhaps we may have one last question from yourself, Rajiv Ji, that you may want to ask uh, Kirit, uh, Kirit Ji with the work he's doing with the South Asian Health Association. Any questions on that, perhaps? Well, I was thinking is that uh, I know uh, you have come to, to Leeds uh, for the kidney donation camp and all that. So I was thinking is that we probably need to have, from your point of view, any other voluntary organization that you know of, or if you can nominate one or two people, who can we can take one of our group while we are doing this journey and also uh, a program that is actually important at this point in time, which is like eat smart, think smart. That is very, very good. And I think it will be good to have the, the group from the patients, the user and, and the parents so that the program become more successful as you are talking that we can do from our end but the parents needs to be on board, the teachers needs to be on board, and the health needs to be on board. So it's a, like a triangle. So uh, if you can nominate a couple of people, that will be extremely useful. And whatever work you do, please do share, because we share each other's work. We can reach more people. Yeah. We're now a family. We're healing our Earth family. And now we're, we're a family of the Global Integrated Health Forum family as well. <laughs> So, so it's good to help each other. All family members help each other, right? <laughs> so that is really good. Uh, I'd so just like to say one, one last point. I think, you know, it's, it's only by organizations like BAPIO and others who are actually working with us and giving us the opportunities to connect, bring the healthcare professionals and the patient voice together. And our simple way of working is we, we work on three E's. We, we work on engagement, education, empowerment, and exploring. And that's the key because we know we're not engaged in research. We, we need to educate our patients to better. And thankfully, we've got uh, Rajiv coming next. He was working with us this week in helping diabetes, you know, because it's world, it was mental health awareness. And we were looking at mindset with diabetes because we're a diabetes group. And it's, you know, people like Rajiv and others, you know, we've got Dr. Nandini hopefully next week in terms of the work she's doing. It's about creating the solu solutions for us to work together and make that change for us as patients and communities to live longer lives. Yeah, very nice. A healthier, they say, you know, it's a, how you live your life is very important. And if your health is wealth, right? So it's really important to help people in that area. Kiriji, thank you so much. You know, I think that before you go, I think um, um, Dr. Bai Ching also mentioned something when she shared that, you know, holistic medicine is a way of the future. Um, uh, Dr. Bai Ching, uh, if you wanted to perhaps uh, share any and have any feedback for Kiriji before we move on to Rajiv Gadviji. Yes, I would love to. Kitty G, you know, I really resonate with your work because in Singapore, where I was a part of a, a medical practice, I was the consultant for actually assessing the person, the patient, the client, the very first time and to see where the, the best uh, needs are served of that patient. So I really resonate with your work. And so, you know, whether it's cancer, we, we start with holistic dentistry, perhaps, you know, and then with nutrition and then emotional release work. It's what the patient needs and heart to heart. And this is the true holistic way of uh, 
personalized medicine. And so I really wish to, to connect with you and just create some simple protocols and assessment and uh, not assessment in a clinical scientific cold manner, but you know, from a humanistic point of view. So I honor your work. Thank you so much. And Happy to connect. Thank you. Oh, what a beautiful way to say that. Thank you, Dr. Wai Ching as well. I love that. And I love when she, you know, she always says honoring people's work, you know, such a lovely thing from soul to soul. Thank you for that lovely contribution. Thank you, Kirit Ji, for joining us here. And a global namaste to you. Keep up the great work as always. We are very proud of the work you're doing. Well done. <laughs> so we now move on to our next guest. And we have a dear Rajiv Gadri, who's going to be joining us now. Uh, he's going to be talking to us a little bit about how to manage diabetes and mental health. So let's find out and discover what he has to share with us. Hello, uh, a global namaste, Rajiv Ji. Namaste, how's everyone keeping? Hope everyone's doing well. Yes, very well. I love there's loads of boxes of medication behind you. <laughs> yeah. oh, <I'm> <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, dear. Well, I know we're going to be talking a lot about these uh, subjects in a minute. But Rajiv, yep. you tell me a little bit about yourself. So before we share a little bit about what you want to share with the world, tell us a bit more about you, who you are, what do you do? OK, I've been a pharmacist for around a decade. And in that time, I must have handed out 10,000 pills to over 10,000 patients. <laughs> oh dear. What, what I'm seeing is a system that is fundab fundamentally broken in some sense. Okay. One that is treating symptoms, giving us loads of band aids, but not actually addressing the root causes. Okay. I'm now, beginning to like you. <laughs> <laughs> You're well, good. <laughs> yes. Now, how I awaken to realizing I'm part of that broken system, one that pushes a pill for every ill, uh, keeps us going on that hamster cage of stress and feeds us toxins through our foods. Mm -hmm. It's when my dad came home and he goes, son, I've seen the doctors. They want to put me on metformin, which is a tablet for type 2 diabetes. You know, my whole system told me there's a different way. So I educate myself and dedicate myself to coaching my dad. Now, today, I'm so grateful that he doesn't take a single pill and he's healthy. Oh, I wow. Still, yeah. Tell him a namaste from me and well oh, done. I really, I love people like that, you know, yeah. who, who will find ways, you know, to move forward without having to get the side effects and the rest of it. Yes. Yeah. So I studied something called functional medicine. It's an alternative type of medicine which looks at the root causes of problems and it fixes them. Simple as that. So based on this, I created a 12-week program that helps people reverse type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes and obesity. It's called Rewind Health. Um, it helps people become drug free. So I personally work with a lot of clients and a few of my patients. Some people are taking seven tablets a day for managing type two. Now they're taking one. I've had people on insulin before who have come off insulin. So I've created this 12 week program that I work with. Um, as Kirit mentioned, Kirit's Kirit actually on the program himself. So I'm uh, helping him and coaching him to reverse his type 2 diabetes. So, wow. yeah, so, so that, that's what I do. My mission is to help my people. Dad, my dad is a diabetic, you know. So, yeah, so he loves, he just put things and he's really proudly said, look how many pills I've taken. Look, I've taken yeah. all my pills this morning. I said, dad, you really can do more walks and you can really do. So we have to educate our of course, our elderly people, our community members, etc. But yeah. but what you are doing, that's so super powerful. I love this rewiring your health. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. You're also taking and reversing people, you know, like from you know any adverse effects that they could be getting, you know. Medicine, yeah. Yeah, so I'll have, have an app coming out soon on the um, Apple phone and Android. So literally, you can download. It's called Rewind Health, and you can basically start the app and go through my lessons and my coaching so you'd have all coaching on the actual phone which is really quick so i designed it for people that are really busy in corporate environments you know they don't have time to do all these bits so it's like five to ten minute videos they watch every day i coach them on a daily basis and tell them take three action steps that's all and those three action steps accumulate and then you then you go on the journey of reversing your type 2 diabetes Wow. Could you give us an example? Like if you had one of those videos, let's say, so everybody, let's say I would advise, of course, every single person to go out there and just download this app because it sounds so good. But yeah. let's say if they did, uh, yeah. what is that? What is it that they would be doing step by step? What would be oh. like the content of one of the videos? For okay, so, I have, uh, so it's a 12 week program and there's six core modules. Now, say one module, let's work on healing the gut, right? Yeah. gut um is where all diseases come from okay so you know we've heard that socrates said it many years ago 
But say the first the first module is my my I always start with mindset. Um, I teach a lot of people how to re reprogram your mind using the law of attraction, all these different things. But say it's the gut. OK, so every single day you have seven lessons to learn five to ten minutes. You open your app up and you just watch the video. Then you have three action steps to take. And you've got a little community on there, which you can um, interact with other people. And you also have like a tracker. Say, for example, if you're type 2 diabetes, you're getting sugars of 9, 9.3. You can track it while you're doing it to bring it down. Now, also, I do live group coaching call on a private Facebook group. That's where everything happens. So they come on seven, uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and they can ask me anything, Q&As. And then I really drill down into the lesson and explain how to get this reversal. Wow, this is really nice. And I really love that. Really love. I hope everybody's listening to this. This is such a great way. And also, it doesn't have to be specifically local. It can be anywhere in the world. And of course, we have worldwide audience members tuning in right now, each one very interested in, you know, health and well being. So yeah. this could be a, probably a very good app for people to consider. And it's called, like you said, um, it's it's called Rewiring Health. Yeah. Well, so it'll be launched shortly. But at the moment, it's called Rewind Health. So Rewind. At the moment, Rewind. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. at the moment, people can go to my, I've got a membership site where they go on the membership site, they log in and they do all the lessons on there at the moment. So you need a laptop or an iPad, but the app is going to be, you know, user friendly and that's on its way. I'm getting that made at the moment. Brilliant. Brilliant. And how is this uh, managing diabetes and managing mental health? What, what, is, um, the, what is the connection okay. here? So... How, what I've noticed, a lot of people that are on type 2 diabetes medicines, they experience waves of mental health conditions, right? Sometimes, you know, being overwhelmed with all the drugs they're taking. So I know people that take 25 tablets for it. And this overwhelm, overwhelm they just start, they give up. You know, they don't have no motivation. You know, they don't have no drive. So I think that is also a mindset that, that needs to be improved. That's why the first lesson is all about mindset, is when I really rewire their thinking, you know, set them a proper goal. Because most people think, okay, it's a goal, smart goals. No, we have a goal that I create as a system. You write it on your card and you keep it with you at all times. And after goal, we look at the habits. Some habits serve you, some don't. The third thing we look at is self-image. Now, self-image is very, very important. So if you are that kid who was quite chubby and quite fat, and in the future you lost the weight, you always call yourself that fat kid. Now, that is a self-image that we all keep in our minds. I work and change that image, a new person who's ready for the change, ready to, to get this diabetes under control and reverse it. And then we talk about action steps. So the mindset section really gets them driven and focused. When they're driven and focused, have got a plan and got something to go by, these mental health conditions start wearing away because they're working towards something. Many people who are depressed, have anxiety, they want to do something. Yeah, they want to take action, but they don't, they don't know how to or what to do action towards. If they have a goal and some like a journey to go to, towards, some of these mental health conditions wear away. And that's why I've yeah. noticed. Um, and also somebody to be accountable to as well, because sometimes it keeps people on track. Exactly. And when you're doing it yourself, there isn't that much motivation. But as soon as there's somebody there every week, how did you do? Or you've got a community that you're connecting with. Suddenly yeah. you all want to, it's, it's like there's a Treakly app, for example. If you do 5,000 steps a day, for yeah. five days, they plant a tree for you, but uh, you but you can connect with a group as well, so everybody can do their walks. Now, as soon as you start seeing yourself staying on the on the, on the lower part, you think, "Oh God, I better start walking. Yeah. <laughs> I better start getting my yeah my steps yeah. going." So yeah, it is, there is a, some some community benefit that takes place, but this could also be preventative as well. This 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 right. app looks not just for helping you to re reverse your uh, health yeah. symptoms, but it's also about preventing. Prevention, I would have thought, you know, to have good habits in place. Prevention is better than cure. So what my kind of is how to transform healthcare. OK, now, when parents, for example, start learning about these different things, they can start to teach in their children. Uh, but what happens is parents don't get rid of that mindset. You know, they still have uh, some people have the good mindset. Some don't. Like, for example, let me ask you guys a question. Yeah, it's very simple. When your kids wake up, what do you give them for breakfast? Do you give them cereals, Frosties, Cocoa Pops, all these different things they have, right? Now, mm -hmm. how long are you giving them uh, on their screen, screen time? Are they socializing? Are they playing in the park? No. See, these are things that happen. So if you just replace some of the bad habits, so replace your Cocoa, Cocoa Pops with breakfast smoothies, oats, Greek yogurt, frozen mangoes, blueberries. You know, you've got everything in there, good fats, fiber, protein, and it gives you energy till lunchtime. So it's changing a simple habit such as breakfast. When they grow up, they won't be having these conditions as type 2 diabetes because they're everything we undermanage. 
So mm. Time on screens, have a cutoff period, right? Yes. More times outside with family and friends while supervised. Yeah, because a long time ago, you would find that people do not become, uh, we're not getting so ill. Nowadays, right. everybody's got some kind of Ill, Ill health issues or so. Yeah. But you used to find children running around in the outside in the roads and they wouldn't be sitting watching TV. They'll be playing, running around, playing hide or hide and seek or whatever it was. But meaning they were so active. Yeah. Nowadays, you don't see children even running and playing outside and much, you know, unless they go to the park every now and again with the parents. But it's not like a regular everyday thing that they used to do yeah. before so you're right to give them those habits right from the beginning and yeah. limiting the screen time and of course we have also the 5g and 4g and whatever it is all the, um, the those frequencies are not very good for the health as well exactly so that they say that so when you know try not keeping your phones in your room when you go to, to sleep it's the rays and the blue lights are not good for you that'll disturb your sleep now fundamentally i think right there's three things that's caused the difference from say the, in the 1980s to now it's crap food it's more stress and it's toxins okay the foods have changed okay they're not being grown properly the crops are not the same more more pesticides more toxins stress everyone has some sort of stress stress is good for you when you're in fight or flight but everyone's chronically stressed and when this happens cortisol is always high your body's in inflammation and when you have inflammation you get type 2 diabetes you get cancers arthritis this is where it comes from so our goal is to reduce inflammation right and finally it's toxins there's so many toxins in the environment you know what we use to brush our teeth uh, the toilet cleaners these things cause these cause inflammation in our body so simple habits of changing these little bits with with, with some natural products will make a big difference so that's yes. what's changed in the past very 20 nice. years the three things that you mentioned are also very important that you just said and yeah. the toxins nowadays are really terrible as well because people for example you know when people throw rubbish in the sea for example that sea the fishes you know eat that food and everything again and then the, we eat those fish i mean i'm a vegetarian but those people who eat fish for example will then eat that fish um and not just that i've heard that even when you throw plastic bottles and things like that in the uh, sea it yeah. takes it's 450 years for that plastic to to melt 450 years so so if you can imagine we eating plastic bits in our mouth they say that in our stomach the people find little plastic bits yeah somehow it's in in the air it's you know all the pollution and things it's terrible actually um so so what can we do now i mean what can everyone come collectively do let's say if we had the whole of the healing our earth audience yeah. members around the world um yeah. I'm just saying, let's say 20, 30,000 people are watching right now, imagine, yeah. and yeah. each one of them has to change their life in a positive way and right. become role models for their communities so that they can encourage their families, their friends and others to become a bit more healthier. Yeah. What would you advise? What would you say would be the first thing to do? First thing to do is work on your mindset. OK, everything happens here first. OK, you've heard about law of attractions. What you think about comes about. Now, when you think negatively, you have negative. You know, your feeling, your thoughts are negative. Your feelings will be negative and your action steps will be negative. Yeah, that's called attitude. Yeah, your thoughts, feelings and actions. So you have to work on your mindset first. Just write down a simple goal, something you're working towards. Now, if you have something you're working towards and you're really connected to it, things like healthy eating, exercising, stress management, you will want to do it. You will want to do it because you want to reach that goal. So if you don't have a clear goal in your mind of where you want to go in your life, what you want to achieve, how you want to be, you know, you won't take those healthy action steps of eating healthier. So in my opinion, everything starts with mindset. You know, I've spent so many years just learning about how the brain works because, you know, everything is in the, in the mind. So work on your mind. What it takes a really good point. Very nice and very, very good. Very nice. And it's a first step. And of course, we're holistic. So it's yeah. mind, the soul we talk about, right? So yeah. your mind will then affect your body and then the body will affect your spiritual outlook towards yeah. life, which yeah. is your attitude and things, the way you connect with people, the harmony you feel in the world, you know, because of that. So what made you as a person um, being a farm, uh, you know, like a pharmacist? Yeah. 
get into personal development mindset and and what made you what inspired you to bring that into your uh, um, you know that you have your equation you know yeah. <laughs> not just medication not just cool. uh, reach changing your habits but mindset too okay. so what i realized right when people come into my pharmacy and they're taking medications young children young, young people coming with type 2 diabetes metformin a week later they'll be on another drug you know it's just it's just i think what's happening why are they not changing you know, they, they know to eat healthy. If you go on YouTube, you've got a million videos on what to eat if you're type 2 diabetic, right? You've got stress management techniques. There's all this information, but why are people not taking the action steps? So with me, when I was a bit younger, you know, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, I wanted to do this. I was a cricketer, I was a footballer, I did everything. So I realized that, you know, I wanted to do it, but I didn't have the mindset for it. I didn't stick with it. I didn't take the action steps. Now you need to develop yourself every single day, just not in health, your health, your wealth, your love, your happiness, your, your relationships. You need to work on every aspect. you got to get your journals out and you got to write down how you want to live in every part of your life, how you want to show up in the world, what you want to contribute. Now, if you can live by this new image you create of yourself, you know, everything changes. So I think personal development is number one and then other things fall into play. This is from personal Very experience. Nice. I would try everything and nothing worked for me. OK, you know, I spent thousands on personal development, but I wasn't getting the action. I wasn't getting what I wanted. But then I started working myself, working personal. And now everything is, you know, coming into place. Right? Okay. Yeah. So it's, a, it's programming of your own, your own, the way you live, because if your program has been put in, in place in your head, like, yeah. for example, the parents say it's hard to come by money, for example example yeah. then that program is written in you then you will yeah. everything you do will be uh, based on that i have to work hard i have to do this yeah. so if you reprogram and put yeah. new pro new belief systems in you right. like even the health belief systems that we're talking about the motivational yeah. ones rather yeah. than oh, i can't be bothered anymore exactly so, so like one tip right one tip now um if you've got something that's bugging you okay habits uh, something that's not serving you i want you to write it out on a piece of paper yeah the negative one on the other on, the, on another sheet of paper write the exact opposite okay so say that you want to lose 20 pounds but you just don't know how to do it on the other side you write a statement i am so happy and grateful now that i have lost 20 pounds and i'm living my best life and i love it now burn the old one shred it get rid of it and focus all your energy on the positive one and read it every single day three to four times a day get connected to it feel it understand it how it would feel become that person be the present so act as if that you're the person already when you start doing these things literally you'll notice in a few months down the line you're losing the weight you know you're reaching your goals because you're already that person in your mindset because you're now not working um, uh, unconsciously, you're working more consciously, yeah. and it's not. Yeah, you're more aware of everything that you're doing at that moment in time. Because as soon as you go to eat that cake, you think, mm, "Oh, exactly. that's going to be three hundred calories there, and that's going to take me two hours to walk." Uh -uh. Let me just take an apple instead because I'm just feeling okay. peckish. So automatically, you start making the right decisions and uh, things that will help you in that path. So that's very true. No, Bajiji, I, I love what you've said. You know, your attitude, your um, uh, focus in life, and also what you're aiming to do with the actual app. Yeah. I'm very, pr I'm, I really congratulate you for Thank that. You so Real much. best wishes. What, what amazing work to be done, you know? And I think someone like you could create a lot of change in the world, you know, if you can do this, because you're using technology, you're using mindset, you're then using your um, medical background, and yeah. you're helping to get people back on the natural way of, you know, improving lives. So it's, it's everything. You've, you've got lots of layers to what you're doing. And yeah. each layer is a tick, 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 tick. You know, so it's a very powerful package, what you're offering. Very That's well great. done. Keep up Thank the you. great work. Really, really Thank proud. <laughs> I'll have to get my dad to sign up to this. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, give him my details, no problem. Yeah, well, let's move on now. Look, we've got Rajiv here. We've got Kiriji as well here. Let's see if we can have a bit of a panel discussion before we have our next guest. And let's see if there's any interrogating questions that any of these gentlemen would like to ask you. Yeah. So, Rajivji, let's start with yourself. Um, here comes Dr. Rajiv Gupta. Any any points that you would like to raise whilst we're talking to Rajiv Gadriji? Uh Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting concept. And uh, I'm very... Um open-minded and very keen. I'm a professional coach. I've done the whole diploma in executive and corporate coaching and do it 
and the whole NLP, the neuro linguistic programming. I'm um, not only trainer, I'm the master uh, trainer. So I think the whole idea, what you have talked, actually resonated very well with me. Yeah. And these are these are the bare bones for the NLP that you think you act and you do the things and whatever that's, that's neuro linguistic programming yes NLP yeah you know whatever I've heard when I was even a kid whatever mind of a man or a woman can conceive and believe you can achieve. You can achieve think and grow rich Napoleon Hill <laughs> that was my first book that my dad ever bought me when I was 13 years old he bought me think and grow rich by, yeah, by Napoleon Hill and also how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie which were two very good books and I started reading those from the age of 13 so I know that mindset is a very powerful thing I don't take any medication in my whole life hardly anything <laughs> so no tablets etc but but that's because so mindset also helps, you know, like when you have something, uh, you, you use your mindset to heal yourself, etc. And think, okay, I'll just do something. Let's have lemon. I'm feeling a little tired right now. Let me do a pick up thing, honey and lemon. And next day you feel fine. So yeah, so th that's what I was trying to say. So Rajivji, that's a really good point. I'm glad you're also a coach. So you understand where uh, Rajivji is coming from. Let's find out from Giriji as well. Okay, so, sorry, you were going to say Rajiv? I'm, I'm NLP as well. So I'm a master practitioner of NLP. So I use a lot of that in you know working with my uh, with my clients with my patients to really get that behavioral change as you've done as you're a master prac you know that some of the techniques are very very powerful and you know you can really cause change in people quickly by changing their states that's all you need to do yeah. but this behavioral management behavioral uh you know mod modification that we're talking about in a positive way is a really important thing because until you don't get that behavior habits in place there is no changes that will ever take place and even if you're there holding people's hand for a month they'll yeah. be going back to the same thing afterwards right that's why diets don't work because it's yeah. it's it's they're, they're suffering and they're torturing themselves or whatever it's not a healthy lifestyle change that's taken place at that moment which is what we need to support and encourage. So Kiriji, what about you? What, is there any questions from your side that you came up with for this, for what Rajivji has been sharing with us? It's important that we have to break it down to us as patients on how to, what is the condition, how to manage it better? Do we understand our bloods? Do we understand the, the kind of three month variation? And are, we, we have a peer led support group and uh, you know, Coming, coming and educating, but at the same time, leaving with the, the, the challenge that it's your health, it's your responsibility. So we, we, we constantly, for the last two years, since setting up this group, I used to chase people to attend our meetings. Now I say to them, it's your, you control your diabetes, don't let diabetes control you. Because ultimately, right, we don't, we're not going to be there 24-7 with you. So it's, we can give you the motivation, we can give you the tips or the, the courses to go on. But ultimately, you have to change. And, and I felt reaching out to Rajiv was you, we have a you know, we are, we're a roller coaster because you know when your life is going well, it's great. When you have certain challenges, you dip on that roller coaster, and then you go back. And then when your doctor says to you, "Right, you've got your bloods have gone up," I'm going to introduce you another tablet. And I said, "Sorry, give me give me time. I'm going to do something about it." And it's it's just it's a, it's a roller coaster, and we've got to manage that roller coaster. When it's when it's high, let's do we, let's celebrate. When we yeah. go low, let's reach out for help because we, we need that help to, to navigate us back up. Yes, the help part is very true as well. And then we also need to consider there are some countries around the world, like, for example, Norway, for example, uh, we, where we hear that there's hardly any illnesses, the health, the health, you know, there's hardly any health issues there. And what is it that they're doing that, uh, you know, um, what, what are we doing in our country or any other countries? What is Norway doing that they have such healthy people, hardly anybody taking days off work, you know, from employment point of view, which affects, you know, our GDP and other productive and our economy and other things as well if you have people taking days off all the time because of health ill health etc there's so many knock-on effects and if you're healthy individuals you'll be happier you'll be more productive your nation will be getting strong you know there's so many other things that has a knock-on effect so what do you think these other countries are doing and what we're not and other countries are not they're investing they're investing in um, that prevention and more they're investing more in terms of getting education early in schools to get that kind of, you know, and most importantly, they're actually working with the families. That's the, 
that, you know, I've, I've been to Sweden, I've been to, you know, some of the Scandinavian countries, they believe that we can't just work with, you know, the children, that message has to then, children are good to give the message to, but then they have to go back, take it to their homes and to their communities. And, you know, this, you know, your platform, this Healing on Earth family, you know, and thanks to Neil by because you, you, we are getting this message out of better health globally and we're learning from people now. and I was inspired I took something from Dr. Siva today was the, the box analogy you know you have you're going to have a box of whatever but then you're also going to have a, a coffin box so you take your pick and that was you know really good to it's a very good powerful you. way absolutely well I just want to say thank you to all of you gentlemen you know who've been really discussing and such a fantastic discussion just wanted to also remind the audience members around the world that you can watch us of course on healing our earth but we're on many many social platforms at the moment we also have a lot of media channel partners online who are actually where we are streaming live at this moment in time so we have audience members from many many different groups who are joining here right now watching this program so I hope each and every single one of you are gaining something from this. And of course, these wonderful gentlemen and all the ladies and men and all the professionals who've joined us today, they've really left us with some really wonderful thoughts, so, so much wisdom and so much knowledge. Um, Rajiv Ji, I just wanted to say very big and um, best of luck, you know, for what you're doing. Really want to wish you the best for the future. And I know that what you're doing seems to be top class, I think, you know, so keep up the good work. We're really looking, yeah, looking forward to supporting you. Yeah, and looking for, I, I, I'm definitely, I'm 100, I'm 10 out of 10 with you for this, you know, what you're doing. It's really good. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank yeah, thank you so much. So we now, of course, move on to our next guest. Uh, and we are so, so proud to have Dr. Tess Laurie with us. Uh, a global namaste to you, Dr. Tess. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak. It's a great honor. Oh, we are so proud to have you. And of course, we're really looking and very excited to hear about what you have to share with us about the better way, which is the reason I asked this question. Why, why do some countries have such wonderful, you know, no health issues and the rest of them have lots of health issues? And also the fact that you're talking about the World Council for Health. Is that an organization that you run or is that something you're looking to develop yourself? Um, the World Council for Health was established in September last year. Uh, and it's an organization that's now across 50 countries and we have 150 partners. So uh, it's really been growing exponentially. And because that's, wow. it's really what we're about is conveying a very positive message about um, healing ourselves and the planet. And, and Wow. Um, this, is, this is exactly, of course, Dr. Wai Ching is also, and she's, uh, uh, you know, she, I know she knows you well, right? Have yes. you worked together yes, before? So, which is, yes, I would love to find out from Dr. Wai Ching as well. What a lovely lady. And I love the world council for health because it's all about promoting healthy healthier lifestyles healthier people healthier planet so i think it's a really great work you're doing and you've grown so much just from last year to now which shows how important this topic is and this uh, you know this platform is so it's really hey, good may i share some slides and because i thought i could just give you a background it would be easier for me to to share some slides with you and then i can also tell you about the better way conference Absolutely. So, um, Dr. Awai Ching, maybe we could uh, we can invite you back in a little bit later so we can ask any questions that you may want and maybe have your input in this uh, presentation as well. Please go ahead. And we're looking forward to hearing what you have to share, Dr. Tess. Uh, we have Dr. Tess Laurie, just in case you've just joined us here on Healing Our Earth. There we go. This should. Do you see that? Definitely. Co-creating change. Yeah, so the World Council for Health sees um, the past two years really as a massive opportunity for, for great and positive change. And, uh, and we, as I say, we brought together 150 partners from 50 countries and we're growing every day. And really, we're about promoting health, preventing disease. Um, and we do that with um, respecting one another, everyone taking responsibility for their own health and for the planet and working together. Uh, our vision is, um, is that we believe in a healthy world where everyone enjoys information and uh, transparency, access to medicines and support to optimize our health while respecting individual health choices without fear of discrimination or persecution. We believe in a world where we keep our water and our food uncontaminated and families together. 
Um, we have uh, many committees, uh, a very thriving health and humanities committee, a youth committee, a medical and legal committee, uh, sorry, ethics committee, and a law and activism committee, among others. Um, if you go to our website, you'll see we have really essential health resources, both on managing um, new and emerging health um, health issues, but but really the focus is on promoting and preventing promoting health and preventing disease. And there's many ways, both new and old, uh, old wisdom to um, to do this. We also empower people and communities. So um, we really have an emphasis on on um, reminding people of our common humanity and how it's how important it is to communicate with one another um, and how uh, and how this can be done because I think over the past two years people have um, have been uh, divided and have uh, forgotten the, the the tools necessary to to reach one another and uh, very importantly we safeguard human rights we have some very important campaigns running including the cease and desist uh, campaign to stop the experimental vaccinations based on the evidence that, that's emerging that they are harmful, as well as the Stop the WHO campaign, Stop the World Health Organization campaign, because there is this, um, this uh, power grab that um, we need to educate uh, and empower people to, to resist and stand up against. And, um, and and one of the other features of um, or, 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 um, um, activities is to collaborate and educate. So um, we're having our first World Council for Health conference this coming week. It's a physical and online conference, but the majority of speakers are coming in person. Um, it's a three-day conference, and it's an opportunity really to ask those questions we haven't asked or haven't had answered in the past two years. So, um, and, and, and important questions that we actually perhaps um, have forgotten are, are necessary to ask and, and, I'll, and I'll explain. Um, so the conference is three days. We've got seven questions and, um, and the slogan of, of indeed the conference and the World Council for Health is a better way for a better world. The conversations are um, on Friday, we have um, what is our role in reclaiming science? And we have some very prominent international scientists who will be exploring this, um, looking at, um, at what's happened to science and, uh, and indeed um, whether it and, and how we reclaim it and get it back on track, doing what it should be doing, which is examining um, the things we, we don't know. And uh, instead of um, um, commercializing the things that we do. Um, then conversation two, which is uh, on Saturday morning, how do we manage the health consequences of the, of the COVID-19 chapter? Very important, we need to recognize um, what the health consequences are and then to, um, and then to actively engage in solutions. And I, I just wanna stress again that the conference is very solutions focused. It's not about moaning about what's gone wrong. It's about saying, um, this is what, you know, this is where we are. How do we change that? How do we, we move forward in a positive way now to create a better world? Um, so in the afternoon, we have a, a very important conversation, exactly that. How do we as individuals and together actively create a world in which people thrive? Again, some really incredible speakers from around the world. Um, we'll be exploring that and giving, giving um, people, you know, real um, uh, activities they can do to move towards um, co-creating a better future for everybody. Uh, on Saturday evening, we have a very interesting conversation. How do we restore journalistic independence and media credibility? Because uh, certainly that, you know, that has been something that has suffered in the last two years as, um, as governments have sought to use propaganda through the media to keep people um, conforming to a certain narrative and um, which has had implications for um, free will and our ability to choose. Conversation five, how can the law serve human rights? Uh, very important conversation and, uh, and really uh, with a particular emphasis on um, the amendments to the international health regulations and, um, and the WHO pandemic treaty, which really needs our attention at this time. 
Conversation six, how do we identify and address environmental health challenges? Well, these are very numerous. And I think in the past couple of years, we've, we've had with this focus on COVID and, and this fear over our personal health, we've actually just, these have just taken a back seat and we've forgotten about all these very, very um, dangerous or potentially dangerous environmental health issues um, that we urgently need to address. And, uh, and then the last conversation, um, which is the conversation which um, Dr. Wai Ching Li is speaking in, is how do we innovate integrative approaches to managing health? So how do we look at the wonderful modalities we have at hand, the new, the old, and put them together and move forward in, 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 um, in a very positive way to create a, a vision, uh, to, well, to, to empower that vision of better health for everybody, um, people and the and the planet. So um, I think there's a, another slide just to show you we have some really amazing people coming to speak and to host the conversations and so many of them have their own um, shows in different countries. We've got Majid Nawaz um, from the UK and Dan Aston Gregory from the UK and Neil Oliver from the UK. Um, Brett Weinstein and uh, Del Bigtree from the US, and then um, Shabnam Palesa Mohammed, Dr. Jennifer Hibbard, um, Laura Anderson, Dr. Kat Lindley, um, Christoph Ploth, Dr. Pearl Coupe, and myself are all representatives of World Council for Health who will be co hosting the meetings. Um, so, and so, oh, oh, the other thing is um, just lastly to say, obviously, it costs us quite a lot to put on the conference, uh, and, and so. Um, uh, the the tickets for some might seem unaffordable at um, forty two pounds a, a session, um, at, or, and and the online ticket is forty nine pounds for the whole weekend. So what we're really encouraging people to do is just to buy a ticket, invite all your friends around, you know, buy a virtual ticket, um, you know, have a have a watch party. You could, if you invite ten people around, well, then it's not going to cost very much at all per head. And, and it brings you together and it actually enables you to join the conversation. So, um, so that's the last thing that I will say. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share that. No, that's really wonderful. That's great. And I love the fact that you have got such a wide range of areas that you're dealing with, with the organization, with the World Council for Health, because you talked about um, in the environment as well, how the environment affects and uh, what kind of environmental health challenges you also have. You talked about safeguarding human rights. I think that's a very important topic. And then you also talked about how to collaborate and educate it's not it's about solutions focused rather than you know pointing fingers and and I like that because it's very using your time very constructively. I tend to really like, you know, when people say, Oh, what's the point of fighting each other, this extra energy and you go nowhere? But if you work together to find solutions for something, I think that's a very positive thing. So I'm really, really happy with uh, what you're doing. And I'm glad Dr. Wai Ching, uh, you know, brought you along and invited you along on our platform. Uh, Dr. Wai Ching, what did you think of that? What did you think of all that information? Well, I'm well versed with it since I've been studying the schedule. And so I just wish I could be there in Bath in person to to hug Dr. Tess Laurie for all the work that she's done, for all the commitment and all the um, all the, the steering committee of World Council for Health. I found that it has been one of the most cogent platforms in bringing together the very necessary threads and weaving together the, the issues we have to discuss now, for example, the legal issues. Dr. Rainer Fulmik is going to be there, and uh, Dr. Uh, um, uh, Dipali Oja from India, from the Bar Association. So, so I why, 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 why are they important? And the legal field have to come uh -huh. together now to make changes, really grounded changes in our new healthcare systems. Isn't that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, brilliant. Can't... So you talk about policy changes as well. You're talking about bringing legal uh, issues because you talked about the human rights aspects of things that people should have a choice, an option to choose what they wish to do rather than you have to have it. Uh, maybe with the vaccination issue, there was a big issue about that, wasn't there? With our COVID vaccinations where, where everybody was first, we, there was discussion that everybody would have to have that. And then you had another party that said that, well, that people should have a choice of what they put in their bodies. So, yeah, so you're talking about these kinds of issues. Is that right, Dr. Tess, Larry? 
Yeah, well, you can't separate health from um, from um, human rights and choices and um, and consent. And so it's very much, um, you know, the law, knowing the law, bodily autonomy and our personal sovereignty is very much a part of, of health, as well as, um, you know, the, the health of our planet. So we, we need to start uh, from uh, from a lawful legal point of view, thinking about how um, how what's going on in, in the environment um, can be addressed through legal and lawful routes too, because um, you know there's a lot of exploitation and um, and uh, things going on with our interventions, environmental interventions that are being um, implemented without our permission or consent. Yes, and I think also when um, uh, just a few weeks back, we also discussed and we had a wonderful guest who spoke about uh, soil, uh, how soil is eroding and also the fact that there's hardly any nutrition value in there anymore. So when we uh, grow plants, etc., and we cook these vegetables, let's say, um, there isn't enough nutrition in there before we would have one orange. Now we have to have eight oranges, eight to nine oranges to have that same nutrition value that we would have had many years before back with one orange so you can imagine there's depletion and our bodies no wonder they're getting unhealthy because <laughs> you know because the environment is actually having a huge impact on the on the food chain and um just just a, a short while back we had our wonderful uh, guest who spoke about three things food toxic toxic uh, uh, toxins and stress those three, three things are huge, uh, have a huge impact on us. And that includes the toxins and the food. There's two, two thirds <laughs> of yeah, that. It's really, it's really time that, you know, we, we really need people to engage with, with what is healthy and to, to start, uh, if they don't know, they need to learn what is good for them. But many of us just need to remember what is good for us because we've we've forgotten or we've conveniently forgotten because we're lazy and we and it's you know and and we think oh well everybody's doing it we may as well do it too. But at this point in time, I think our individual and our collective resilience is at an all time low, and we need to think about every single thing we put into our body from from water to food, to the air we breathe, and to the, um, the things we put into our minds, either via the television or via the uh, devices that we are using. Every single thing we do, we need to do consciously because uh, everything from what we eat, do, think, and dream impacts our health. That's so brilliant. Uh, Dr. Whiting, I wanted to ask you, perhaps you can uh, share some of your thoughts and feedback, have any questions. Maybe I can listen to both of you have a little chat now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know that your background is also both of you are very, very uh, much on the same platform, uh, both of coming from the same kind of uh, collective team, uh, and both of you think very, uh, very similarly in the way you wish to bring this uh, change in the world. So perhaps I can listen to both of you have a nice chat and see if you have per particular questions that you feel our Healing Our Earth audiences can really uh, learn from and be educated and informed about. Well, Dr. Tess, I'm so excited that we are integrating with the World Council for Health and this global integrated health forum of healing our earth. And, you know, in some of the programs, you're just getting to, to know us too. And um, there are uh, sessions where we are talking about food security and uh, cultivation and actually with marvelous recipes and very helpful recipes. And so, you know, it's, it's a quite a varied platform here as we also endeavor to heal our earth. And um, I just invite you to be part of us and more, much more. And that, and likewise, that for us to know the World Council for Health's work, and uh, I'm just so excited that Dr. Del uh, Del Victory is going to be comparing the event as well. The better way, um, I met him in Bali, by the way. Amazing. And, uh, yes, we had the World Sovereign Health Summit, so um, it feels like such a convergence of great souls. And perhaps you would like to. Uh, you just encapsulated everything in a very short time. Is there something else that you would like? 
to share that that uh, with the grads to Better Way Conference? Well, just, uh, you know, with the Better Way Conference, we have 65 speakers. We have all these amazing people coming. And as you've pointed out, even some um, celebrities, you know, in a way. Um, but um, they are simply, uh, they, you know, they're a handful. We could have had thousands. There are thousands of people stepping forward with these absolutely brilliant ideas. Um, everybody's on the same wavelength. And uh, so, you know, it's really, um, it's time to, for people to get excited and to feel motivated and inspired. You know, we are all coming together and we will, um, we will do this. The vision is, is there. We share it and we are going to make it happen. Yes, I, I really feel this uh, commitment and courage that we all here on this platform have to make things a better way. I think it's a brilliant name, The Better Way, and uh, it is uh, absolutely amazing. And you actually have um, companies on research, right? Would you like to say a little yes. bit more about your personal work, please? Yes, so um, my original company is called the Evidence-Based Medicine Consultancy, and that I began in um, 2013. Um, its, its role is basically to evaluate bodies of evidence, and uh, it's a not-for-profit, I'm sorry, it's a, it's, we only do work for non-profit uh, companies, and um, we have no conflicts of interest, and we've always been very, very busy. But when COVID came along, and I saw that there was lots of um, uh, practices that are being recommended for which there was no um, good evidence base. I formed a company called EBMC Squared, which is a community interest company. It's crowdfunded, and it is a company that manages the World Council for Health now. Mm, brilliant. I think there could be some kind of um, weaving convergence with what we're doing here. And perhaps Dr. Rajiv Gupta would like to you know, chime in and ask a question or see how we can work together. Dr. Rajiv? Uh, yeah, fantastic. Nice to uh, meet you, Chas. <laughs> I have just sent you a reply to the text, uh, which we have a few months ago, when the South Indian, well, South Asian uh, conference on COVID vaccine was there. You yes. sent me a text that day. So I think it's how the world and the almighty or supernatural power connect each other. Good yes. yes, well, it would be wonderful if um, if Heal Our World, Heal Our Earth would be one of our partners too. And, uh, and then we could benefit from your wisdom and our committees. Fantastic. And also I was thinking on the other way, because we are having this integrated uh, health uh, forum, which is like connecting conventional medicine, Ayurveda, homeopathy. And I am collecting the evidence for benefit because being me and you both qualified allopathic medical practitioner from background, you don't want any Tom, Dick and Harry coming and saying this works and it doesn't work. We need to see some sort of evidence so that we give a justified opinion and a choice to the person. So from your background of the evidence base, it would be good to collect. And <laughs> we work together on it because all of us are here for the single mission. God has created us to help the humankind and let's do it in the best way we can. So it'll be good to really work together. And as Wai Ching said that, you know, everything happened for a reason, mind, body, soul, universe, all is one. You need to think beyond yourself in order to immerse. And then things start happening. So. I'm so kind of you for organizing. Unfortunately, Wai Ching has sent me about the conference day. We are having the next episode, the fourth episode of integrated health <laughs> on the day. And then we have another obesity conference, which you have seen, uh, which um, I'm a global coordinator. So it's unfortunate, it's immense work, uh, but I would love to, to see and connect with you if I can, whenever, if I can, it's in between and out, but uh, I think it's it's good to really work together as Wai Ching Sen. Um, we have been we have been fortunate to have people who are of similar mind, and I think uh, if we continue conversation between these and we connect, we can make the difference. And you um, you'll be an asset for us. I am proud to say. So thank you so much for that. And Wai Ching. 
it's it's amazing that you're bringing people together and we are here to help each other and we have so much of thinking in common let's connect thank you so much thank you may i ask i'm i'm very interested to find out with the world council for health what is the aim in the future because you've grown so well so far and you know you've got 150 partners that and you seem to be attracting such a uh, such a lot of attention people want to be part of this wonderful organization and i think that's a really po- uh, that's a very positive uh, indication <laughs> that, that everybody wants to be part of this in the same way with our global network with the health network that we're setting up too so there's a lot of interest in health but where where do you wish to go in the future with this whole organization and what's thank the you. aim thank you for asking um our aim in is very humble uh in that uh, we want to empower people around the world to um to make sense of of uh, what is going on and uh, and empower them with the information they need to make the best choices for their own health and for the health of the planet um the uh, and and this is not a one size fits all approach and so when one looks at the prevailing health authority in the form of the world health organization one can see that that organization has um is past its sell by date in the sense that it no longer serves the people uh it is no longer a profit it is no longer a, a people if it ever was a people centered organization it has many conflicts of interest mm. and so governments around the world need uh they need an alternative they need an alternative that doesn't bleed them of money of millions of pounds it could be spent on their population they need an alternative that's trustworthy and um and uh, does not impose but rather offers um suggestions and um and um and opportunities um and uh, and they need um they need advice that is not conflicted um by um industry interests so it is clear now that this is a role that we can play uh and um and i must just emphasize that we are largely volunteer uh, manned so there is no um we have no huge funders we are funded by people we are funded by grassroots um and uh and um as long as the funding continues then i believe we have the mandate from people to continue doing what we're doing that's really amazing thank you for a really great answer there and it's really uh is very admirable i was going to be perhaps inviting keith sharp to perhaps you know uh, actually he has any uh, any points that he may want to uh, wish to uh, join in with this discussion but i just wanted to say congratulations for what you're doing and i know i'd like to just uh request and invite our healing our earth uh, audience members that perhaps you could support by attending these kinds of uh you know uh, events that they uh, at that uh, the world council for health is holding this weekend i believe it's 20th to 22nd of may and uh, you know find out more discover more perhaps purchase tickets in groups so you can all share the but it's you are actually supporting uh, good information to be distributed around the world you know uh, which everybody can use to improve their own health and transform you know lives <laughs> of communities and of this world as well of this planet so dear keith sharp a global namaste to you thank you for joining us here and i know that you are listening very intently but i would love to find out what are your thoughts on the world council for health or is there any other alternatives that you can see any points that you would like to share perhaps that's very kind of you nice to see everybody but i think that i'd like to just take up with tess if i may good afternoon tess right good afternoon um i feel that everything we're talking about is all pointed in one direction and i tend to think i'm a train on a pair of railway tracks and at the end which is never seeming to close always looks as though it's coming to an end and then it opens up again so we keep on a parallel path and in simplistic terms i believe that we 
in terms of not just this forum, but many other forums, have to pick up on what you've just said, Tess, which is the evidence base. Here in the UK, and I know I've spoken with Rajiv and others, is that we do have a problem. And that problem is getting the NHS, which is still in its infancy of 70 years compared with yoga, Tai Chi and everything else, to accept complementary therapy. And in the area that I'm involved in, which is Tai Chi and Qigong, we're looking at collaborations. But everything that keeps coming up is where is the evidence? I've just been talking, uh, texting, I should say, to a guy in Finland, and he cannot understand what I'm on about. So I said, let's talk about it, not try and text it. And the question I would like to raise is that if you're looking at evidence base, are you in touch with the top Cochrane organization? Yes. So thank, that's a really important question. And um, my, my life, my working life over the past, um, the past uh, 10, 20 years has really been uh, doing these um, systematic reviews. And I've, I've done at least 40 Cochrane reviews. Wow. <laughs> now, um, the thing with Cochrane, though, is that, um, you know, there's this emphasis on randomized controlled trials. And that, um, unfortunately, has led to favoring the pharmaceutical industry. And the, the um, guide, the, um, the uh, methods uh, of um, randomized controlled trials, as we've seen during COVID, are actually quite easily corrupted. So, um, so in actual fact, I see um, the way we evaluate evidence going forward to be completely um, different. We really need to, to, um, to bring in um, the, we need, really need to bring in qualitative data. And what I mean by qualitative data is, is what are doctors and people's experiences of certain um, interventions and treatments? Because um, it's, it's not just, uh, in actual fact, a randomized control trial is a very blunt tool. Uh, you're only measuring what you're setting out to measure and anything else gets lost. All that, all that other data gets lost. So we really need to rethink how we um, assess evidence um, and uh, we need to make sure that we are taking into account people's views and experiences, and that includes health practitioners' views. What we've seen over COVID is that um, doctors' experiences and people's experiences of treatment have been absolutely ignored. Nobody asked um, Nobody listened when the doctors were saying, this is how you must treat COVID. There's all these things you can use to treat COVID. You don't need to take the experimental injections, um, but, uh, but nobody was listening. And so um, the one thing that World Council for Health uh, does do is it listens to complementary healers and um, or complementary uh, practitioners. So we, um, we have... Um, uh, uh, homeopaths and we have chiropractors we have um, other sorts of modalities and, and indeed going forward uh, where we have a whole lot of new and emerging diseases based um, um, uh, on you know emerging on account of the gene-based vaccines that have been rushed out without being adequately tested we actually need very much to listen to the complementary practitioners to make sure that um, we can offer people a, 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 a range of options because allopathic medicine certainly doesn't have the answer. Well, I think that's a really great question, Keith. Very, very good question there. <laughs> and a very good answer there as well, Dr. Tessa. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all everyone's contribution. Today's been such an amazing, amazing program. I've really enjoyed listening to all the different contributors. Of course, Dr. Tess Laurie, thank you very much. You know, for, and I, we wish you the best of luck with all the work that you're doing. I know that Dr. Amelia uh, Wai Ching will be also one of those wonderful people who are uh, great supporters of the kind of work that you're doing. And we'll be there, you know, on par, you know, supporting such good initiatives. So well done, Dr. Wai Ching, as well, for doing such <laughs> great work. I know, really great. I also wanted to actually say a very big thank you to all the people who have contributed today. From 
from uh, Dr. Anit Siva, Milin Shah, of course, who's our host. We have Prof uh, Professor Ish Sharma with Sarah Asara Baines. Kirit Mystery, Rajiv Gadri, uh, Tests, of course, Laurie, and so many other guests that we had previously. We're also moving on to Sharon Rose and uh, Dr. Wai Ching Lee, who's going to be hosting soon. And we're going to have other guests joining us very soon, like Jack Delinda, who's also going to be sh um, sharing some really great um, words of wisdom and knowledge with us. So thank you to all of you guys for tuning in today at Healing Our Earth. Keep your comments coming in. We're getting such amazing messages on all our social media platforms. I'm really glad it's thanks to you because of your suggestions and your requests. We have done, this is our third integrated health program and we have one more health program taking place next week so that we can bring all this wonderful information to you for your health and for your well-being. So Dr. Tess, Laurie, thank you for sharing your wonderful knowledge with us. Good luck with the World Council for Health. And we will all be tuning in on the 20th to 22nd of May to find out more about what these wonderful guest speakers are going to be sharing with the world. So we move on to our next host. And we have our wonderful, the one and only dear Sharon Rose, all the way from uh, USA joining us. There you go. So dear uh, Sharon, let me just uh, introduce this wonderful lady to you. As you all know, because you are now aware of who dear uh, Rose, uh, Sharon Rose is, but if you are joining us for the first time, then this is a quick little uh, introduction. Sharon Rose is a winner of the Filmmaker of the Year Award from the 20th World Congress on Qigong. She's a tai, she does Tai Chi, Taoism, natural healing. She's the director and producer of the forthcoming documentary called Quantum Chi, The Taoist Art of Nurturing Life. It's an amazing, amazing series. You have to watch it. It's brilliantly made. And Sharon has also lectured, performed and presented her films in numerous universities, spiritual centers, um, cultural organizations and museums. And she was also a consultant to the National Endowment for the Arts. She's the author of The Path of the Priestess, which is a guidebook for awakening the divine feminine. It's an amazing book. You have to read that. I've been reading it. It's brilliant. <laughs> and she's also currently completing a CD called The Nectar of Bliss, dedicated to the healing power of the divine feminine in cultures throughout the world. Again, because this lady strives for excellence, you have to listen to that music too, because you will enjoy listening to that music. It's fantastic. But then I also have another co-host, and I'd like to now properly introduce our Dr. Wai Ching Li, who I call Amalia, <laughs> but her, her full name is Dr. Wai Ching Li. Now, Dr. Wai Ching Li is a medical intuitive healer from a traditional lineage. She is also a US qualified holistic health counselor and a an holistic bodywork therapist. As the principal of Earth Heart, a holistic consultancy, she has been collaborating with medical doctors in the field of integrative medicine since 1992. That's a long time. So this lady has a lot of experience in this field. Wai Ching is also a member of several organizations of integrative medicine and has been on panels and discussions with the medical professions in co-creating new paradigms and protocols for holistic medicine. As you can tell with uh, this wonderful um, uh, doctor um, uh, that we had just now, Tess Laurie, um, of course, Dr. Amalia and um, Wai Ching, I should say, has been a real integral part for helping those kinds of uh, organizations flower and blossom. <laughs> now, Wai Ching is also a member, of, uh, member I said, of, of various uh, panels and discussion groups. She's also, by the way, sits on the Health and Medical Advisory Board of Nature's Frequencies and serves as a consultant to the spa and hospitality industry, as you can tell by her beautiful method of speaking. <laughs> she provides leadership in many other humanitarian and environmental organizations, as well as her own program of living, healing, arts vortex she does lots as you can tell so we're very very proud to have someone like amalia which is dr Wai Ching, and our dear dr sharon dr sharon sharon rose this all become doctors today for me 
<laughs> and I am going to be handing over very reluctantly because I'm loving listening to these uh, wonderful guests share their knowledge. But I'm going to be handing over the hosting to these two gorgeous ladies on our Healing Our Earth. So first of all, global namaste, dear Sharon. Global namaste again, Dr. Wai Ching. Global namaste to you, dear honey, our <laughs> senior host, producer of the dance, the amazing dance shows, and so much more. It's always such a delight to be with you. Oh, you're so wonderful. Well, I love being part of, uh, I love part of this family, as you know. Just wanted to also say thanks to Neil Kumar. Without him, us, uh, all three ladies here would have never met. So I just want to say a very big thank you. Not just that, we have Mita, we have Lata, we have so many other people who are all Lakshmi. joining us always. Lakshmi and so many people we would have never met without these wonderful Mr. Neil Kumar. So thank you, Neil, for being a founder of Healing Our Earth. And he's taking the direction of the Healing Our Earth into something very special, very big, very, um, I would say, impactful for the world. So I think that I'm really looking forward to seeing how we blossom together as a, as a family. So dear Sharon, dear Dr. Wai Ching, it's all yours now. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And whilst I'm here, I would like to say a namaste to the wonderful Jack. Is it Jack Delinda? Yes. Thank yes, you. global namaste. I love your hair. <laughs> I thought before I go, I have to let you know that. I think it looks great. How do you have glossy hair like that? Us ladies, these are the kind of questions we would ask. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but all yours, my dears, all yours. Global Namaste to everyone, to all of my Healing Our Earth audience members out there. Global Namaste to you all. Thank you, Haniji. You know, this is our 129th show for Healing Our Earth. And we've been growing and growing and bringing this message of love and healing and care for the earth for all this time. I'm delighted today to have my friend Jack Dillander here. We're going to talk about alternative medical solutions for a healthier tomorrow. Uh, Jack is a very, very interesting guy because he was running for governor of Colorado. His passion for healthcare, his education is in business government. He's a massage therapist. He does craniosacral therapy, lymphatic drainage, pain neutralization, Qigong, and works with subtle energy. He's been, uh, for 25 years, he's been in public and private practice. And so we're delighted to have him. And I know that in his, his campaign for governor, he was very, very uh, focused upon alternative health. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little about that. <clears throat> Well, um, one of the things that inspired me to run for governor was to, to um, kind of redo or re-overhaul health care. I, I really believe that uh, it's upside down, as probably many other people do as, as well. Um, I guess if I could say anything at all, it would be that, uh, you know, we're, we're all beings of light, beings of God, and, and uh, that needs to be the... Uh, you know, at the forefront of, of how we approach medicine and government as well, which is another reason why I was running for governor. But, um, you know, if you look at it one way, um, I believe it's Hypernicus and Hi Hippocrates, they, they, uh, they were healers first. And then, you know, they went down to the gladiator arenas and learned how to do surgery and diagram the body, came up with instruments, things like that. Um, and, and, that's the origin. And I, obviously, as others do, I, I think that's the direction we need to go. We need to get back there. Um, you know, energy healing medicine. I, uh, for example, I, I was working in a, in a doctor's office. And one time I was, I was uh, doing some energy healing work. And what I had seen inside um, during the session, uh, I came out and I, I told the doctor, I said, based on what I've just seen, you should never prescribe pain medicine for anybody ever again. <laughs> um, and that, that's how much I believe in, in uh, the power of healing, the power of energy work. Um, and, and I really truly believe that's the direction we need to go. As governor, you know, my vision, I guess, was to um, kind of 
within the state overhaul uh, our approach to medicine. Um, and one thing, obviously, as you all know, is uh, more research, the more research, the better. You know, my question that I always had when I was doing massage was, um, it obviously has an effect impact on the brain. And, you know, coming up with uh, dosing, I think, is where we need to focus on. Like, for example, I, uh, the question was, um, you know, how many, how many uh, doses, how many massages or reflexology or even energy sessions uh, per week uh, for an Alzheimer's patient. I had tremendous results with uh, diabetics uh, in one session. But if you, you know, if you enhance that, you know, even two times a day for Alzheimer's patients, um, and, you know, you wonder if there's enough practitioners out there to, to cover something like that with all the, all the patients out there. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that, uh, you know, spirit God always provides the proper amount uh, we just need to, uh, once we start tapping into uh, refocusing our healthcare, I think, you know, a lot of people will, will come forward and um, support going in a different direction. Well, I think the COVID issue has uh, really opened many people's eyes to the benefits of self-care. Essential. Here in Colorado, we're fortunate, especially where we live, that we have plenty of fresh air and space and nature. And it was interesting how the, in the beginning, how they were telling people not to go, even go outside when getting that sunlight, that vitamin D is so important for everyone's health. Kind of goes back to another plague with Nostradamus. He, remember he had people go outside and get into the sunshine that that, that helped uh, during the plague. Yeah, it's a form of alchemy. Yeah, so in Colorado itself, what's going on? What was it that motivated you really to uh, run for governor? Uh, you don't want to know that. Not really. <laughs> um, honestly, I was I was asked. I mean, I, there's a big story behind that, but uh, you know, I go out at night and um, I haven't been doing a lot of practice lately and so uh since i moved to cresto and you know i uh, started doing um, the same kind of work energy work but with the mountains um when i was in missouri people had a hard time believing me about energy work and so uh, i realized that if i go up you know and do the qigong uh, where you put your hands on a on a tree you can start feeling the pulses of the tree and what i realized you know with with electricity you know, the last person who's holding the the uh, the end of the electrical line is going to get most of the shock. So I would have people, um, I, I was doing a little construction work and I'd have these construction workers come over and they'd, they'd say, put your hands lightly on my back. And they would, and they could feel that more of the energy flowing through me, you know, from the tree through me, and they would be shocked and they'd, they'd kind of throw them back. And I'd, I'd say, that's the energy from the tree. <laughs> They were surprised, but anyway, since I've been out here, I, um, you know, kind of uh, adapted it to uh, communi communicating with the mountains and mostly now with the stars. The stars. Last last night I was out and and uh, I don't know what what the purpose was at the moment, but uh, but uh, you know you could feel the energy uh, coming down and it I could just feel it go through my hand and it kind of burned my hand a little bit. But, you know, actually, when I was going through school over 20 years ago, I, I had this idea that one day, I know this may sound crazy to you, but one day we'll be able to, uh, to go out and I'll say, you know, go stare at Venus for, you know, 20 minutes. And you, you'd be amazed once that energy starts flowing through your body, you know, um, it really does heal. It's healing. Uh, there's so many different things in nature that we can use um, that would be beneficial. But we need to acknowledge the source, I, I believe, you know, and, and then uh, start from there and build, build our health care from there. I, I don't believe in allopathic medicine. I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, you know, like Dr. Still said over, uh, well, around 100 years ago, he said, you know, allopathic medicine or Western medicines go in the wrong direction. And he started developing the techniques for cranial sacral. Um, so that's, you know, we know how powerful that is. And, you know, that alone, working with that energy, 
source and that using that technique is uh, extremely beneficial for head injury patients as well as uh, you know all, uh, all kinds of other ailments. Yesterday, we were opening a wellness center here with oxygen therapy right. uh, because we're way up like 9,000 feet. And yesterday we had an open house and I had a friend come in whose nervous system was completely out of whack. She was just trembling. And so we laid her on the table. I did some craniosacral and within a few minutes, uh, she had completely relaxed. And, and so these alternative techniques are so important right now for everyone. And also, as we all know at Healing Earth, and we're always talking about the connection with nature and the connection with the food we eat. It's, it's you have a garden, right? Yes. Um, try and always eat fresh, fresh foods, fruit. Um, you know, the society we live in is a, a Coke and McDonald's uh, society, and we really need to get away from that, obviously. Um, yeah, we're very, well, Honestly, you know, our, our governor, he wasn't so bad. I mean, during the whole COVID, at least he got to the point where he said, because he's libertarian leaning Democrat, you know, he said, well, this is up to you. We're not going to mandate. At a certain point, he's just, this is up to you, you know, and I think that's the way it should be in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so much now, you know, crying out in America of women, my body, my choice. But those same people are like, oh yeah, we'll just take any vaccine, we'll experimental right. thing, we'll just do that. But it's it's a strange world. And here at Healing Our Earth and in our world here in Crestone, we're doing everything we can to really bring this like, joy back and connection to each other and sharing. There's a lot of alternative healers here. And so there's a lot of sharing of knowledge and ways to help people, no matter what their choice in any way, we're here to heal. And, and isn't that the basis of it all where from Hippocrates and way back into Ayurveda and traditional Chinese right. medicine? Well, it's essentially we get back to the truth, the truth of who and what we are. And my experience is, is God lives in all of us. God lives in every being, every tree and radiates out from the mountains and, and the stars. And until we get back to that truth, we're always gonna fail. There's always gonna be failure in our healthcare system as well as our government. Well, first of all, do no harm. It's, it seems that too much, so much of the industry, the healthcare industry has become about greed and about money, not really about healing. And what's so beautiful about, you know, Dr. Gupta and Keith and everybody here today is they really understand the heart of it and the art of it. Namaste, Dr. Gupta. Namaste, so nice meeting you. It's East meeting the West. <laughs> it's a great, yes. great opportunity. And uh, I think it's in the true sense. I was born in India. So that's actually the roots. And I studied the natural Ayurveda, homeopathy, I've done a course, and then took the nature going into the whole medical school, doing post-graduation and becoming a consultant uh, after like 15 years of study. I understand both sides. As you mentioned, Sharon, I appreciate that this is the beauty. If you understand only one side, you are singing your own praises because you have never seen the other world. That's the beauty that you understand and tolerate and respect each other. And there, that becomes a toolbox, a choice. This is best here. This is best here. And let the person using make a choice because personality is different. Body is different. The time is different. And we should give a choice. If you tell a person who has cut the leg and is bleeding on the road after road traffic accident that I'm going to pray for you and you die here, that's not going to be very helpful for that person. So it's a time and place for everything. And the idea is to integrate, bring the best, bring the best from everything. Everything is so good. It's so powerful. And that's why I love bring the best in everything and put like a compact system. This is the best. And then you offer 
you have served the purpose for which the God has sent you on this earth. I agree with you completely. You know, I was a professional dancer and many of you know, disciple of Sitara Devi, my Guruji, and, and danced for many, many eight hours a day for many, many years. So also genetically, you know, both my parents had had hip replacements. And if it hadn't been for hip replacements, I'd probably be in a wheelchair now. So, but the thing is, what I did was I really spent so much time also doing alternative practices and medicine while I was going through that. And I remember being in the hospital, I said, okay, I'm going in and, and I feel that all of the nurses there are there to help me. And they're like, they were like angels. I thought that they were, they had, we have some angelic uh, conference coming up we're going to talk about, uh, but it's really about your attitude. And I think these days you're, you're right. We need to bring the best of all these different traditions together. And I think that's really the purpose of healing our earth. And thank you, Neil Kumar, for actually bringing us all together. We're, we're just thrilled. So, Wai Ching. Yes, I'm here. Today, would Fully you present. like? <laughs> yes. Namaste. And, you know, after 30 years of being in integrative medicine in, in different countries, I definitely uh, sense, feel, embody the, the best of both worlds. You know, I too agree that, that allopathic medicine has its place. But um, it, it's now coming back to balance because, you know, the traditional systems are 5,000 years old and since time immemorial. And when we first knew our body, when we first took our first breath, and we all come from the stars, you know, as uh, Jack is saying also. And so, but now we have this beauty of uh, scientific evidence. And I say beauty because it's an exploration. We, it's an exploration in our evolution as humanity, isn't it? that we are actually balancing all of that. And I'm excited for the future technologies. I'm super excited because they are so effective and cutting through and being a Qigong teacher and, and healer, I'm actually very grateful for a lot of technologies that can help my clients and patients around the world without me. I am so grateful for that. And, yeah. and with the new technologies, you know, I'm always wearing this to protect myself from the radiation. And, and, and I've not met a single Qigong teacher who can actually overcome the high frequency 5G, 4G radiation from the computer and for our telephones. I have not met one. Okay, so let's be humble and say we can integrate what what is uh, coming and this is a beauty this is so beautiful and sometimes unfortunately we have to go into the descent of the soul to show what is dark what doesn't work you know both on a healthcare system as well as on a governmental system i'm not political but i'm finally like going into the shall i say the eco psycho spiritual political arena that we all have to and this is the holistic approach so I'm excited to learn more about Jack and see what you're doing to cut through into the portals of politics. And what would you do or doing as governor of Colorado? And you have great hair to go with it. So that would be, <laughs> that shows, wait a minute, that shows health, right? So uh, what would you do? What would you do? What have you done? And uh, I, I'm really rooting for politicians who are holistically feeling so please give us your vision well i think you know right now we're we're not in the well coming from the belief system of uh, more of an integrative approach I, I don't think the majority of people are um on this page i think most people are still with allopathic medicine and, and you know um i i do agree that you know allopathic medicine is important and that's you know that's what for Hippernicus and Hippocrates discovered you can't you can't uh, pray over a, a, an arm that's been torn off by a lion, um, but uh, I think we need to increase research um, and and 
I think the another thing is we we need to really if if I could wave a magic wand and I, I'm going to try tonight with the uh, full moon, literally. Uh, anybody who wants to participate, I'm going to I'm going to try and do a, a ceremony during the um, during the eclipse and uh, and see if I can radiate energy out to people from the moon. You know, it sounds crazy, but I I think I can do it. Um, but but just changing the the mindset of people, I think, is going to be key. Um, you know, to accepting who we are. And then, and then uh, you can grow from there. But, but I, I definitely think, uh, you know, people, people really value research and they value numbers. So I think we need to increase uh, research. Um, you know, like I said, uh, find out how many, you know, how many uh, massages, find, find out the dosing for somebody with Alzheimer's or, or diabetes or, or something else. Um, but, you know, and I think once we get a little bit more accepting of these ideas um, and maybe trade, um, you know, or maybe more open with our techniques and things like that, I think we can, I, I, we're coming at it from such a limited view at the moment. I think we're, we're, we're kind of we're kind of handicapped. Um, you, you know, some of the things um, that, that you guys were talking about as far as like knees and ankles and stuff like that, you know, um, the result of say Sharon's hips um, could have been uh, because somebody didn't see it in a different way and instead opted for, you know, this, this final, final uh, mission that she did. And I think, uh, you know, maybe if we, if we, are more understanding and accepting that that uh, uh, maybe we can discover some of these things. I, I think we're really at the beginning of understanding of different techniques. You know, like Dr. Stephen Kaufman, the the pain neutralization technique that I do uh, was developed by him. He he found five different mechanisms to turn off pain. I mean, I don't see a lot of Stephen Kaufman out there, uh, but these are physical uh, physical um, techniques that you can do. Uh, that, that'll change everything. For, for example, he's got a hyper hypertension protocol. Um, you know, you do, you do three different things or four different things. It takes about 10 minutes and you can drop somebody's, um, hype, you know, hypertension, uh, sometimes permanently. Uh, whereas, you know, I had a nurse come or not a nurse. It was a, a lady that was uh, in med school. She came into my office one time and she and I had this actually had this conversation and she said, it's really funny they were having this conversation. I said, why is that? And she said, well, I just came from one of my classes and the doctor said, if you ever put me on um, hypertension medicine, you may as well just shoot me in the head. It's that, it's that destructive to the body. Um, and so here, here's a physical technique that, that takes five minutes, 10 minutes um, that can alleviate something permanently as opposed to going and taking a pill from an uh, you know, from, from a doctor. So it's our understanding of, of, of what we're doing and how the body actually works is going to be a key, you know, trying to get people to, to see differently and being responsible for their own healthcare. That alone is huge. I mean, I, you know, I don't know, you know, I always used to say that if I come, if somebody comes into my office and, you know, I, I help them um, and they turn around and drink a bottle of cyanide, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, Literally, and I, you know, and I can't control that. So they've got to, they've got to be able to, you know, take responsibility. And, you know, and I think that if, if we really could change the mindset of people, you know, I think people will really take a valued interest in their own healthcare more, get away from Coke and McDonald's. Um, but, but I think it's a, it's, it's how we see the world at, at the moment. Um, and it seems like they, you know, the Coke McDonald's idea has the upper hand at the moment, the, the popular hand, but but you know, I think if we can get people in to see the value and see results, um, I think that'll change minds, change you know, change the way we see things in our approach. Um, I do I want to mention. And maybe you could um, stay on and see Dr. C.J. Rhodes. Uh, C.J. will be speaking, and uh, she's very evidence-based and based on research and all on the principles of Qigong and the energy work and you know with the transmission. And we know that there are many incidences of miracles, milagros, in energy healing, right? And so we we are definitely integrating that into this uh, wonderful global integrated uh, health forum. And uh, we, we definitely want to 
bring in the pol political aspect. And then we also have Stephanie Lodge here, who is a founder of the Angelic Summit. And so, you know, we can look at the esoteric spectrum, right, of, uh, of healing and how, how it can be integrated. And, you know, it will speak to different people in different ways, in our hearts, in our resonance. So we have uh, Stephanie. Hi. 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 Namaste to you. Global Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you for having me. So honored to be here. Right. Welcome. And, you know, I could read out what you do, but uh, certainly you could just tell us first of this angelic summit. Thank you for inviting me in too, because, you know, yeah. I like the angelic work. <laughs> and, uh, so if I may just introduce Stephanie here, and she considers herself a channel for the Celestial Councils of Light over 15 years. So she has led the shift from seeing angels solely as beings outside of us to embodying their frequency as our own divine nature. So this goes back to what you're saying, um, Jack, as well, and everybody else who's been saying, and Dr. Rajiv as well, our own angelic nature. So there are different practices like angelic light streaming, diamond light language, uh, which we share actually the light languages. This is the gift that we were given, uh, Stephanie and I. And then there are all the different healing methods that she brings in and she will speak about that. And uh, she has founded the angelic, the angelhood.com. Mm -hmm. So you got that, the angelhood.com and also the founder of Angelic Academy. And she's also the producer of Angelic Summit, which is coming up. It's um, the same time as a Better Way. So, you know, you can just teleport and, and uh, just tune into the different platforms. And she has also education in film production, Sharon Rose. And so she enjoys creating these events for group collaboration. Uh, collabor Collaboration. Yes. <laughs> so, so tell us more about the Angelic Summit and what was your impetus and what was your inspiration yeah. by divine grace to do this? Absolutely. Thank you for having me again. Um, so Angelic Summit was actually born in 2020. Well, 2019, I got the impetus to bring it forward in 2020, right before um, COVID hit, or what I affectionately call the crown of thorns. Um, and I would say that it was right on time, because essentially what we did was we brought in many speakers to launch the summit. It was the first summit of its kind, where we were really seeing Angelic as essentially interfacing with the idea of being quantum. Right. So less about the wings and the halos and the mystical and mythical as much as what does that represent archetypally as elements of us, like who we are, what we can tap into consciously and so forth. So I brought about 23, 24 speakers from around the world. Um, we laid kind of this beautiful foundation. And then I took a year off to do a different Magdalene Mastery Summit. And then this year I'm bringing it back in collaboration with Heal.Art because they approached me to do an angel event. I said, well, what better thing to do than just to revive what I already have and we'll just have you partner in. So that's what we're doing. And we're doing it a bit shorter and smaller because the first one was about a whole week, which was really intense. So I said, I'm not quite up for that, but let's do a three day you know, version. And Monday, May 20th, we open with some beautiful music. We'll be sharing about you know, um, what the summit is really about, which the theme for this one is the guardians of light united for peace, because obviously we have a lot of polarization on the planet in a myriad of ways. And when we come into unity consciousness and we alchemize together as a group, we really create an anchor of light, in my opinion, on the planet that then, if you know about cellular entrainment, right, when energy matches energy, that whole idea of entrainment will come in and, and give a boost of light into the planet for everyone to feel, whether they know it's happening or not. But the more guardians we co have come in, more teachers like yourself, Amelia, and others, and more affiliates that come in and just bring in their legions, right, it's kind of just gathering the tribes. That's what it's serving to do. Um, so I'm excited about that. And we're going to have some wonderful speakers from all around the world, including yourself and uh, about $300 worth of bonuses for people who want to be one of our VIP angels, which means 
you'll be in the summit with us, right? You'll get to engage with us. You'll chat with everybody. There'll be lounges for people to mix and mingle. Um, it'll be really fun. And I'm excited to be bringing that extra element in with airmeet.com. And yeah, that's a little bit of an, an kind of overview. Did um, you want to ask any questions or anything else for the listeners yeah, here? Certainly. I, I'll put the link there, you know, for mm -hmm. to get into the, the summit. And what I'm really interested in is like what, how I've been guided to bring ancient wisdom, right? The old traditional divine ways of, of healing in Qigong, let's say, to quantum science and i just love the title of your work right and so what we're going to do is if you can just speak a little bit about that is to speak about the dna genome of our angelic presence. the angelic genome yeah yes. part of my work really works with these ancient keys um that honestly predate pretty much anything written, but I think they were captured within the time frame when Kabbalah came in. But honestly, one of my mentors um, is the Magdalene Yeshua consciousness. And it was very clear. They said, leave all of the dogma out of it. It's go straight to the frequency. It is the faith that is your frequency that will move you through. And these frequencies, I see them as keys, unlock us from what you might call the 3D matrix, as people might call it, right? The, the consciousness of money is God and we have to hustle to survive and all of this survival mode, right? That puts us in the lower base chakra systems, right? And it's just this burnout happens after a while. And, you know, with, you know, as far as adrenal fatigue and all the things that can happen from that. So when we start to know that we are so supported from these other vibrations of frequency energy that are massively charged and we are able to integrate them into our bodies and we're able to activate our own dna to be fortified by them um, i actually led an entire diamond dream alchemy i called it but it was basically we were dreaming awake new reality using these keys we we're working all over the world with different people to anchor light and activating these keys in such a way that they served as antidotes honestly to what came as COVID and even the vaccines, if you will. So all of that was really powerful because wherever the consciousness was, I look at it as consciousness is queen or king, right? Consciousness is what's creating all of this. So to me, whatever trappings we get caught into the mud of the mind will lower all the vibration and that's gonna lower your immune system and everything else. So for me, the angelic genome is really powerful because that is where we really claim our authority as our source created us and our creator, right? However you want to label it. And that is where we can kind of activate into our field how we would like our experience to go. And it's so it's 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 it gets into layers, but I would say from a health standpoint, I really look at light, I look at frequency and vibration, I look at um, moving certain light streams into the body specifically and knowing through the frequency of faith, but even more so it's a knowing, a gnosis that says my word is law. And what I speak into form happens. And when we take accountability for that, we stop saying, oh, I have a headache. Oh, I have pain. Oh, I don't feel good. You know, we stop saying those kind of things, right? Yes. And so that's really part of it too. It's a mind, spirit, body, emotion, all of it, right? And we have to look at, as all of you talk about, the holistic stat status of that. So that's what I, I work with mostly is the consciousness and the frequencies of these quantum angelic vibrations that we're all connected to. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And so yourself in your work, um, you know, this is like the esoteric part, like we more and more people are awakening and this time of the, the lockdown, which I call cocooning, actually, I think it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. COVID cocooning, where a lot of people are awakening to their divine nature because they have no choice. Yes, yeah. yeah, sometimes we are pushed to it and sometimes it's pain, right? When yeah. people own their pain, oh, my knee pain, oh, my back pain. And so they have to own their pain to get over it. And there are many choices where people can go through and that's what we're offering here in, in integrated yeah. uh, health forum is choices. You know, Absolutely. choose the one that you resonate, resonate with best, you know, whether it's just 
going to the divine, going to an institution or just directly to the stars of our, our origins, or we want to take a, a herbal preparation, a concoction, a decoction, or use crystals or sonic healing for 32 hertz, whichever it is, we are offering people choices. So in, yes, please. Go no, ahead. I was just gonna say to me, everything starts as consciousness is light, right? And, and it informs the stars, it informs our crystals, it informs our plants. And, and what I've been finding in my work, and we'll talk about this more in the summit, we get into a little bit more of the mysteries of things, everything's shifting. The entire galaxy is elevating, ascending, if you will. The entire system is ascending. So, so are the crystals, they're shifting. So are the plants, they're shifting. So when we acknowledge that, and we acknowledge how that reflects in us and how we engage with it, um, it's really beautiful because we have to go to the intuitive now. I tell my clients all the time, if you think you're going to go through logic and reasoning to get through what this current vortex energy is right now, right, sometimes, and even in the cocoon, you know, if you're just going to mentalize, no, there has to be a heart on board. There has to be an intuitive nature now. That's the only thing you can really discern and frequency never lies. So that's how I'm seeing us shifting and why we had that kind of quarantine time and, and it might come and go. I'm not going to say that's going to be happening, but it will be required if people don't get it, right? If they're not getting the pinprick, they're not getting the little hammer, the sledgehammer, the wrecking ball comes. I mean, that's the reality. Like we're stubborn as humans sometimes. So we sometimes need these catalysts the that are massive, right? To move us. That's what I feel is happening, right? We need that sometimes. And I do agree with you. I call it acknowledging the pain in the body. Acknowledge, hi, pain, what's going on? How, how, what do you need to tell me? You know? And if it's something painful, like I put these patches, they're called halo patches, I call them. And I'll put that on because there's something going on maybe. So I acknowledge what my body's telling me as an instrument. I listen. And then I take action in whatever ways and tools that I need to do, you know? And sometimes I need a little support, you know? And and that's okay. You know, we can do all the spiritual, but sometimes there's a physical factor that does help. And why not? I'm not saying throw that out. I'm saying use it. So I agree with you for sure. Yeah. We're spirit into matter, you know, we, we have physical forms as well. So we have to honor all of it. It's so exciting, the new medicine that we are creating, isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. And what have you done in personally, let's say in any integration into the allopathic Western system? Have you done any work like that? You know, my, my work is really <clears throat> how I see it right now is really about getting the DNA supported. And I do that with DNA customized <clears throat> nutrition out of these States. It's only available in the States really right now. And the halo patches, it's patchyhalo.com for those interested, but the, the with those patches, they're amazing quantum. Yeah. Uh, that some of them is transdermal, some not, you know, this and is not I, I work with na nature's frequencies too. Like and this protects me, my thyroid. Yeah. I've used the things like that too. I, I, I have tools. Patches. <laughs> That's tools too. I took them, anyways, but um, yeah, the patch is really interesting because they're not transdermal. What they do is they work with the the photonic energy of your body and far, the infrared activation activates them. This one ex, um, is actually good for kind of creating a Faraday cage similar to what you mm -hmm. wear on your body for EMF. This creates it in your cells, so they communicate into the cells. There's about 130 patents on these. They've been around for a long time, but for me, what I do is I combine them with things. So I don't just do one thing. I'm like, okay, we have this, we have this, you know, I kind of create a holistic, you know, mechanism. And what I like about these is they activate your stem cells. And so we have trillions of stem cells, but they just kind of don't really get activated. You need to turn them on. So it's like firemen sitting there going, where's the fire? And you have to ring the bell, right? Yeah. Um, but I also work with supplements that lengthen telomeres of our DNA. And to be honest, with everything going on right now um, in the world, I feel the DNA is kind of the front lines and mm -hmm. that needs the most fortification. So that's where I focus my attention and I do work on it spiritually. So um, I work with a lot of different frequencies and energies and I, and I've done Reiki and all the, that, but to be honest with you, I've kind of moved into my own lane of what I do. And I just, I just do energy. <laughs> That's the best way to say likewise, it. likewise, me too, moving into your own system. And I, I believe that everybody has to find their own way. Mm -hmm. And then that's why there's a rise in the coaching, yeah. um, this industry, because people are 
offering their personal their personal experiences which is you know the most valuable and then people who resonate with them will just come into the field the morphogenetic field and so we all have a part to play in this Absolutely. you know yeah so we will just resonate with the right practitioner for us at the right time so everything is really you know what i want to say really quick what's really exciting they're just i'm like sorry because when the yeah. stream starts coming yes, um, let it come but gently yeah i want to tell everybody what i love about what you're doing here is collaborative right yeah. it's going to be about collaboratives and i'm designing something through angelic academy like a little bit of a um uh, let's call it an experiment with a, a couple girlfriends um and practitioners and we're going to be doing multiple kind of triangulation i guess like almost like a triple goddess triangulation of of working with somebody and accelerating them through whatever they're going through. Um, and I'm gonna try it out and see how it works and then possibly bring on other practitioners. But the point is, I believe we must now help each other. There's been so much competition, even in the spiritual space, the, the esoteric and as well as even in the integrative health space, there's always a sense of like competition. And I think what I'm feeling and why I created the summit was to bring in the unity consciousness more that we're helping each other. There's plenty for everybody. There's millions of people who need practitioners like us. There's plenty. And, and I feel it's going to be about the frequency and vibration of alignment. You come together with the right person at the right time for the right period of time. And you might then graduate to a different person or whatever, and trusting that all is going to be supported. When we have that consciousness, then the scarcity goes out. And when the scarcity goes out, we don't have static. We don't have this, this underlying energy that just feels not so great, right? And um, the angelhood.com was a social network I created to start that process, right? And then the angelic summit, of course, is kind of just an offspring of that, right, as well, because it's when we gather together, you know, and, and talk and engage. But the angelhood lives on all year. So you're welcome, everyone, to join us and just bring your light, bring what you do, you know, share your teachings. And, and anyway, just wanted to make sure we get that in there. I'm all about collaboration. It's so important. Yes. Yes. Very important now, you know, because we're weaving the whole tapestry of the new matrix of light, all of us that we're doing mm -hmm. that. And, uh, you know, this uh, triangulation work I've been doing since 1990, when I had this angelic awakening, Amalia is actually my angelic name that came through. And so um, this this works, we know that when we send, we emanate these thought forms into the field. And this has been, you know, scientifically, you know, uh, research as well and tabulated in let's say the heart math institute you know we know that it works and so those of us who are aware we're conscious of what we think and what we say and how we feel that we can quickly move through it and once we are aware of the frequency uh, technologies and how we can do it oh it's not so difficult you know we just easily easily can do it whether with the help of technologies or techniques biohacking i call it what we know inside and so we don't need any more external tools but with external tools it could be faster so dr rajiv do you have a comment or question for us <laughs> and stephanie and all the way to the soul spectrum i think it's very interesting to hear and i completely um, agree that there is a mind body and soul connection and um living in UK for 30, 40 years now, and having born in India where whole practice of prayer and the healing is so powerful, I know that it works. My yeah. mom, when I was a little kid, used to pray and it worked. She herself had some problem with her legs and swelling, and she had a Vedya, which is Ayurveda doctor, who come and put... Um, some special leaves and then crush the leaves and give her to, to drink. She got better. So each system work. And that's the beauty that when you have a focused thinking, healing happens because body has a natural way to heal. That's how God has made us. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, we can, we can fully self heal if we have the belief has to be there. Of course, that's a big part of it. But then the body will reflect all, you know, that we're thinking and consciously aware of and emotionally processing. And 
One of the things I want to share with people, which is a really important message, is if you're accessing, let's say somebody's energetically aware, I call that versus sensitive, because sensitive kind of lends itself to vulnerability. And I don't believe anyone's a victim or vulnerable in that way energetically, right? We're very powerful, actually. But when we go to grief a lot, when people access, let's say grief, that's a really easy emotion and they're processing through grief. And that's kind of covering up some of the pain, right? The pain that they've gone through. And then that's sometimes covering up the fear and the fear is actually of their power sometimes, or the fear can be of their anger, their rage that's inside because of things that have happened to them or they're witnessing and they can't handle what they're seeing in the world. Digestion, most of the digestive issues we have is people literally can't stomach what they're Mm -hmm. witnessing. It's like they can't digest it. They can't even process some of the things that they're dealing with. So I feel when we go direct to the anger and we get the issues out of the tissues, we get the stuff out that's really hardcore and we let it rip, we let it out, go in your car, go somewhere private, you know, where you can just get it out, right? It actually, it's almost like it blows out the other energy that's holding you hostage to yourself. It's like you're creating your own quarantine within, you're creating your own prison system when you're just bound to this anger. So I always say, really dive in and go, wait, you know, am I angry about that? Get real about it and release it out. And then you'll see all these other things kind of just dissipate because you allowed that to happen. Because what I'm going to say is you can't access your true power. If you have this interrupter called anger, the true power, what I would call source collected power. There's two things you require to get that humble heart, which a lot of you have, I feel that, but also the release of any hidden anger inside. It could be something from childhood. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, there's no judgment about it. It's just a frequency energy. That's like, mm, you know, holding it. So I would just want to offer that there's somebody in the room. The angels tell me always like what to speak about on demand. So there's someone in the room that needs to hear this. So I'm sharing that so that, you know, you have full permission to go out and just you know, hit the pillows, do whatever you got to do to give the body the permission to let it go. Because we'll do all the mental and process and process and process and process, but it's the body mechanism, the instrument that still holds the memory and it needs to be released out of the body. So I wanted to offer that. Thank you. Yes, because I remember in old times, I I think um, that there was a surgeon who would go and do a prayer before doing the surgery because it's all working together. There's a healing power outside and the God actually give me power to do this operation so as to become successful. And that is what I have seen as the conglomeration and the collaboration work together to make, because we, instead of having an ego, leave that ego, what can you do to give the best benefit to the patient we are treating or the client or the person? Mm-hmm. And well being of the other person is more important than us. So bring everything together to do the best. So on a solution, thank you. Yes, yes Dr. Hey. Raji, you know, it's so beautiful that um, we have true physicians now who are also metaphysicians <laughs> who understand both. Yeah, yes. Amazing. And Deepak thank you. Chopra, I hear, has done exactly the same. He's gone here being endocrine laws has gone back to India, back to roots, cutting back. So we all as a human being, and I always say, I teach the medical students and the postgraduate doctors that first we are human being, mm. then we are doctor, and then we are whatever consultant or whatever. If we keep mm. connected to the roots, then we will have a bigger base. If yes. We will really have that. And, and, here, and uh... Yes, and maybe trauma healing, you know, there's no way that we can just heal with just a machine. We have to heal through our hearts and and our lovingness, our compassion, our humanity in this. And so that that's the healing. And so, Sarah, would you like to chime in and uh, ask a question or comment? We hope to see you on the Angelic Summit as well. Yeah, thank you, um, Stephanie. That was really, really lovely to hear you speak. Um, mm-hmm. I think so many of us are on the same wavelength on this call right now. Um, and it is an honor to hear hear from, from all of you. Um, I really connect with the fact that, you know, everything is about source. 
uh, and we are all empowered and we're all connected and one with our higher soul and the divine source. And we're all here to, to help humanity. You know, we all have a purpose. Um, and I think it's just recognizing that and working together to that common goal. So I, 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 just, uh, I just love hearing from all the different people that, that you know, have all these special connections with 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 the higher the higher powers if you like you know i i just do pranic healing but i think you know i, I you know I, I really respect all the work that everybody here does and you know to have the kind of connections that you have and the gifts that you have and to share those to help you know the world and the earth i think is is amazing so you know thank you for sharing Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, thank you for your heart share in that, that space. And I just want to say your pranic healing is exceptional. So when you say I just do it, just know that's exceptional. Mm -hmm. And that's more than enough. And you're doing so much. And the angels just want me to let you know that, you know, just please honor mm -hmm. all that you're doing. It's amazing that you put your whole intention and intention in that um, mm -hmm. really powerful energy. So thank you for your work. Uh, thank you. Well, they say intention, energy goes where your intention goes. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. Oh, here it is, the, the angelic summit. I'll, I'll find the link and then I'll post it. Sharon, yeah. do you have a question? Sharon or Keith? Keith was on for a little bit. I would, like, I would like to speak a little about anger. Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've emotional studying the emotional body has been, uh, if you know, astrology, I've moon Pluto conjunct in Leo. So <laughs> ancient traditions and emotions have been uh, part of my life. So uh, we're about to transition into talking about Qigong and the world Congress, but I'd like to say that there are some wonderful practices in Qigong such as the six healing sounds that really help release the, the negative emotions from the organs and from the whole being. So the six healing sounds is one of them. And so it'd be the liver that holds the anger. And so someday maybe I can come on and just teach that, that uh, the different sounds, which would be wonderful because it, I found the, this incredibly beneficial. Also in the Tibetan tradition, anger is the, the uh, negative emotion. But if you ride that and if you recognize the anger coming in and feel it, because it gives you tremendous energy, if you recognize it instead of like uh, screaming at someone, feel that energy and know that it gives you great clarity. And so with that clarity, you can be very insightful about what the cause is and how to address it. Beautiful. Love it. Hi, Jay. Yeah, hi. I actually think it's one of the reasons why um, the medical community isn't, ex they should be accepting of the concept that anger uh, people who are angry at things that impacts their health. I know that in one of my issues, you know, I've, and I'll talk about this later when I talk, what is um, the chronic pain that I had, it took me years to realize that my anger was keeping my pain mm -hmm. getting worse. It, it, it was absolutely getting worse because of my anger. And I had to let go of all the anger before the pain started to dissipate. So that I think it's key, absolutely key. It's not, it's not just a sideways thing. And I think we can prove that in research. So that's my whole thing. Oh, excellent, CJ, because you know how focused you are on research. And this is really so important. And you know, we've just gone on to like psychosomatic healing. So we're just getting there now to understanding this in the integrative medicine aspect of things, right? And so may I invite Keith now to come on and comment? You're on, Keith. Okay. Well, I'm not sure I can compete with all the knowledgeable people that you are. 
And I think it's interesting that I listened to Stephanie, and I'm afraid that you and I are on the same planet, but not on the same wavelength. Um, I have explained to my colleagues in Healing Our Earth that I'm a former shipyard apprentice. I'm used to looking at mechanical things. And I, I sorry, Sharon, this is identifying with you, is that, yes, you need a hip replacement, but you've overcome it. I've had one knee replacement. I have another coming up. And I have all sorts of physical problems, which up until a heart attack in 1997 was all about stress. And for those of us in management, we're very interested in how to get the next task finished. And is it going to be within budget? And is it going to be successful? And can we sell it? Now, I'm amazed at the number of people. And Jack, um, I would love a conversation you, with you at 9,000 feet because I'd be getting my breath back and you would be saying, hug the tree, Keith, for goodness sake, slow down. <laughs> okay. But I think that the message I want to get across is, Stephanie, you use one word, which has already come up on the text, collaboration. Rajiv and I are working incredibly closely with the Tai Chi and Qigong Union for Great Britain and how we work together with Healing Our Earth. That is collaboration. I have spoken some time ago to this wonderful person, CJ Rhodes, and I'm going to get off of here in a moment because she has to be away in a few minutes. But the collaboration I have is with about 10 or 15 organizations in the UK, sorry, in the US. And I don't know which one to choose. And I'm going to be asking that wonderful lady called CJ Rhodes, what can you tell me about these organizations and who are going to follow it? Yeah. The only point I will say at the moment is that last, on the fourth of this month, the professional standards for approved. Tai Chi and Qigong health and well-being instructors has been improved, approved. And we were building on that and with working with yoga experts. I'm absolutely delighted that as a practical person, I am able to speak with you guys and learn so much. But at my age, I'm looking at succession management. And who is at least 10 years younger than me or younger? How are you going to meet these aims and visions? That's all I have to say at the moment. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Keith. And so this is a perfect time to introduce CJ and to thank Stephanie for bringing in a whole different frequency here. And I will put the link in once I find it. So with CJ, yes, here's Angelic Summit, and I will put the direct link there that will take you there in a minute and thank you for um, having me everybody and i just want to say to keith i honor you because as much as there's the the electricity types there's the grounding wires right there's the grounding agents and we need them all we're all needed for this so i honor everybody here and your vibration and keith i would say the group that you should go with i mean to give you my advice from my heart to yours is just the one that brings you the greatest joy the people you resonate with the people that bring you feel make you feel good to be around you know and have fun and that's really the most important thing when we're doing this work is not to get too serious but like have fun with it because that's going to be what's magnetic that's what's going to bring people to come in to whatever container you're building so i invite all of you to be in an angelic summit thank you so much for having me emily i have to go and get more people prepared so i love you all and i'll, I'll come back another time and and hang out longer <laughs> when yes, i have time part of the family now isn't she Aww. dr rajiv yes and thank you so much and then thank yes you. stay on if you can and stay in touch all right bye love right and so now we have CJ, affectionately known as CJ, but she's a real go-getter and she's highly sought after speaker and author, consultant on healthcare, leadership, 
business strategy and technology topics. So she's been studying Tai Chi and Qigong for more than 30 years and is the Managing Director of Health, Prosperity and Leadership, HPL Institute, an umbrella organization with over 30 programs and partners devoted to helping develop um, International Medical Tai Chi Association uh, and the symposium. Wait a minute. She's involved in uh, with HPL and World Tai Chi and Qigong Day Symposium for Integrative Health, Tai Chi and Qigong, the International Medical Tai Chi and Qigong Association, and the World Congress on Qigong, Tai Chi, TCM, and Natural Healing. And CJ is also a professor in the College of Business at Kutztown University an avid integrative healthcare researcher and the author of 10 books and over 250 articles. She has been honored with dozens of awards, including 21st World Congress Leadership Award, Tai Chi Chuan Promoter of the Year, Top Faculty Researcher of the Year, and Martial Arts Promoter of the Year. She was admitted to the Hall of Fame by the Fellowship of the United Martial Artists and is a national gold medalist for women's push hands. So, you can see that power comes in little packages too, right, CJ? <laughs> yes, indeed. And I'm, you can't tell, of course, but I'm pretty short too. So, yeah. um, <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> um, so I am here um, helping Effie Chow, Dr. Dame Effie, Dr. Dr. Dame Effie Chow, or Dame Dr. Effie Chow, I'm not real sure, um, <laughs> with the 22nd Con World Congress on Qigong Tai Chi traditional Chinese medicine and natural healing, which is a mouthful. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a wonderful event that's gonna happen in September. We are, however, just at the very, very beginning of the planning. So the website isn't even up yet. There's you know, lots of, we have a logo, great logo, but uh, we're, we're still doing all the planning for the rest of it. So, uh, uh, but it's, it's gonna be a wonderful event because everything that Effie's involved in is, is a wonderful event. Um, I want to I want to start by talking a little bit about um, the the you know you've got these different worlds and one of the worlds that we have is this fabulous integrative healthcare world um, with lots and lots of different activities Tai Chi Qigong and Reiki and and the power of prayer and and, and angelic um, missions and just a ton of absolutely fabulous stuff. Um, and then we have the real world, the people who don't know anything about that world, um, who just are in pain and need something. Uh, and uh, Jack Dillinger had, Dillinger had mentioned earlier um, that he believes pain medication should not be given to anyone at any time for any reason. And I am 100% in agreement with that. Um, not because of the reasons you might think. People might think, well, it's because you're going to get addicted to it. No, no, no. It's because it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, opioid pain medications specifically don't work. They have a, the number one side effect of those medications is something called hyperaphasia. Everybody who takes opioids gets hyperaphasia. Um, and what that is, is increased pain. So yeah, it, it temp, temp, temps it down temporarily, but it doesn't get rid of it. Uh, it just delays your feeling of it. And then when you actually feel it, you feel more pain. So that's why you have to take more medication. Um, people think it's your brain adjusting to the amount, but no, it's your body actually producing more pain because of the changes in your brain. Um, so why do I start with this little thing is because it, it has to do with my personal passion, my personal, this is all my personal passion. And why? Because in 2002, I was in a terrible car accident and was left with chronic back and neck pain. Um, and modern, modern Western medicine had one answer for me, opioids, and I took them for nearly a year. Um, and it, it was, it, you know, it sure it took away the pain, but it also took away everything else, my ambition, it took away my ability to think straight, it took away my life, basically. And so it wasn't until I figured out I got to get off these things for me to be able to live my life again, that um, I, I needed to find a solution. And since I'd been to every single doctor in the world in, in my area, I knew that that didn't have any answer for me. But because I'd been doing Tai Chi for fun for 10 years, I knew a lot of people who were in this world because Tai Chi is one of those integrative health practices. 
Um, and so I started on this lifelong journey of figuring out how to get rid of my chronic pain. And I have succeeded. And yes, integrative healthcare works. It works for real, which is when I started my lifelong journey to figure out why. See, I'm a scientist. I'm not willing to believe that uh, it's, you know, it, that, that it's just in the air or it's God's will or it's karma or it's the spirit or it's the angels or whatever. I, I, I understand people who believe that. And I also understand it's really hard to figure out why it's working. So, and there's no reason to figure out why it's working because it works. So, you know, that's all we need to know, but that's not all I needed to know. I needed to know why, why did it work? Why is it that when I did these things, it took away my pain. Why? So I, I need to know. Now, Dr. Laurie had mentioned how easily corruptible pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical random control trials are. And that that is like a, a part and parcel to the fact that money is involved in pharmaceuticals and surgical devices. And we're not talking a little bit of money. We're talking billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. And it is really, really hard to get any other path into the mindset of anyone because of all of that billions of dollars being made from pharmaceuticals and surgical devices. Um, but I knew that there had to be a way. So one of the things I did was develop a random control trial protocol for integrative health practices, because I believe that is absolutely necessary in order to um, get acceptance. Uh, yeah, I know that, that the pharmaceutical trials could be corrupted and that's a big part of it, but the other big part of it is nobody's gonna accept it if it's not random. And even though that may not be fair, um, you know, pragmatic controlled trials are often just as, as effective as random controlled trials, but the fact is modern medical doctors are not gonna accept it, but that doesn't mean we can't do random controlled trials. So that's why I developed the, the protocol. But here's the problem. In order to utilize it, we need money, lots and lots of money. Uh, and unfortunately, the integrative healthcare world is still way too fragmented to come together to get the kind of research that we need to demonstrate the efficacy and the efficiency of health practices. That's why events like this are so utterly important. The collaborative nature of this event and the 22nd World Congress and the um, International Medical Tai Chi and Qigong Association and all of these wonderful um, organizations, their ability to come together in order to move, start rowing in the same direction <laughs> and perhaps find a way to raise the funds in order to do the random control trials in order to convince the world that integrative healthcare isn't just quackery and it, it, that it isn't pseudoscience, that it's real. And yeah, we can actually explain why sitting there and breathing deeply and thinking about the universe or thinking about God or praying, why does that work? It does work why we can explain that. We just haven't had the control trials to do so. Now I'm working on a series of economic studies that's gonna show that um, integrative health practices, if integrated into the standard of care, would in the long run save us money, again, billions and billions of dollars. Now, the problem is again, those pharmaceutical companies and surgical device companies, they're not gonna be interested in any science that says that integrative healthcare is helpful because that cuts into their profits. And so I know that it's gonna be trash and that I have to fight the politicians and the medical doctors and it's gonna to be tough, but I, you know, I like a challenge. So I'm gonna to continue to try. Um, it, it is in their best interest to present us all as, as crazy as quackery, as pseudoscience. And it's my goal in life to prove that that's not true, that we are scientists and that indeed 
we can prove that integrative health care can help people, that it often in many cases is more effective and efficient than pharmaceuticals or surgical device or surgery, and that we just need to know when, which one is best to use. Because, you know, there are many things that for which integrative healthcare is not appropriate. And surgical devices and pharmaceuticals are really needed for those things. Or the key is to find out which one is which. Now, um, the fact is that the medical community currently dismisses any evidence or support we have. Like Keith Sharp said that the difficulty is getting the NIH and the insurance companies and the physicians to look at the insurance. But I had to look at the evidence, but one of the problems is that the evidence isn't strong enough yet because we don't have enough of that research. So that's why I wanna, I wanna encourage all of that research to, to happen. We know that the, the reductionist practices of the modern medical Western world um, causes some people like my friend, Roger Yonka to completely dismiss the medical world. He, he doesn't even like the word medicine because it's a sick care system instead of a health care system. We all know that. We all understand that that's the way it is. Um, Effie Chow wants to start an alternative health insurance like company to pay for alternative health care because she knows that the that the um, the insurance companies won't pay for it. And she knows that people need health in, in alternative integrative health care in order to help them. And so she's trying to, to find a way to, to make that happen. And so we she and I have had some many conversations about that. Now, I take a different perspective. I started the nonprofit company, Health Prosperity and Leadership Institute. And I, what that organization does is help other groups and organizations, those that are part of the solution, like the World Congress. That's one of the programs, the collaborative kinds of programs. I would invite Healing Our, our, um, our Earth uh, organization to join with us and become one of our partners. Um, and one of our one of our programs is called Asclepios. Uh, the Asclepios Research Group is a group that's the group that I do all my research under. So anybody that's doing integrative healthcare um, research can get their research posted on the Asclepios website. Can we can I, I'm you know we're willing to help with editing and and uh, uh, d putting together the protocols and doing whatever needs to be done in order to get that research published and accepted by others. Of course, one of our biggest programs is World Tai Chi and Qigong Day, which as you may all know, that was just last weekend, um, August 30, it was August 30th this year. And that was a fabulous event with hundreds of organizers all over the world. Um, the, another fabulous organization, one of our program, one of our programs is the International Medical Tai Chi and Qigong Association. That, as, um, as a matter of fact, that's why I have to leave at three o'clock because we have a uh, we have a board meeting that I have to get to. Um, and then another one is the Symposium for Integrative Health Tai Chi and Qigong, which is having their event on August 13th. So, and this year it's going to be a virtual event. It used to be held in New Jersey at on a wonderful uh, retreat center and in Harvey Cedars, Long Beach, New Jersey. But because of COVID this year, we're once again having it online. Next year, hopefully we'll be able to go back in person, but of course we don't know that. But those aren't the only groups. We also have organic food banks and garden groups and a bluebird group and just tons of little or of, of uh, organizations that are uh, dis who that are trying to save um, are trying to save the health and increase the health prosperity and leadership of of um, everybody in the world everybody so so that's my you know my the, there's my my little discussion um, so I'd, I'd be happy I'd love to answer any questions that anyone might have yeah. CJ so important what you touched on economics right? To, to show that. And that's really important also, isn't it, Dr. Rajiv, what you're doing. And here you have another research scientist warrior in our midst here to really support the Healing Our Earth Integrated Global, a global Integrated Health Forum. So you have another resource. So please meet each other. And Dr. Rajiv, do you have a question for CJ? Yeah, I'm very delighted, in fact, because the whole purpose of me you know, 
professionally qualified uh, being chief investigator of the international trial on the people's role and it was highly commended because we recruited and i was the uk national coordinator and international trial principal purpose of research is to validate the evidence just i can say anything and that doesn't mean anything because the trust will come we have been talking about trust trust come from evidence if you don't now evidence is graded differently you can have a strong evidence with you know blinded you know double blind control trial you can have a trial which is open trial which is slightly lower but still a trial you can have a trial where there is a body or organization recommending it or you can have individual recommendation now this is all evidence but the evidence true but true but you know what they're they're so focused laser focused on random that it's really hard to get them to look at all that other evidence that's the problem now i believe that's a problem i believe they should open it up to others but they don't um, I don't want to go in controversy because I'm a positive person. I want to leave on positive note. I basically believe we need to trust each other. If you keep hitting each other, whole integration will fall apart. They will continue to hit you. You continue to hit them. We are probably not going to get anywhere. So I think my view is that majority of people still believe collaboration is the way go forward. And I think that is the way we should do it. And I think we should get as best evidence as we can. You know, it's not yeah. necessarily you have a controlled trial. I was telling somebody doing yoga. Now, how can you say this person is doing yoga and the other one is not? You, doing there's yoga. a way. That's why I developed a protocol. So go to, go, to, go to the Sclepio's website and look at the protocol and you'll find out. Yes, there is a way. So many people say there's no way to do a random control trial with Tai Chi and yoga and all that. Yes, there is. We just need to, there is a way. You just need to, need to do it. <laughs> so, okay. so this is definitely conversation we need to deepen, deep dive. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, and um, a friend Sharon has to leave in a while as you do, CJ. When do yes. you have to leave? And so perhaps it could be a good time also to um, invite Dr. Effie Chow in, and also Sharon has something to show us. So if we can go there, and then maybe we can come back to you, Keith. And whoever can stay on, you know, this, this conversation goes on and on on our third integrated, of, in, integrated uh, health forum. And uh, next week is also our fourth one. So we can all come back and, and you know, parlay a little bit more. But um, I may, if I may just... Uh, Thank you, CJ, if you need to leave. And then Sharon is going to show us something now. So Sharon, would you like to? Before she has to leave. So everybody has busy schedules here. We're trying to uh, juggle everyone. And of course, just thank Effie. And Effie, you can stay stay on for a chit chat with Keith and everybody else. Sharon, would you like to proceed? Yes. So many of you know that I've been working on this uh, series called uh, Quantum Chi, the Taoist Art of Nurturing Life for a number of years now that has just immersed me in the field. And so I would like to, before we leave today, just show you um, a, a little trailer uh, because we're planning to finally bring out the first two episodes during the World Congress. And I want, because I want to make it a uh, something beneficial to the whole community. You know, I mean, I want to have an affiliate program for it, so a good affiliate program, so that everyone can earn money from this project that we've been doing and bring it out, because it's a really good introduction to this world of Qigong. So I, I'll show you. Let's see, advance. This is one of my trailers. Uh... Hi, I'm Sharon Rose. We invite you to join the Chi Revolution and help us bring forth the next wave in healing, movement, and mind-body integration. Qi is the thread 
that weaves together the subtle arts into the martial arts and into the quantum field. Each episode will explore the science and practices of Qigong, Tai Chi, acupuncture and Taoism spoken by masters of these arts. In the Tao we believe that negative energy and positive energy is energy. They are both forces equal. Interviews with quantum physicists and medical professionals will expand upon these insights. Newtonian physics focus on the physical existence. Quantum physics focus on the high vibrational existence of energy. It's no longer just a posture, just the movement, just the spirit, but also a matter of the internal power, the qi. Quantum Chi will also include simple practices. You're sunk and relaxed into the ground as though you're a tree. You're shooting up deep roots into the earth. You're feeling the ground through your feet. You are designed to feel good. When you're feeling stressed or there's pain or tension in your body, these are messages to make some changes. We do know that 75 to 85 percent of all disease is preventable. A unique aspect of quantum chi is the use of aerial drone footage of the masters performing their arts amidst the beauty of nature. If you love nature and your heart is open to the rest of life, then all nature flows through you and supports you. The chi supports you. Visionary animations will educate people about chi, the quantum field, the energy bodies beyond the physical, and more. Do you have different pathways that energy moves in order to sustain your life force? Someone said, well, I'm a patient, can I do the healing? Yes, everybody is a healer. With some practice, many of us could rejuvenate, replenish ourselves constantly, and refine ourselves to become more youthful. Everyone wants healthy. Everyone wants happy life. We need for other level. Qi and the Qi connect. Heart and the heart connect. We have big family. In the end, why do we do Qigong? It's to lead a happy, quality, beautiful life. To elevate the human experience. So that's more than listening to all the bad news in the world. We can't change everything. We can change ourselves. This is what Qigong can do. We invite you to join us in our wellness crusade, and may the Qi be with you. inspired to join us for the 22nd Congress of Qigong Tai Chi, Natural Healing, uh, Traditional Chinese Medicine and Natural Healing. And so, Effie, would you like to say something about this? Uh, you were in there, right? You were just like wielding your sword in the trailer. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Neil, Sharon. Amalia, all of you, I am speechless from all the wisdom that I've heard this morning. And the world should be infested with this, not the medical diversified, diverted, uh, not effective right now for life. And so there's a couple of things that I like to emphasize. I know the time is limited. But you are the creator of your own destiny. That's really important for everyone to realize. And you have choices. There are choices. And as some of the speakers are talking about teaching people what choices they have. And the thing is, we have so many different choices. We can, one thing is the most important is that life is love. I love his life. And that touch is very important. 
although with this pandemic, we've been reduced. But remember, we are energy, energy uh, uh, products, and there is no stopping. There is no beginning or ending. We are fused in with each other. So therefore, even if we think touch, we are touching one another. Even if we think hugs, we are hugging one another. And so you all, you are the ones who know me, know my famous uh, prescription. At least eight Effie Chow heart to heart hug a day and three belly aching laughs a day. And the heart to heart hug is that you touch each other. So bring your arms around and hug yourself. You can't hug other people. And then extend out and hug other people. And so there's a burst of laughter. Laughter always happens when you hug yourself or other people for whatever reason, okay? And the thing is the heart, the sound of the heart is laughter. You know, every organ has a sound. So the laughter that opens the heart and the circulation, spiritually, mind and body, it's all at one time. There's no separation that spirit is here, mind is there and body is here, which Western medicines tend to want, want to separate. And, and then with the touch, it, it improves your immune system. It's been proven in therapeutic touch research, gold standard research, that when you touch one another, that your immune system is elevated. Your white blood cells increase, your red blood cells increase, and uh, you are healthier. So the thing is with CJ, I agree with CJ and many of you that research is very important right now and gold standard research, you know, random and et cetera. But however, we cannot sit on our hands and wait until research can tell us what to do or what not to do. And that's what we're tending to do right now. And that's a danger point that we revere research to really to a, a stupidity uh, level. And I'm not saying it's stupid, I think it's absolutely necessary, but we need to mix the science and the art of health and healing and life. And we tend to separate, we think about science. So therefore go ahead and do whatever you're doing and getting good results, et cetera, but document it down. Please document what you're getting down. And the thing is, if you're getting results in one session, then say you've got results in one session. Don't say you got results because the Western medicine, they'll think that you took a, a year or something before you got that result. So if we, every one of us doc documenting at this and presenting it, that in one session, I can get somebody who's been in a wheelchair for 10 years and has that pain every time she tries to move. In one session, I could get her moving. And then in three months with only two more sessions, she went back and taught in her school. She was a grade one teacher. And the, everybody said, ah, the, the chain, what happened? Where's your wheelchair? Because they had seen her in a wheelchair for over 10 years. And she said, oh, it's at home. So nonchalantly. I, I agree with you, Effie. And I know I know that there, this, this is powerful stuff. It's very powerful stuff and very documentation powerful. is absolutely necessary. And we can't just sit on our hands and wait for the years of research to catch up to us. But we well, do need those years of research in order to get the insurance companies, politicians and doctors to start recommending. It. And that's this. where I'm focused on. But I must leave. Unfortunately, I love you all. Sharon, that Thank trailer you. is absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to the 22nd Congress to see more of it. Um, it it's just absolutely phenomenal. You are all phenomenal. Thank you so much. So oh, thank you, CJ. Oh, it's such CJ. a pleasure thank to you. meet you. Mm -hmm. I will just carry on just for another moment because I think the, the part about research is very important. But again, as I said, we mm -hmm. cannot sit on our, our, on our hands until we get research. And when we get research, we have to get money. And this is why also we are focusing on raising money 
to set up a health and wellness system solid as the Western medical system, and that we can develop our own insurance system if we need to, but we can start getting the insurance system now, who is beginning to realize you're missing out on some money. And unfortunately, it's money focused. And that, hey, if we focus and we're teaching them that if you focus on health, and you're getting another body of money in. And, but please don't take advantage of the client. Okay, that's the problem with insurance. And so, and so therefore, um, I have a lot more to say, as you all know. Oh, by the way, about research, I was a consultant with NIH, the National Institutes of Health, Department of Health and Human Services, research consultant for over 37 years. So I know what research is, and I know the slowness with which research uh, does. And we need to spread up, put some fire underneath it. And so we need to have friends at the NIH, Department of Health and Human Services, and the politicians. That's why in every Congress, we have a whole smattering of politicians that is supportive of integrative medicine, integrative health, pardon me. And we need to have doctors. So there are very wonderful doctors. If you look for them, and I'm sure you all know some, and that we got to get them together so they feel supported, and they feel very supported. Now, I've had three near-death experiences in 2015. How many of you know what near-death experiences mean? That you died and came back. And they said, we're not ready for you. You have to cure the ills of the world before we can accept you back. Right. Right. Oh my Thank God. you. My and goodness. So I just suddenly realized more that you have to cooperate and partner with everybody, everybody, and no exception. Even the medical people, we must partner with them so that they'll see us as friends and not as threats. So thank you. And I wish you- Thank you, Evie. Eight hugs a day. your comments. Oh, by the way, you hug this way, face to face, left face to face, because your heart is connect. If you hug this way, your heart skips each other. So all these little things are really important and, and fun to know. And so I wish you all eight Effie Chow, heart to heart. Right. And three belly aching laughs, like Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, that your belly shakes. All right. And keep up the great work, Neil. You are absolutely marvelous setting up. And I certainly look forward to being a very close partner with you and your gang and all the wonderful people I've heard in many of you, many weeks. All right. So thank you, Amalia. Thank you, Sharon Rose. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Effie. Thank you. Thank you, Dame Reverend Dr. Ed, Effie. And, you know, for bringing the spiritual mandate down to ground to the the bricks and mortar, the, the, the really hard work into this dense third dimension, right? We know about that, Dr. Rajiv and Keith, how you are all cutting through the bureaucracy and all the, the resistance, but it's part of the yin yang here. It's the game, it's the Tai Chi, we have to do that. So Dr. Rajiv, do you have anything to say or Keith uh, about the, the, the vagaries of doing this work, like grounded? Just like what Dr. Tess Laurie is doing with The Better Way. I hope you join us there too. Um, so. I would perhaps first congratulate Afi for really doing that work for long and really putting back the point that we need to work collaboratively. We need to respect each other. We need to trust each other because without that, everything will fall. And I think these are words of wisdom. I really appreciate that. And I think the day has gone so well and time has gone. I mean, we started, what, eight hours ago, uh, probably more than eight hours ago, and we are still going. And that indicate that this is such an important topic. It's such an energy providing. So we, it is not sucking the energy. It's giving the energy for us to really go on and on and on. So I think that is something to be appreciated. And again, thanks to Trinil Kumar for, you know, helping us bring in together. It is such a good energy. People are here because everybody is passionate. The next step for us is to bring that passion together and work together. 
Uh, thanks to Keith, uh, we are working on that and we'll take it further because the whole idea is that if you work collaboratively, we are a bigger team, we work much better. So I think I would say NY Ching, we really appreciate your energy, your calmness, your soothing through, and it's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for all the work that we're doing here on this uh, third integrated health you know, forum. I, can you not feel the energy like building up? It's so exciting. And so, I mean, we have Keith uh, highlighted and Sarah and Lata. Would you like to come in into the conversation? Any um, one of you? If, if I may, just very quickly, is that Rajiv and I are already working on collaboration. And we have mentioned that, and I have never seen or been in communication with Dr. Effie Chow, and it's a delight to meet you, madam. Uh, I'm going to add two words because I may have a chance to speak next week, and my wife will be saying, You're always talking. Well, three things. One is the word prevention, and we know that no money. No money is spent on real primary care prevention, and therefore we need to look at how we might achieve that. And I'm not sure what the American statement is, but here it's called return on investment. If we can get somebody to pay $2 million or $2 million pound, we can save organizations about $5 million. These are government figures that were produced back in 2015 and 2016. When I talk to our GPs here, they say prevention is when somebody has been released or discharged from hospital. All right. The third and final thing I will say is that at my senior age, I find it incredible that from a 15-year-old schoolboy leaving school without any qualifications, is that I'm here talking to such a wonderful range of people and I spoke to a gentleman the other day who was one of the founders of the National Qigong Association. And he said to me, when I said, why am I doing this? And he said, Keith, you have been assigned. I have been assigned to work with all of you. And I am so proud of what we're achieving. And I will keep going for as long as I can. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you so much, Keith. Really, your work is also phenomenal. And speaking of phenomenal, Sarah, would you like to mention anything, Lata? Please, it would be lovely to hear from you, Lata. Hmm. Um, I, I won't take much time. I, I've already um, expressed what a wonderful group this is, and I'm very grateful to be part of this group. Um, and I think it's lovely that we so openly share and support each other you know there's no, no one's competing no one's saying what i do is better than what you do and you know it's it's such a such a nice space and like you said such a good energy and you know they always say together we achieve more you know there's no i in team so i think this is a great team and i think we're going to really make a huge difference going forward to humanity. That's Beautiful. My hope, prayer. Beautiful. I hope you can join us at the 22nd Congress, World Congress. I will do my very best. Yes. 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 God Inshallah. willing, I'll be there. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. And Lata, my dear. Good evening, everyone. Or oh, good good afternoon, should I say, for the Americans. Um, but it's really, really been a vibrant um, episode and discussion um, yeah I think it's really the root fruit is ready and ripened to pluck and enjoy now the fruitage you've all been doing so much work over the past years Effie, Whiting and Sharon and whoever else uh, Dr Rajiv Gupta and all of you wonderful guys, you know, you've done great 
missions and great missionary work in the medical field, trying to bring this awareness. Whereas we knew as patients, we wanted alternative medicines and not succumb to the um, um, artificial and the chemicals that they wanted us to pump us down with because obviously they weren't going to heal us but they were going to suffocate us or even slow us down further and you know deaden us but um, as life you know we'd be like dead corpses walking around in a body but you know fortunately um those courageous ones now have been connected on this platform i think it's very very evident and i and i'm really really you know proud of what how it's forming and uh, we we should all congratulate ourselves and you know especially neil <laughs> as always <laughs> for getting us all together so yeah it's 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 amazing we've got a lot of exciting days ahead i think <laughs> from what you all are achieving it's wonderful yeah it's our little project isn't it it is it is and it's such a worthy project and so perhaps it's time to end and if, if i might invite anyone who would have some comments or sharing with us before we you know close this sacred circle you know this is the way we work with meditation with a meditation and with an intentionalization into grounding this uh, global forum right, on integrated health and do join us again next week for the fourth episode this is the third one and we just want to thank all the souls who have converged with us today and put in this soul energy to make it happen on the planet and uh, working with uh, Dr. Tess Lowry and the World Council for Health, The Better Way, the Angelic Summit and the 22nd Congress of Qigong Taiji, TCM and Natural Healing. And so all these, just imagine, okay, as we go into our, our inner selves and as we perhaps close our eyes and intentionalize these weavings of, um, the light coming together and creating this new reality on the planet. And we give thanks for everybody and for the tech crew, Nishid and Neil with the vision of producing this, healing our earth and linking with all the organizations in the world. So let us take a deep breath and send our light out to the world, send our light out to all and the doctors who were on the Healing Our Earth forum earlier today, amazing sharings from medical doctors. And we are raising the frequency of love on this planet and realizing, manifesting, grounding this new reality and knowing that we are chalices of light and we are here for a purpose. And we boldly and courageously accept these spiritual mandates to move through this planet in healing our earth. Namaste all, honoring all the divinity in each one of us. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful. So once again, global namaste to all of you and earth bless us all.